Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who better be getting uh, more than a participation trophy for doing this top 40 season countdown this year. I am Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the 12th best season of Survivor here on our top 40 season rankings millennials versus gen x and uh, i'm very excited to talk about this season this is one of the ones in the top 40 countdown i was really looking forward to getting into of course uh, this was not part of uh, the evolution of strategy that only went through uh one through 30 so i've never gone back and rewatched millennials versus uh, gen x i have this week looking forward to talking about it here with a, a great panel here of millennials versus gen x lovers here making her debut for the first time here in the top 40 countdown of course you could hear her currently talking about love island on the uh, love island uh rehab up here is the great kirsten mckinnis kirsten how are you surfs up rob hi how surfs are you up. doing I'm so excited to be here. I said, I'll come on the top 40 countdown, but I'm only coming on for good seasons. You can't can't put me in any of those early seasons. Yeah. Well, here we are, uh, that number 12 on the countdown. And I have to say that uh, just like intellectually, I felt like, oh, I felt that this was going to be higher, but we're really running out of seasons. Yeah, there's not that many more to go. And I feel like the discourse this week, ever since this got announced, was a lot of it's way too high and it's way too low. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody is happy with where it's ranked. And I don't think anyone thinks it's appropriate. Yeah. So, all right. It is uh, here at number 12. We'll talk about uh, whether it is too high or too low as we go along here tonight. And of course, uh, back with us to talk on the top 40 countdown. Uh, she was with us to talk about Survivor Game Changers. Here she is uh, back here for Millennials versus Gen X. It is the great Asia Welch. Asia, how are you? Hey, Rob. Uh, I'm doing well. Um, as a millennial who doesn't work for anything, I'm glad you just dropped this podcast in my lap and I'm here <laughs> to talk about it. And I love this season. So I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to it. Um, so I'm glad we're here. Okay, so uh, here we are to talk about the 12th best season. Of course, we will start our conversation tonight talking about the uh, 12th best season of Survivor, according to the fans of Rob Has a Podcast. But this is just the beginning of a Millennials versus a Gen X week. Uh, after this podcast tonight on Thursday, I'm going to be on our patron feedback show. And boy, have we got a jam-packed patron podcast feed uh, for you uh, these days between the slop, the BB Q and a, the patron five for five. And then we'll talk with Eric Columbia and Katie Smalling on Thursday and continue answering your questions. Get some feedback about uh, this conversation on Thursday in our patron podcast feed. And over the weekend, Michaela Bradshaw is going to be a guest on uh, talking with T-Bird. It's been a minute since we uh, did some uh, talking with T-Bird. So we'll talk with Michaela Bradshaw and then the winner of this season, Adam Klein will be a guest on why Adam won with David Bloomberg and Jessica Lewis. No winner has ever been on the podcast where David Bloomberg explains to them why they won the season. That was a great get. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> now, oh, do man. you think that Adam will argue with David or will he agree? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> He's like, like, no, that's not why I won. That's not why I won. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't even know. I, no, I, I did scheme and plot. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, and and David Bloomberg might say, uh, and this is why people voted for you. And then Jessica is going to say, that's not why I voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be that's that's a must listen. Okay, so listen to Adam Klein on why Adam won uh, this weekend. So uh, looking forward to that as well. Okay. Um, Millennials versus Gen X. Uh, so I had not looked at this uh, since it was on. And boy, time flies because uh, this is going to be, I think, this fall, five years since Millennials versus Gen X. It aired in the fall of 2016. And so uh, that can feel like a lifetime ago uh, for a lot of reasons. And so uh, here we are back to take a look at Millennials versus Gen X. Had either of you ever watched this before uh, this rewatch? 
had rewatched it before re-watched this rewatched it before, it? Yeah. oh no i did just when it originally aired yeah this was my first time going back to it and uh it's weird how the rewatch puts you right back into a time and a place, isn't it? Like, I feel like it just really brings back how everything, like, remember when Millennials versus Gen X on TV and Big Brother OTT was on? Mm-hmm. And So You Think You Can Podcast was happening. And, mm-hmm. like, what a weird time. Yeah, those were the, the top three news stories. Yeah, at that that's time, it. I, think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else <laughs> and, you could possibly be talking about. That's yeah. it. Those were the big three things that it was on everybody's mind. And so, um, yeah, this was uh, very interesting to go, to go back and, and watch. And I really feel like that this has been uh, the first season in Fiji. And I think it really did change Survivor in a lot of ways. I, I think that the production really like fell in love with what happened on this season. And I almost feel like that every season after this, is chasing in a lot of ways uh, what this season uh, turned out to be. Absolutely. Because, you know, you had a season where like this season, it made you feel every single emotion. Like I can't on the top of my head, think of a season that literally made me well up in tears multiple times, jump out of my seat multiple times, be angry with one of the the castaways, you know, multiple times. And so, you know, you had that standard. And then it's funny that like last time I was on, it was for Game Changers, which is the very next season. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny too, because like I re since I rewatched both of those in the last few months, um, my roommate like caught bits and pieces and she's like, Wow, you can really tell why this why this one is like ranked higher. <laughs> and she's like, has never mm-hmm. seen Survivor before. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, you you really can, huh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it really did like set the tone which it was hard to live up to for the rest of the 30s yeah well because this season like it has you know that like first time back in fiji like feeling everything is beautiful everything is stunning but then what this season does so well is it has all of these overarching narratives of the season and it really tells you a story and it puts you into it like you can feel when you know like brett and zeke are bonding like that's an emotional moment you can feel like the surprise when michaela's blindsided you're feeling for adam the whole time and like i i like also personally really relate to adam's story so maybe i feel it like a little bit stronger but like i can't tell you how many times i cried rewatching the season like i literally would be sitting weeping taking notes being like and he found the idol and it's (laughs) for his mom and like when it was airing the first time i definitely felt those emotions but like Mm -hmm. i remember more so like laughing at the gif of adam breaking open that conch shell rather than like the emotional impact (laughs) of it you know that's a really good point because in the real time that you don't know that adam's mom has passed away and even all the way through the finale and even like um a third of the way through the reunion uh it it doesn't come up until adam explains that his mom had died an hour after he got home from playing survivor kirsten did that change the uh reviewing of the season that knowing that his mom has uh is is going to pass away at the end of the season i think it does but again like i feel like i have to be fully transparent like when this season was airing this was when i was going through casting for big brother canada 5 and right after my mom had been diagnosed with cancer so i went through the whole season thinking that i was about to do like the same thing that adam was doing so i do feel like a very deep emotional personal connection to the season as well Mm -hmm. and so then like looking at it now knowing that his mom passed away knowing that my mom passed like it just like is very parallel and so i don't i don't know if i can give the same answer that someone else would give because of my like connection to it right yeah, I would say I was higher on Adam with the, with the rewatch because yeah. you're watching through the eyes of like, this is what he's doing for. You know what happens. You you know how much it means to him to get that update from his brother. And then you also feel for him how hard it was not to talk and share the, that with everyone else because he's not able to share his motivation because he has that fear that that could jeopardize, you know, his longevity in the game. Mm-hmm. And so just to know that that's the result, um, it, it does make it a little like it did make me higher on his game. And just I, I definitely saw Adam in a, a 
a, a prettier light than I saw him on the rewatch or on the original watch. <laughs> well, and I think too, um, in the real time, like the people who are like hardcore reading the edit of the show, mm -hmm. a lot of them really thought Ken was going to win. And so I think in the moment, a lot of the discourse was- Apparently. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's Colin Stone, that Ken Truther. Mm -hmm. And so I think that a lot of like the little things that kind of indicated that things would work out for Adam kind of got missed in the real time because people were just paying attention to this Ken winner edit. And on the rewatch, knowing how it's going to work out, you can see those like smaller moments. Yeah, I mean, I think that all of these uh, different moments that Adam has uh, throughout the season are really like in focus, like uh, knowing how the story is going to turn out. And I think it does, uh, you know, re really come through on the rewatch from and it's a couple episodes into the season. I don't think it's until the fourth episode that we hear anything. Adam tells us uh, the audience about that his mom has cancer and then uh, of course he gets letters from uh, a, a letter during the season that his brother comes and visits and then finally uh you know he he tells jay and then he ultimately uh reveals at the final tribal council uh what he's been going through and of course uh you know everything that happens in in the reunion so it's it's very powerful all the way through but that's just one of the many stories uh, that we get throughout this season and i do think that it is a season that has a lot of similar themes of growth and a almost a rebirth for a lot of the contestants uh, across the the season and i really feel like that survivor prior to this doesn't really do this as much like there might be like stories of people who like uh like Sari famously got up off the couch but I can't think of another season that comes before this where they have so many like coming of age stories in one season. Yeah, I can't think of one with so many. I do think that um, this does come like hot on the heels of the whole Aubrey situation and she does get like a growth narrative, but like they're never with this many people getting that narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in this season, like where, yes, you, you have Aubrey who was sort of down and out and then ultimately like comes into her own in that season and she's uh, like a person, that's a story in that season. Here in this season, you have it and it's not just with the millennials. It's not just that the young people came out because you certainly uh, get that with, you know, uh, Zeke, Hannah uh, and David. Uh, Michaela gets uh, a little a little bit of it. I mean, that uh, will you can't will, figure will will. I mean, that for so many of the players in the season that there is this repeated theme of, you know, I had self-doubt. I didn't think I could do it. And then I came out here and I found myself in Survivor. And now I'm up to any challenge the world throws at me and I can do anything. And I, now I will make X big move. <laughs> right. And then uh, the next week, someone else will have the same realization. Oh, my God, I didn't think I could do this. But now I'm the power player. I'm in charge. So I'm going to make this big move. <laughs> yeah. And so that it's really like a theme, I think, in, in this season where people come to Survivor Island and it is a transformative experience playing Survivor where that you conquer any sort of internal doubt that you had about yourself. And then Survivor is like boot camp that is like <laughs> some sort of like leadership seminar that gets you ready to take on anything that the world throws at you because you've come and played the world's greatest game. Yeah, it's like this 30, if you need a 39 day like turnaround, mm -hmm. Survivor is it. Like apply right away because just the amount, like you already named them, the amount of transformations that happened this season was just, I mean, I found myself rooting for different people week to week, you know, and it wasn't just like, a, oh, I'm on this side, like I'm, I'm on this side. I'm only rooting for this tribe. It was like, no, every week things change. You had the trust clusters, you know, you had different people trusting different people every single week. So that's what made it so entertaining, but just the cast was spectacular it, it is a uh, spectacular cast and 
I, I will uh, get to get to everybody, but, but I, I will say that, like, I, I think this is like a good thing and a bad thing. This idea of uh, this growth of all of the contestants, because I do feel like that and maybe not so much here in Millennials versus Gen X. But I do think that then Survivor then tries to then like uh, fit this onto so many of its future contestants that are going to come through and come to Fiji and play in these seasons. And I almost feel like that a lot of times it comes at the expense of like, did we, you know, get to know a lot about these characters in terms of their uh, personality? Some, yes, but others, I just feel like it's like more in the context of them. We know about them a lot as a survivor player, but not as much as a, as a person. If that, does that make sense? Yeah, because I, I think on this cast, you can look and there are so many people that were playing the game so hard and very actively. Uh, and like, there's not many people you could even say were willing to take a passive like path through the game. And so it really worked in the season to edit it that way and show all these transformations because it was genuine and it was how they were all motivated. But on another season where maybe not everyone has the same style or level of gameplay, um, then it, it doesn't feel genuine and you're not getting to know the characters as much. So then it just feels like a piece is missing because they're trying to recapture the magic of something that can't really be replicated. Like they played hard. Their confidence grew, but I feel like a lot of the people, like we didn't really learn too much about like uh, their their interests or, you know, uh, their relationships. So uh, I, I feel like that the story was one of, of of growth, but I feel like that in some ways, like uh, that it was a little bit surface in that. I feel like that we didn't uh, really get to know some of the contestants like as well as uh, we got to know when even like going back to last season, last week on the countdown, I talked about Borneo, which of course is a 16 person cast, but I feel like you really got to know the Borneo contestants in ways that you don't really ever get to know these contestants in this season. Yeah, there are like people that made it to the merge that I could not sit here and tell you three personal things about them, like a Michelle and like a Will, even Taylor. Like other than he likes yeah. Figgy. Yes. Uh, he's a father to a baby now. <laughs> that's Come on. True. <laughs> right? That's, that's true. a normal way to phrase that. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that, I mean, so I don't know, maybe this is a little, a little nitpicky, but I think my big, my biggest note is just that, that what it, it happens here. And I don't know just how much like th this season fell into the producer's laps where you have these characters who like David or Hannah or, or Zeke who came out there and really found themselves by playing the game and that a light bulb went off and like, Hey, that's it. This is what the show should be from now on. Okay. This is what we're trying to find. This is it. Or whether they came into this season and said, this is a theme we want to explore. And then said that they want to go from there. I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but I feel like that the fingerprints of millennials versus Gen X is in all of the seasons that we see after millennials versus Gen X. Now, do you think that any of that was made possible in this season because of the premise of it being generation versus generation. Like, I feel like that almost made it easier to fit all of their stories into well, it. Uh, I will say that the thing that I like least about this rewatch of millennials versus Gen X is all of the mentions of yes. millennials versus Gen <laughs> X Asia, that it really feels like so much more shoehorned in here on the rewatch and you mm -hmm. really like uh, that Jeff keeps going back to it over like uh, they'll, they'll be talking about one thing and Jeff will be like, Oh, so do you think that that's like, is that the millennial thing? Is that, is that part of like when he's talking about like, well, okay, all right. How about this? All right. Millennials, <laughs> they text with the letter U not Y O U like what are we even hey, talking about and is that even true is beautiful, okay <laughs> it's beautiful it's poetry yeah and it's so it's so heavy-handed the theme of millennials versus gen x and i mean tell me if, if this is crazy like does does anybody 
like self-identify as what they're like uh whatever their like age uh what what do you what would you call this generation generation uh, yeah. yeah yeah i mean do 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 like i feel like it's only you only use it to describe people of other ages you know it's it depends on the setting because in a work environment millennials is a common thing that mm -hmm. you but it's in a way of like Okay, although I'm a millennial, you can't think these as things. A millennial. Ab yeah, as a millennial, as a millennial, you can't think these things about me because that's not true. You're thinking about a 20 year old. Millennials, the oldest millennial right now is 40. You know, so. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it's like <laughs> I'm I'm almost to the bottom of the millennial generation, and I'm almost 30. Like, yeah. stop <laughs> it. Can, actually, can I can I let, get something off my chest as a millennial here? Please, as a millennial, they bring as a millennial over and over in this season. They bring up participation trophies, participation trophies, participation trophies. First of all, who asked for participation trophy? Nobody. And who gave out participation trophies? The freaking boomers and Gen X. I, the millennials didn't give themselves a participation trophy. So if you have a problem with it, look in the mirror mm -hmm. and never yeah. <laughs> say the word participation trophy again. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, participation trophy. Like there, the I I did not remember this. Uh, that unironically, the at the final five challenge, <laughs> the answer to the puzzle is uh, not a participation trophy. <laughs> They're That's really trying the to hammer it home. The puzzle. Yeah, well, because it's all about these millennials, which also, for the record, one member of the millennial tribe is a Gen Z. Yeah, so that, that, that's, that, like, that, that is not talked about enough. That's a plot hole, just for the record. See, yeah, although, although, yeah, then he kind of screwed some of them over, also. So he was a well, secret Gen Z. He was on a third Z. team on his own, you know, like <laughs> on his own tribe. There's yeah. no one for him to relate to. Yeah, but no, it, it was wild, and you know, I, I feel like that. If, if you wanted to do old versus young, I mean, they've done it other times in uh, Nicaragua and then also, you know, uh, like in in other seasons that uh, they've had like uh, the in Panama a little bit. They dealt with old versus young. And I, I felt like that it was dealt with less heavy handedly than it is <laughs> here in Millennials versus Gen X. I mean, it's so hard not to be rolling your eyes during the first five minutes where uh, people are talking about like, well, as a Gen Xer, you know, I've worked for everything. These millennials come in, they want to be handed everything like this is reads like uh, an email forward. Uh, the first uh, five minutes of the, like uh, signs you're you're a, a millennial. Signs you're a Gen Xer. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> I actually have to go outside. My milk is getting delivered by drone because I'm a millennial. <laughs> yeah, and really, like, there's things that get chalked up to uh, being a millennial that are just like uh, random things, like uh, Taylor. He steals the food and then is talking about it. And then it's like, and, and Jeff's like, oh, okay. Is this part of being a millennial that you just uh, like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, when Clarence, uh, everybody got mad at him for opening the beans in season three. It wasn't like Clarence. Is that as a Gen Xer? <laughs> or is, is is that part of it that you just want to like, you're hungry and you're going to eat the beans? Um <laughs> Just yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's it was so forced. Like I love that Jay called out. Like no, 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 no. It is not a millennials thing. I would not do that because that's rude. It's 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 as if the, it, around that time the term millennials was being used so much. There's so mm -hmm. many articles out there and all these characteristics. Why millennials are leaving the workforce? Why millennials are doing this? Why are they doing that? And so then it was just like, okay, we got to capitalize on this. Gen X is just anyone that's older, that's hardworking. Millennials are these crazy young kids who don't want full-time jobs. They just want to do whatever and get everything handed to them. It's like, what? No, what What are you saying? Because <laughs> famously older people who work really hard are really happy about it and thrilled at the concept <laughs> of working a 60-hour work week. Like, only millennials dislike the yeah. concept of that uh, 
it, I'm surprised it wasn't like an avocado toast reward at one point. Like <laughs> yeah, honestly, that, that's that, the I, only not thing one missing. Of avocado toast the whole then, season. Because then yeah, Probst could have been like, "Oh, so you love this toast enough that you'll never own a home?" And it's <laughs> not because house prices have increased like 500 percent and wages have stayed the same. It's because you like toast with avocado on it, certainly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So again, the 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 cast is great. You know, if you, it could have just been Survivor, you know, a Generation War or whatever. I, I, like, it didn't have to be so <laughs> heavy-handed about like uh, the what millennials be like and G Gen Xers be like. Uh, it was just way too much of that, and it just like uh, just has aged cornier and cornier as we get further away from it. But I mean, they have opened the door for the potential of a millennials versus Gen Z sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. Hey, and it doesn't have to be that far off because they want those 16 year olds, baby. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what they were thinking. Getting the all like a uh, Gen Z tribe. That's I know right. at, at one point they specifically are like Jeff is like, you were really good representation as the first high schooler to be on Survivor. And I was like, wow, I never really clocked that he said that. But Jeff obviously wants more high schoolers on this show. <laughs> huh. I mean. I think that Jeff has famously said, you know, he loved the millennial tribe and like he like uh, is of the age and he might if he was on the uh, Gen X tribe. Yeah, I think he would be the oldest member uh, on on the cast if he if he was. But I that he Wait, what? Loved... is Jeff Probst older than Paul? Yeah, I believe so. Paul Walker is uh, I believe is uh, what is he? 52? Fifty two. Fifty two. Well, he, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's yeah. like 57. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Jeff Probst is older than uh, Paul Walker. And so, but Jeff, I think, loved being around the millennials in this season. I think he likes uh, being around uh, the young, younger uh, people more so than being around people that are his uh, contemporaries. Yeah. Jeff Probst is like the mom in Mean Girls who's like, oh, I love you, cool kids. Dad. You keep me young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest, and I did not know that Jeff Probst was 59. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that man is <laughs> <It's> incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Survivor Devil, obviously, they've made a deal. <laughs> so I'm shook. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, that's uh, uh, a lot about uh, the theme of the season. Um, it is a season of uh, very uh, hard gameplay also where that interestingly, uh, for better or for worse, I feel like that there are very few votes that are personal. Like I feel like that overall the cast generally all likes one another. And unlike many of the other Survivor seasons, there's very few votes of we are voting this person off because we hate them. This person is a horrible person uh, that, you know, that I hope I would not give you a, a drink of water if I saw you lying on the side of the road, dying of thirst. <laughs> Let the vultures uh, do what they want with you. It's everything. All the votes are seemingly, well, you are, are in the best position. You are going to win. You are standing in my way. So I had to do that. And it's a lot of like, OK, good game. Uh, well played. You got me. Yeah, I love that it was full of gamers because that allowed them to make bigger moves than like, oh, I don't want to do this because it might hurt their feelings. Or like, no, we all know what we signed up for. Even Michelle said it at one point. We know the game we came here to play. And so it's just so evident through all of the relationships that are formed, like mainly like Jay and Adam, just the transformation their friendship goes yeah. through and how close they are. And they created this brotherhood after constantly back or, or blindsiding each other. Um, so I, I think that even allowed stronger relationships to form um, because they knew like these big moves they were making was for the game. Ironically though, the uh, one vote off that is uh, not that it's necessarily mean spirited, but it is like an actual like shock reaction comes when Michaela gets uh, voted out of the game. You know, that's the one vote of the whole season. Maybe that's why it's so memorable. That's not like, okay, good game. Well played. <laughs> You got yeah, me. But even then, she's like, what? Did you do this? And Jay's just stone-faced. I did this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a it's an iconic moment. I wouldn't have it any other way. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, that really popped on the uh, on the rewatch where that she is is, is like, that was that was stupid. uh, that You did that. (laughs) I cried. I cried this time watching Michaela get voted out. And I know I did not cry in the real time. Like I was disappointed because Michaela's iconic. But just it was like a horror movie. You knew it was going to happen. You see her laying out you knew this you. game plan that would take like that group to the end if they really could stick to it. And but you can hear it's like dun, dun, dun. like you see like the shark fin in the distance, and then Michaela gets voted out, and it was way more impactful knowing it was going to happen. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like awaiting the inevitable, especially after watching her in Game Changers. I think it was like I especially since I had seen Game Changers more recently, obviously, but with the rewatch, um, I forgot how much she was shining in this season. Like yeah. literally every immunity challenge um, with the tribes, like she was killing it. And so it was like when she showed that one little element of intellect, oh, it was a perfect opportunity. It was like no way Jay could pass on it. Um, but man, I oh, I felt for her, especially being one away from the merge. Well, and the other thing too is looking at how the gameplay went after the merge, they would have had other opportunities. Like yeah. they could have just not. Like uh, that's something too. The to, like the pre-merge boot order of this season is the worst thing that's ever happened. Like it's yeah. horrible. At every opportunity, it's like we could vote out this white guy that we're scared of, but instead we're gonna vote out a woman of color. Like pretty much every single time, and it had me just fuming. I think in multiple episodes, I have like blank literally did nothing wrong. Question <laughs> question mark question mark question mark mm-hmm. yeah um well to stick with the michaela vote uh that you know the episode really uh chalks up to that okay she is she has uh, the the shells and that she's i mean but like she's not really saying anything that's like uh like oh my god mind-blowing like she's sort of saying like it doesn't matter if we vote off brett or sunday right now uh because then We'll have the numbers if we just if we stick together and will and Jay make it like that. She was like, oh, my God, she just like completely reinvented the game. I wonder if Michaela, who made like she was famously not a fan of Figgy and Taylor and she like uh, had like a big reaction when Figgy got voted out. Do you think that any part, uh, and she also knew that Jay had the idol also as as well, that do you think that any part was like, hey, that she doesn't want to work with Figgy and Taylor, so she has to go? But at this point, Figgy was gone. I'm sorry, she doesn't want to work with Taylor. I mean, she never really seemed to be that vocal about getting Taylor out. It really mm-hmm. was more so about like splitting up the the couple and getting Figgy out. But I I think that no her knowing about the idol is more so um the bigger issue because she had, you know, had doubts about working with some of the millennials. And so having her move into a merge with that information is I think it was yeah. just too much of a risk for Jay to take. It's a great moment when she walks up on that uh, Jay and Will had just found the island. She's like, uh she's like, secret secrets. Like uh, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> yeah, because they're like, okay, we won't tell anybody. And then Michaela just like pops out of the woods and uh they're just like, oh my God. <laughs> It's really funny. Yeah, it and 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 going back to what you said, like it, it wasn't anything profound with the shells. Like imagine she was on the Gen X tribe and she showed them that. They're like, "Okay, great. Let's move mm-hmm. forward with that plan." But they just, you know, thinking past anything except the next vote, they were like, "Oh my gosh, that's too much of a threat." And <laughs> then, I mean, it which is just wild, but I guess they just it just didn't cross their mind that she was doing that or that anybody else was doing that. But it's it sucks the timing. Yeah, um, sad. it was uh, you know a great moment in the season, but uh, you know ultimately, like uh, you know, they they and again, it was uh, not a great strategic move either. Like I think that uh, the Jay and his side of things definitely could have used uh, Michaela's number uh, more so than uh, than uh, what they decided to do. Also, that as we're talking about that tribe in particular, this was also uh, 
tough to go back and watch this. This is the first time that I had seen uh, this season since uh, we lost Sunday Burkwest, who was just the nicest person ever. And of course, uh, you know, comes across that way in the season. And so, you know, uh, very sad to see her uh, lose her battle with cancer, you know, in a season where, you know, such a theme is about Adam and, and his, and his mom in, uh, you know, uh, that as she's going through that during the actual filming of the season, then to know that we are going to lose Sunday, uh, to, uh, cancer when she, uh, had been a, you know, a previous cancer survivor. It's also, you know, uh, very sad to, uh, to see, but, you know, uh, very nice to see her, uh, on our screens again. Yeah, especially thinking back, because I feel like in the interviews at the time, uh, it was like she had talked a lot about her journey on the season and her like history with her first um, time that she had cancer. And so like knowing that that didn't make the cut, but cancer was still such a big part of the season. Uh, it's just, it's so sad. And like, if anyone has a kid in the car, you cover their ears, you got to put on earmuffs fuck cancer literally like it's just so heartbreaking and sad mm -hmm. yeah and it was just like in the same way that we were watching this in 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 memory of adam's mom was the same as watching it in memory of sunday and she was definitely one of those people that i wanted to learn more about um even the first time like especially with how far she made it in the game there were def I wanted to know more about, like you said, her interests and qualities and just what does she like to do? Um, and so, it, I mean, it, it, but it definitely was a great reminder yeah. of what a sweet person she was because that definitely came across through the yeah. edit. They, they didn't give her enough in the season and she's a wonderful person and everybody that played in the season loved Sunday and if you you know ever like uh, get the chance to see it if you if you didn't see it in the real time now we did a, a podcast when uh sunday first announced that she had been uh diagnosed with uh the two uh cancers that she was battling and hannah like was able to reach out to her cast and so we had staged that i was doing an interview and then and then uh, like we surprised her that hannah popped on uh and we had said that you know oh like well, it would be nice if your whole cast could be here. And then we had the whole cast there, like popped onto the Zoom call to, and, and they were all there for her and they all shared uh, like stories of like how much uh, they adored Sunday. And so this is uh, just speaks to the fact that this was a very tight cast, uh, you know, to, to uh, you know, people go their separate ways and they're certainly like uh, not as tight as they once were, but you know, uh, after they filmed the season, I mean, this is one of the tightest groups that the show has ever seen. Well, and it just goes to show that, like, even with people going their se own separate ways, when they needed to, they all came back together to be there for each other. And that is beautiful. Absolutely. And I, and I, I wonder, not to br bring back up Millennials versus Gen X, but is it, is, is that why they're so close? Because, you know, millennials parents for, for the most part are Gen Xers in some, in some cases, like maybe the high part of Gen X. And mm -hmm. then millennials is like, yeah, if I'm with my peer, I'm going to be closer to them or naturally, you know, I can get along with them. We have common interests um, that we get close. And then, you know, I, I wonder, does, did that play a part in how close this cast ended up being? It's a good question. Uh, I, I just I think that it has to, happens to like, do also with just like the like level of sportsmanship uh, in mm. the group also, and like the lack of like serious hard feelings that a lot of times can happen uh, with these survivor casts. Um, it was you know uh, we could, I'm sure we'll talk about the the final vote, but uh, it was uh, n not a case where the jury came across as like especially bitter uh but you know um well i i think that's actually a, probably a bigger discussion that we'll have along the way let's talk about the season and and, and go through it and okay. you know I, I talked about the opening of millennials versus gen x but uh you know it, it is like uh so hard to get through like all of the different introductions without the eye rolling of all the different people <laughs> like uh you know self-describing as uh whether they're millennials whether gen x is what they think about the other generations 
<laughs> it's a lot of when I was your age, we had to walk to school uphill both ways and six feet of snow, and we didn't even have shoes. You were lucky to have a pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. um, like that to me is that's how it comes across whenever they talk about the the generation gap. And I do feel like in general, like it's weird because Jeff clearly liked the millennial tribe better, I think, as you yeah. walk, watch the season. But the season as a whole is very disparaging of the millennial generation in favor of, oh, well, Gen X works so hard and oh, Gen X is this. Uh, and a lot of the time when they're trying to just acknowledge a difference, it makes it seem like, oh, this new way of doing things is so laissez-faire and it doesn't <laughs> matter and blah, blah. When it's really like... No, these are all still just people with complex lives and they're a product of their environment and they're doing what they see fit. Uh, like it, it makes the Gen X rationale seem valid and the millennial rationale seem kind of like a joke, even though it's very obvious that the millennial tribe is Jeff's favorite. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that might also speak to the fact that they are an incredible group. Like, I think that if we ever like did like one of the lists or ranking podcasts where we talk about like you know best starting tribes, like I, I think that the millennials make a strong case for being one of the best tribes of all new players, like in the history of the show. And not just necessarily like from like, oh, the best players, but just in terms of like casting that hard to find uh, too many you know people that you say like uh, like were total misses. Yeah, it's so compelling because, you know, like other seasons, there are times that you go to a certain tribe or there's t TV time for a certain tribe and you're like, OK, OK, let's let's move on. But mm -hmm. then like with the millennials, I loved watching every second of them because if you weren't focused on, you know, Jay and Taylor and Figgy, you were focused on a Michaela or you were focused on Hannah and Zeke and Adam. It's just you, it, you didn't miss. There was no one person, it, even the people that we didn't see a lot from, like a Michelle or Will, we wanted to know more about them. So they it was just like moments. solid. Right, yeah. right. And especially in, uh, uh, to contrast it with the Gen X tribe, which, you know, uh, not to slight the Gen X tribe, but that I feel like that the parts of the pre merge, I think that kind of drag a little bit are the times that we spend over at the Gen X tribe. Well, because so much of what we see at the Gen X tribe at the beginning ultimately amounts to nothing because a lot of it is, oh, we don't trust David. We have to get David out. What if David has an idol, blah, blah, blah. And then someone else gets voted out and we don't really get to see that other person's story. So we just don't know that tribe as well. And we never get the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a good point. We uh, see everybody on the the mat, and then uh, like uh, it's really I'm surprised. Like the teams like really talk a lot of trash about the other teams uh, as they're all uh, standing there. Yeah, it was like whoa, whoa, whoa! Y'all are eventually gonna merge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was kind of, it was odd. Um, but it once they knew, okay, this is millennials, we're Gen X, okay. It's because we constantly hear it in the real world too. You know, like if any, anybody's working with a different generation, you're gonna hear these things because that's just the the popular thing to do right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there was any universe where Will could have not said that he's the first high schooler to play Survivor? Like, would Jeff have allowed that? Um. I think that he, if he said that that's what he was going to do, like, I, I think it would have been okay. Like, I feel like that there's other players that have like lied about their occupation and Jeff doesn't like override what they want to do. But I think he like knows what they're comfortable saying and not. I just think Jeff was so excited to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a situation where Will may have th like toyed with the idea, but Jeff probably can like, no, don't you think it'd be really cool if you're yeah. the first high schooler to play? <laughs> Jeff loves the idea of young people playing on the show. We talked about the 16 year olds, but it, it, you know, at some point in the twenties, you know, Jeff is obsessed with g cutting to kids at the reunion, talking about how survivor, you watch it with your family, you get your kids around your mom's like uh so he really loves any chance to sort of say that 
you know, and I think that maybe millennials versus Gen X ties into that of like young people like the show for one reason, but older people like the show for another reason. And so it's just like a, like all tying back to the fact that, you know, survivor crosses the generations. Yeah. Something for everybody. Full circle. That's what I, that I think X. that's why I think there's no way they're not going to revisit this. In a gen now that Gen Z is like they're really on the come up with this TikTok and well mm -hmm. I, I kind of sound old I'm on TikTok I, I watch <laughs> TikToks <laughs> they're on the TikTok <laughs> now I feel like it's gonna be um in the Gen Z Tribal Council Jeff will be like no I noticed um you're all sitting in your seats is that because you're used to staying in frame for a TikTok. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole the whole tribe in unison is they're gonna say sheesh. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so such a big part of the early going here is uh one of the most beautiful love stories uh, that I've ever seen, Asia, between Figgy and Taylor. <sighs> Yeah, beautiful. I, okay, his eyes are gorgeous. Like to see that piercing blue. Okay, that's the only thing I can see about Figgy's interest because you are out. Like Michaela said, like when Michaela was talking about your breath stinks, you stink. Like that is the truth. How are you thinking about a romantic relationship? Um, but but they did it, and yeah, they're pretty dang cute. Yeah, that was a a, a great line from Michaela. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, he didn't that, lie. That comes, I think, after Figgy and Taylor are making out uh, at, <laughs> at one point. Now, yeah. Kirsten, uh, this is a little bit more in your jurisdiction in terms of the <laughs> type of shows that you watch. But yeah, I, I believe I would define Taylor as a hot dummy on an island. Yes. Yeah that I cannot recall another time that survivors uh, are making out on the island in this rewatch. I mean, do, do Rob and Amber and like, I uh, know I was gone. Uh, like, uh, so that's, un that's unclear. And then I think like, I know Amanda, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, not Amanda, um, that there is a kiss that comes between Candace and Amanda, I think an Aussie kiss, uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but uh, that Candace uh, kisses Adam, in, uh, like uh, in Cook Islands. But this was just like uh, a makeout sesh. <laughs> full, Sheesh. full on makeout <laughs> sesh. I do think that there is one very important thing that needs to be said about fig tales. Uh, they keep calling themselves from day one a power couple. And I do think it's important to note that there's a difference between being in a couple and being a power couple. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but also like the whole time that they're together, I couldn't get, uh, I think it was Will from America who did the fig tales to the ducktails theme. Mm -hmm. It's been stuck in my head since I started watching this season. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the fig figgy and Taylor, you know, that they're just, they don't care. And I guess it sort of gets chalked up to like, Hey, millennials hook up all the time. It's not a big deal. Yeah, until Jeff Probst is like, hey, I'm ordained. Would you get <laughs> right. married right now at this tribal council? And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, that's... What if that's, they said yes? I then it would have been unless... it would have been more it would have been yeah. more in my wheelhouse then it could have been a married at first night yeah, situation <laughs> yeah almost Asia. um and then but then figgy got voted out it, <laughs> adam destroyed figtail's love and i don't think we talk enough about that how dare you adam klein yeah does I anybody know. object to these two people being together <laughs> i do Right. It's the steps, bro. The but steps. Adam also, ironically, yeah. would not object to some dinner at that point. <laughs> good good <laughs> callback. Uh, and I was going to say, Adam uh, would be like... Marriage? Yeah. <laughs> Figgy and Taylor's a marriage. <laughs> I love how, um, and I know obviously jumping way ahead at the reunion, Jeff's like, so what's the situation with Figgy and Taylor? And Figgy is so uncomfortable. She's like, yeah, it was, you know, a time and a place, but it is no more. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, yeah, and Taylor, you have a kid now. 
Right. So Jeff was well aware of the situation. Oh, he's well aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was well aware. Because Figgy gave like a all time great exit interview following that episode where uh it was like, All right, all right, we're on on line with Figgy and uh Figgy, so what's going on with you and Taylor? She's like, Well, like she's like, I've got like a bottle of Jack right now. Uh he, he's got a baby. Um so yeah, that was that was pretty wild. But it's it's very interesting. We don't have a ton of like survivor like like out and out showmances in the history of the show. Like this is very rare that we get a, a figgy and a tailor. Yeah, because your not breath big brother. smells, <laughs> you're under like you're disgusting. Like Michaela did a lie. <laughs> yeah. I have another one that says Michaela hookups. In the middle of the night, I hear a kiss sound. Oh, yeah. And I was like, y'all can't be for real. You stink. Your mouth is nasty. You got sand in your drawers and you kissing somebody. That's disgusting. Yeah. Fact. Sand She's in your drawers. Right. Facts. Yeah. Michaela has never done anything but speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah. Like, what would your reaction have been? You're on Survivor. It's like day three or whatever. You're obviously people are very dirty out there, and you hear people just slurping away, making out. You hear someone's tongue touch another yeah. person's tongue. What's your reaction going to be? Like, Rob and Amber are going to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's we it's weird how sometimes the relationship works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, <laughs> maybe. Like millennial thing <laughs> maybe it's my, my, robin ever gen xers <laughs> right <laughs> back in our day when you uh hooked up with somebody on survivor you made an honest woman out of them <laughs> you proposed on the finale like <laughs> it meant something you didn't just meant have something. another baby mm -hmm. someone else yeah and then you took her on the amazing race like a gentleman <laughs> and then you write a cookbook <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so that's going on here in uh, the first episode, and we uh, see uh, Figgy and Taylor. They're going to team up with uh, with Jay and Michelle. They're going to make an alliance called uh, the Triforce. Triforce. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can see this one from a mile away, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like how Jay calls Michelle Namaste. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was really hoping that would stick, but it kind of fell off. Yeah. I it needs to be said. Um Michelle has a rat tail. Yes. Uh mm -hmm. it's braided, it's down to her waist. I think she still has it in present day. I don't know. But I personally find this rat tail to be horrifying and it's like one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and there are many times in my notes of this season that are just like, ugh, rat tail. <laughs> yes. Uh, what about when she shows up for the finale? We're like, uh, like wrapped from head to toe, like in yes. a dragon. Yeah. Uh, famously, she believes in dragons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's an interesting character, Michelle, because I feel like that she has like uh, moments of like, uh, like, oh, wow, she's like a really good player. And then other times, like she's just completely off the show. <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like she was too chill. Like that's her temperament. But mm -hmm. because that's her temperament, it comes off of just like when you have these like dominant personalities, that's just overshadowed. So that wasn't like the most compelling thing to watch. But it was very, I mean, she's very cool, chill. The vibes are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the vibes are good. Uh, um, just to uh, round out the uh, millennials tribe, uh, that we get to see Zeke. Zeke is all over the uh, pre merge. And, you know, it's interesting that, you know, Zeke talks a lot about like growth in this season. But, but I found generally on this rewatch that I feel like that Zeke arrives like pretty fully formed. He gets the fire started in episode uh, one or two uh, episode without one, yeah, without using Flint. But when we talk about David Wright, or uh, goes on like a like growth journey, like David Wright is like uh, sticking his fingers in his ears on the first day <laughs> and is scared of everything. Like I feel like that Zeke arrives to Survivor like pretty much like r ready to go. Like uh, maybe like he had like some self doubt, but I, I didn't notice it. 
Well, and Zeke also comes in as kind of the millennial who doesn't want to be a millennial. Like a lot of quotes about being like, look at my shirt. I'm ready for the seniors mixer at the retirement home. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kids these days are talking about. Uh, And that's very much how we see him at first. Uh, So, yeah, I I feel like if anything, he ages in reverse. (laughs) He does. He said he's on a tribe with children. Yeah. Um, so you feel like, like he's more Jesus. millennial by the end of the season? By the end of the season, he's a Gen Z baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sheesh. Sheesh. Yeah. So, th- yeah, uh, Zeke is like a like seemingly like the per- only person there who like uh, like has a semblance of like uh, what what needs to be done. Uh, Hannah also like ha- has a lot to do uh, in the first episode. And I have to say, I think that I was probably most impressed with Hannah from this rewatch from uh, what, like, I think I had like the, the biggest Delta from uh, what I thought about a person when I watched the season originally to what I uh, thought about them after watching uh, this season back. I had the I kind of had the opposite. I was rooting for Hannah the first watch. Like I, mm-hmm. I look and I know people are like, what the heck? But I honestly was I was blown away she didn't get at least one vote. Like in well, the Well, yeah, that's tribal. what I'm I'm saying the same thing. Uh that well, yeah, I, but I, I was I was high on her during the first watch. Like I was rooting for her. I could see why she was doing well. I didn't see her as kind of like just this, just uh just like a supporting character. Um, to everyone else. And so the, on the second mm-hmm. watch, I'm trying to, I was trying to see like, okay, how did, were people seeing her the way they were seeing her the first time? Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I think that in the first watch through people did not, even though Hannah was playing a good game, I don't think people saw her as a contender to even really be at the end. I think people thought she would be taken out. And so I feel like we weren't really watching the season under the lens of like, how is Hannah doing? Like, how could she win the game? Whereas on the rewatch, we obviously know she loses that final tribal council. And so I feel like it was more obvious even seeing like the little moments that they put in to show where Hannah's communication style maybe rubs someone the wrong way or how someone maybe um, doesn't perceive her the way that she perceives herself. And I think that she was just in a position where it didn't even really matter what she said. Uh, People didn't, think of her as a contender. So she wasn't a contender, even though she played a great game. Yeah. And we're not there the whole time. And so like, uh, and everybody had like, uh, you know, a a lot more information than we have watching the show. But I felt like that, uh, especially like, I thought she had some good arguments at the final tribal council. And I just thought it was odd that nobody seemed to even be considering giving her some uh, votes And, and not to take anything away from Adam as a player, but uh, I thought she made like some really like uh, compelling points at the final tribal council. Yeah, but Adam turned around and turned those points against her of, well, yeah, she's claiming that move, but it wasn't an optimal move and it was a bad move. And it was like on, it was on the outs of her. Like, but why does Adam- he get to decide what's the what? optimal move? Because people. What is he, the judge? I, I think the main problem is the whole thing with not voting David out at five. Every single person on this season was like David, 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 David. And so the fact that she is owning the move of flipping to vote out Brett first, even though she was right that it helped her get further, mm-hmm. people are like, you put David one immunity away from winning the season. So yeah. we can't reward you. And I well, think that it really comes down to just that like one decision and she like a general perception also got like no credit for like a, like Chris Hammond stands up at the end. He's like, he's like, yes! I got it. I, I got to uh, give credit to the one person who made the biggest move of the season. And that is Adam because he got Ken to vote out. David who was going to win the whole game. So give it. And like, wait, hold on. But I, I can watch <laughs> Hannah was yeah. the one that she didn't vote. She didn't vote out Brett at final five because she's like, well, then Ken will never work with me if I do that. And Ken's mm-hmm. whole thing is about being loyal. So if I, if I need to still have like the relationship with Ken, I need to stick with him on this vote. And then at the final four, she goes to Ken and it's like, Ken, this is it. This is the move that we have to make. And then Adam got all the credit in the final three. 
I felt really bad actually for Ken in that moment uh, because <laughs> Ken in final tribal council at every moment people are like yeah whatever you were loyal that survivor of the past you're nothing now old man and then he gets no agency I'm, over I'm right here <laughs> no agency over None. his decision to actually vote David out at four, like at all. And like, yeah, Hannah talked to him, Adam talked to him, but he still had to write David's name down. And he did that. Um, he gets no credit for it. And you just see this, this Adonis of a man is just sitting there looking so sad for mm -hmm. the whole final travel. Like I felt really bad for him. Right. And it like, the like there were so many things wrong with that Chris moment of saying, okay, all props goes to Adam because, okay, yeah, in that moment, does Ken say, no, 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 Hannah convinced me, <laughs> or does he say, oh, no, I, I, I make my own decisions, but mm -hmm. he, so he went with the latter, but then it was like, wait, 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 no, now Hannah gets no credit for that. I'm like, what is this? You have the wrong understanding. Is, that's what y'all went back to Ponderosa and talked about. And cause I feel like too, like we saw Hannah's pitch. We saw Adam's pitch. We didn't really get to see Ken's inner monologue. I feel like we can't even say for sure what was the ultimate decider on why Ken voted Dave out there like we really mm -hmm. don't know uh, but the show wants us to believe it was not Ken's idea and that's all we know <laughs> that, that's it, <laughs> that's it. I, I also felt like that in the interplay between Hannah and Adam at the final tribal council I know we're like we're talking about the first episode but that we're also like talking about the finale but uh, it's interesting <laughs> because I felt like that you know uh, that like Michelle gets up and is like you know uh, Hannah how many times did you vote wrong and she's like uh, like uh, I, I, I didn't vote wrong at all like the only thing was uh, Michaela uh, and then Adam who did make mistakes along the way had had many more blunders uh, than Hannah had like is asked about that he's like he said, basically, it was like uh, the, his allies weren't playing optimally. That's why he they were blunders. <laughs> He's like, like my allies your game. made blunders. Like, I played perfectly. The other players <laughs> voted wrong. <laughs> Yeah, but he sells it. Like, he yeah. sells it, and obviously they were buying what he was selling. Like, I think a lot of it comes down to Adam knew how to communicate it to the jury in a way that they would understand, take it in, and respect with their votes. Yeah. I just also think, like, they had not shown Hannah the respect along the way that they should have shown her, and that fed into their perception going into the final tribal council yeah. as well. And I'm not so bold as to say Hannah should have won the season, you know, uh, that, uh, but like, I, I think it shouldn't have been 10 to zero. And I think some people should have given, uh, Hannah more consideration for her vote. And again, I, I don't know if that comes down to where we're talking about, like the difference between a man in the final three and the difference between a woman in the final three. And, you know, Hannah having issues with anxiety where people felt like that they needed to be a, you know, uh, like, uh, uh, more supportive to her at times. And then, and then they get betrayed by her and it's the same sort of thing like that, uh, like a Dawn dealt with in the final three where it's like, hold on, Dawn, we took care of you when you were, when you were, uh, like, uh, upset and we, and you were crying crying and we were there to, to nurture to you and then you turn around and stab us in the back like what's up with that um you know hannah's called a flip-flopper adam is uh you know called you know uh i forget what word they use uh to call him but you know they're willing he's like he's playing the game you know he's all over the place right and shout out to just my archetype yes that hannah is hosting because on there I mean, it's very evident, especially in that episode, she was able to talk about how she knew her character. And I could see that she knew the role she played and, and that she had to play. She knew the archetype that she was on the show and she played into that. And even though people didn't like it or that wasn't their ideal, that, that wasn't the type of archetype that they would root for. She knew her place in the game, used the strengths that she had to get where she did, and she got no credit for it. And mm. I was mad about it in 2016, mad about it now, but here we are. Well, especially to now that we know Hannah so much better and we have heard her on podcasts and she's like literally she's filled in on know-it-alls. She knows the game and you know she knows the game. And it just sucks that uh, for whatever reason, the jury wasn't able to take that in and give it any respect. At the same time, they show a number of times over the course of the season 
uh, issues where communication styles are not matching up. And I think that was shown to be like, and this is why Hannah maybe mm-hmm. didn't, to make us understand. Because if they didn't show us those moments, I think everyone would be like, I don't, uh, what are you talking about? Give <laughs> give Hannah the votes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Hannah is, uh, you know, uh, one of the people that is, uh, you know, uncomfortable with her position here as it looks like there's like, uh, she's the one who's using a lot of high school analogies about like, uh, the cool kids, uh, over there. There's a lot of that here, uh, over Kappa the Kappa of the survivor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, you know, a- Adam is giddy from the start to be on Survivor. Like, uh, when they go to that, fir- that first tribal council that they go to. Uh, he can barely contain himself. <laughs> Just uh, oh, super I excited. I thought you had a clip. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, no I, 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 I don't have one uh, in particular. Um, and then, uh, I mean, th- th- that's, uh, and Jay, uh, Jay, I, I thought like, uh, I was really impressed with him, uh, over the course of the entire season where that, you know, I, I didn't know what we had in Jay, uh, the first time through up until the very end. I didn't appreciate him until way late in the season. And then he is, uh, just like, uh, so great every time he's on the screen. He's electric. Yeah. Jay had to grow on me. Because mm-hmm. I was still down on Jay when he flipped the vote on Michaela and naturally rooting for Michaela at, at the time, especially on the first watch, I was like, oh, no, 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 Jay, like, you got to go. But dead then <laughs> you're, yeah, you're dead to me. Um, but then he just transforms. And I think what really did it for me outside of the immunity idols or the um, winning the immunity was his transformation with Adam because you saw the maturity. I think I initially pegged him the same as Taylor. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that uh, it's such a great story throughout the season of like that. He and Adam are feuding. They don't get along. They like uh, Jay, like actively dislikes Adam. Adam like uh, tries to make amends with Taylor and Jay and they're basically like tricking him. They throw him under the bus and then eventually like they end up coming back together. And, you know, I think that that's also one of the beautiful things about the season. Yeah. They become like brothers, basically. The one thing with Jay too, Jay has funny confessionals the whole way through though. He has the one where um, when they're talking about fake tales, he talks about like how you miss like bowling with your friends. Cause you're like dating a girl. Um, he has the one where it's like, Oh, high school, college, nine to five, get a life. Like okay, he has well, good. high school, college, nine to five, get a, get a, get a life. <laughs> like he's got great <laughs> confessionals the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wild that he hasn't played uh, Survivor. And I know he's done uh, the challenge and uh, X on the beach, but yeah, it, it is wild that he has uh, never been uh, brought back. I mean, from this season, I guess. Uh, so Zeke and Michaela play again, and then uh, we'll see David Wright on the edge of extinction, and then Adam will play again in uh, Winners at War. But yeah, J- it's like uh, when when was Jay supposed to come back between thirty three right. and and forty? Right. Yeah, if he didn't come back for Game Changers and then uh, didn't come back with the Edge of Extinction crew, yeah, there haven't been that many other opportunities for him. But you would think that he's probably a no brainer for uh you know the next time that they do some sort of like a uh, second chances or or something like that. Um, you know uh. We haven't really talked too much about the Gen Xers, uh, but uh, we can talk about them because they're going to go to the first tribal council. But a big part of the first episode is the cyclone comes in yes. and it, it's actually a like pretty good weather season for Survivor. Like I feel like that we get like the bad cyclone to start the season and then I kind of feel like that we don't see it rain again the rest of the way. I'm trying to think if there's any other times uh, where we have uh, bad weather the rest of the season. There was once but, during Tribal Council that it started to rain. But yeah, but but it's a pretty good weather season. Uh, but we get the cyclone where the, for the first time in Survivor history, the survivors need to be evacuated in Asia. Like I could not imagine that it's like, you know, it, this it ha- would happen like later on in the Survivor season. But I think this happened on, was it uh, night one was the night that was just like the torrential downpour. And then they have to be evacuated on day two. 
Yeah, and it's it was hilarious because they, of course, they probably think it's because they're millennials, but they didn't finish their shelter in time. They're out having yeah. fun in the water before the light, the, before it got dark. And I'm sure they naturally weren't thinking, oh, it's going to be pitch black. And so then they have nothing to sleep on, torrential downpour, everyone's miserable, no one gets any sleep. Um, and so that, I mean, I would have just been thinking, like, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was crazy that they they had to evacuate them. First of yeah. two times in survivor history where the survivors have to be evacuated. I think the other one was in uh, HHH. They have to get evacuated later on in the game, but they come back and uh, we're going to then uh, get the survivors. We go to our immunity challenge and uh, the millennials are good at puzzles. Uh, Gen Xers are dumb. Millennials are good at figuring well, stuff out. So this um, challenge is also the one where you can take shortcuts. Yeah. Um, but for each shortcut you take, you get an additional 10 pieces to your puzzle. Uh, and the, the Gen Xers kind of have to take the shortcut to get through the rope maze because they're just bigger physically. Um, and then they t I think they take it again on the uh, balance beam. So they have 20 more pieces to their puzzle. Uh, yeah. And I think millennials only... Or did millennials take one shortcut? I don't remember. One, but yeah, they yeah. Took the, one, the millennials one. had a smaller puzzle, and so they were able to get it put together a lot faster, too. Yeah, let me just, before we get too many tweets about this, uh, <laughs> Sam is saying uh, David versus Goliath was the other evacuation, not HHH. Oh, perfect. How dare yeah. you, Rob? No, you've already gotten the tweets, Rob. <laughs> you think they're, so? They're you think there. you only took the third 60 seconds? Oh, I think the second you said HHH, the phones came out, <laughs> Twitter is open. Rob, do you even know anything? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, nine to five. Nine. Get on. You do even know anything? <laughs> It was yeah. David versus Goliath. <laughs> yeah. I mean, meanwhile, Asia and I were just nodding along. I'm like, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. not a historian. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, I uh, haven't watched that season uh, yet in the countdown. Mm. So, Very okay. true. The more you yeah. know. Um, so we go back to the um, uh, the Gen X camp. And really, it, it's a lot of David in uh, the early going and how uh, David is fitting in. He doesn't like any loud noises. Uh, he has a fear of dying. Is it? Uh, do we get? Do we get that in the opening episode? I think we do because I think they just talk about how he's afraid of everything, and we get a confessional mm -hmm. from him about how he's very, very afraid of dying. Mm -hmm. um, we see. Uh, oh, all I can think about now is Jessica's red, red eyes after the yeah. evacuation. I'm sorry. Yes, but so. Ultimately, the, you know, uh, it was David and Rachel on the puzzle and uh, the tribe is going to ultimately decide to keep David around and get rid of Rachel. And, you know, as uh, Kirsten had mentioned early on, you know, there's a lot of characters uh, from the pre-merge that we really don't get to know. And it's uh, not only did uh, they get voted out, but we really did not see the story from their perspective uh, where, you know, to, uh, to contrast that with like the earlier seasons of Survivor where we talked about like, okay, well, uh, when this person is getting voted out, like they get a lot in their boot episode. Um, we don't really spend a lot of time with uh, Rachel, Lucy, uh, Cece. Uh, also, we, we hardly get to know uh any of those three women who are early boots from the gen x side well yeah and like i have in my notes from episode one rachel literally did nothing wrong like it's yeah. it's, it's not clear from the episode well, why rachel was the one they even voted out yeah the two things we see are that she's like uh sort of annoying paul when he's trying to get yeah. the fire going and then oh, her God and forbid, <laughs> paul's annoyed her and david were on the puzzle uh and then uh, those are the two names that are that are talked about now again david is out looking for the idol and so i'm not sure if it's uh perhaps that they're like hey mm. like are we are we playing with fire here by uh, putting those on David when he may well have the idol? Right, because they saw him mm -hmm. looking. I think they could have at least said that, and I feel like they also knew David didn't have it because David was so concerned about. Um, he thought Ken had it, right? Yeah, yeah. He said, I trust you. He's like he you. had something in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like yeah, look at no, something's in his Paul. hand. It must be an idol. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm telling you, those guys have an idol. Uh, they uh, narrator voice. Uh, they did not have an idol. <laughs> right? 
could, could you imagine if David played with that level of like angst the whole season? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that he did. It was yeah, like on a. He, he comes through. It's really like around the swap. Uh, he seems to like settle in a little bit. Yeah, because well, I think until the swap, he was on borrowed time for sure. And then <laughs> the swap, he's able to kind of get his feet under him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, Rachel is going to become uh, the first person that gets uh, voted out of the tribe. Uh, still don't know a lot about Rachel. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope she's doing amazing. Yeah. 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 I hope she enjoyed her couple of days out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, uh, uh, David Wright is going to find the hidden immunity idol to start the second episode. Yes. He's looking for rocks to sit on yeah. as an excuse. And there's a weird thing <laughs> in this season about, and, and that, that is edited like in a really cool way of like cutting back and forth to David Wright, like uh, carrying the rocks and then cutting back to looking for the idols. So there's some fun editing there. Uh, there's an interesting thing they do with the hidden immunity idols here in this season. Um, not, not that it's like uh, so exciting. It's just interesting in that like, this is the only season that we have it where you find like a tree branch or a rock or a coconut or a seashell that has your tribe logo on it. And then sometimes a clue is hidden in there and sometimes the idol is hidden in there. Right. And then you have to like break it open, which just Mm -hmm. reminds me of like the Lion King with them (laughs) breaking open the coconut. It's just simple. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> okay um we see that uh david wright though does get the fire started i think that this is uh you know uh one of three different times in the season that the show makes a big meal out of like somebody got the fire started and it means that they're really like coming into their own right and is it like subtle foreshadowing to the 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 final four if they go, if they had to go to the point of making fire, that Adam was a little nervous because mm-hmm. David was making fire. Yeah, uh, David Wright famously is like an incredible fire maker. Like uh, he's an unlikely person, but that you uh, would not want to go job. up against him. No, yeah. but I, I think it's actually very likely that he would be because I feel like we get to see throughout the season how David thinks, and David thinks very logically he seems very process driven and so i think he seems like exactly the kind of person who'd be like these are the steps you need to go through in order to make fire and i'm going to go through this algorithm until i successfully make Mm -hmm. fire and i will keep doing it until i get like to me it makes perfect sense that he would be the person and i don't know if he's like an avid camper because i can't imagine that's the case i have to think that no he said he hasn't been camping since he was like a kid in the first episode so he he, it had to have been that he knew he was going on survivor and just like uh practice 10 million times making the fire because this is the same guy who printed 3d puzzles <laughs> right. well hey it paid off prepared one. king of preparation He's the king of preparation <laughs> yeah okay um so uh meanwhile uh over at the gen x side of things uh figgy and taylor uh, that's really coming together. Michaela is uh, not a fan of uh, Figgy and Taylor getting together, uh, but it's really Mari, Mari Takahashi, who uh, comes into focus as sort of like a, a, a loud voice against uh, the showmance. She is working with uh, the group of Zeke and Hannah and Adam, uh, ultimately, uh, she is going to be the person that the millennials are going to target uh, when they realize that uh, people are coming for Figgy at this vote. And Mari Takahashi is just a story of like uh, what might have been on Survivor, uh, just uh, untapped potential. She was a lot of people's winner pick, I remember. Yeah. 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 I definitely would have wanted to see more because, especially with the people that she's aligned with, like, I know they ended up doing really well, but who knows what mm-hmm. what the, the the moves they could have made even yeah. with one more number. Yeah, because I feel like Mari is presented in this episode as uh like there's the cool kids and that's the Triforce. And then there's like the Island of Misfit Toys. And like, she's the great uniter who's bringing together the people who don't fit in quote unquote, even though like there's more of those people than the like Triforce, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
full disclosure that I, I did talk to Mari preseason before she went to go play in survivor i had like an hour long uh skype call through like a, a mutual friend had set that up and so they said uh this this is mari she's gonna be on survivor uh can you tell her everything uh she needs to know so this is your fault i mean i thought she did prove she was doing pretty good <laughs> But she was not, I, I don't believe she was like a Survivor super fan. I'm not sure how much mm. uh, Survivor she had seen prior to this. Yeah, this is another situation where throughout the episode, we really see Mari as like a player who is taking control and being pretty smart to target the quote unquote power couple uh, and then um, voted out. Uh, that's it. Never mind. We we don't get to see her rise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is going to be a very exciting uh, tribal council that uh, Mari is going to go home at. Uh, I, I will add that uh, we have a, a medical emergency uh, that I thought Paul was going to be medically evacuated. I yeah. forgot he recovers and gets voted out in the next episode. I uh, forgot about oh, yeah. that. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, this was pretty wild that they're like, oh, my God, Paul's having a heart attack. Get medical. Dr. Joe. And they're like, OK, he's fine. Yeah, <laughs> Paul is Paul is sitting there like I'm I'm so scared I'm so scared I'm so yeah. scared and it's like very emotional and Jeff is just like Paul is on the ground he's saying he can't feel his hands uh the doctor is here like but Jeff back up like this it reminded <laughs> me like when you um talked about during the Korong podcast when Caleb is like dying and Jeff is still being a host it's like take that hat off for a second <laughs> sir what are you doing like because even can't. when like because they have it, Paul's on the ground, um, medical's there, but the doctor is not there yet. And then you just see Jeff, like, hiking over a hill, like, what's going on? Like, so excited to see what's happening. I'm like, sit down. This is a somber occasion. Paul is scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. His chest was tight. His hands were numb. It, I felt short of breath. Just this, like, I knew he was going to be okay, but then it was just like, oh, I couldn't imagine feeling that way and being dehydrated and having that heat. On me, absolutely not. I did um, not know that losing feeling in your hands was a common symptom of heat exhaustion. Right? Who knew? What? Yeah. Dr. Joe knew. Dr. Joe. Uh, but yeah, they said, no, no, he's fine. Uh, send him back. <laughs> Never mind. Go back. You're good. Here's he's some fine. water. He's fine. Classic uh, Gen Xer. Okay. Classic and... Gen Xer with health conditions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we have at this. Uh, a big tribal council where uh, we see that the Triforce, uh, Michelle in particular, like we cannot lose Figgy no matter, no matter what we got to keep this together. And so now they did have the votes. Uh, we see them sort of uh, rally the troops together where uh, somehow Michaela, who was like very anti Figgy and Taylor uh, they uh, get Michaela to uh, get back on board. Uh, Figgy is like, come on, Michaela. Come on. Yeah. Jay like has this mediation session with Figgy and Michaela to say, y'all need to hash this out and get on the same page. And it's all because Zeke and Adam told Jay what the plan was. I'm like, isn't it very, very clear that they're close? Like, why would Jay be okay with you mm -hmm. wanting Figgy out? Mm-hmm. It's radical honesty. Ever heard of it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I did in this episode when Figgy and uh, Michaela talk, I was getting very upset at the way that Figgy was talking to Michaela. Because I feel like Michaela is very much like, this is what's going on. This is why I want you out. That's it. Mm -hmm. And Figgy's like, you're a phony. You're a baby. Like being very rude. And I was like, back off. Like leave Michaela alone. <laughs> Right. I was Whoa. ready to go to go hard like for Michaela there. Yeah. But I mean, Michaela turned around. Uh she said okay, she would vote with uh with Figgy and Taylor and then Michelle goes to work on Will Wall and then uh gets him and then uh there she's like they have the votes. They have the votes here. M Michelle is not satisfied and during tribal council she's just like Hannah vote out. <laughs> You got to do it. Vote out. And Hannah's like, why though? Why? Vote tell me why. Mari. Why? I'll, I'll do it, but tell me why. Why? Just right. like, I'll tell you later. Just do it. I'll tell you, just do it. Do it. Do it. She's like, but why? I told you to do it. Just do it. And yeah. then we get Hannah like agonizing over her vote where she's mm -hmm. there for a very long time at the first tribal council. 
it's such a great moment when Hannah is like standing there with the marker and she's like, ah, and, and you see Jeff like peek around the corner yeah. and stick his head in like, yeah, like, yeah, he's just like making sure like she wasn't like passed out or anything. <laughs> right. uh, and he's just like, oh, uh, right, yeah, still there. Still loading. Okay. Yeah. You even yeah. had the moment where like Hannah and uh, Michelle were whispering and Mari specifically was like, oh, Hannah's probably just talking about puppies or butts uh, or and something. Bots. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, because those are two common things that you do talk about in the same conversation. Yeah. I mean, I think that if you were to call Hannah right now and say, what are your two favorite things to talk about? She'd probably say puppies and butts. Who, mm -hmm. who among us wouldn't? You know, I know she does love puppies, but uh, I've said, I cannot recall her often talking about butts. I'm like, should I text her right now and say, what's your <laughs> opinion on butts? Should that have been the name of her podcast? Puppies and butts? Puppies and butts. Puppies and butts. Mm -hmm. Then I would really open it up and she could talk about whatever she wants. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast about nothing. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ultimately, uh, Mari goes, I wonder, uh, would Mari ever play again? What about Mari for a second chance this season? Is she too big for Survivor? Is she? I I don't think she She's very is, successful, but I also don't think I don't think it was a situation where she was there long enough to learn enough to do different, you know, to have yeah. better success. Yeah, but I don't think she even necessarily did anything wrong. Yeah. Like, I feel like the things that she was saying seemed smart, came across well, uh, but it was just there was this power couple that she could not overcome. Yeah. Tom McMari. Uh, I think she's just uh, like, what does she need this aggravation for? Uh, 853,000 Instagram followers for uh, Mari Takahashi. Said the same thing to Andrea Belki, and you know she what? Went anyways. Yeah, but look, that was still solid advice. What, what I didn't, what I didn't know is that you know how important Survivor is to Andrea personally. <laughs> that was the part of the equation that I, I stand by my calculus of like, hey, like a million bad things could happen and you could lose your job. Like, uh, like not a good, like, but again, I'm a Gen Xer. Like, hey, you got a good job. Why are you gonna give it up? Why are you gonna yeah, risk it? You did high school, college. You have the yeah, nine high school, five college, you got a good job uh, don't don't, don't <laughs> risk it like uh you got, you got health benefits uh why are you gonna give that up for a, a gamble now rob if asia and i were like we're going on survivor season 41 what would you tell us right now would you tell us not to go no i would say that it would be a good idea <laughs> Okay. Solid idea. I think I maintain that I would literally die and get the show canceled and then every all my friends would hate me in death. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You have the same friends as uh mm -hmm. Alyssa on Big Brother 23. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> no, no, not the same friends. Yeah. All right. Um, so after this vote, we see uh Hannah wants to talk to uh Zeke. And to Adam, and the, but this is painful to watch because it's so bad. Uh, yeah, I was cringing, but I couldn't tell who was totally. I could see both sides of it. I could see mm -hmm. Zeke's side of I just need a minute. I just need a second to yeah. process what just happened. But I, I could also see Hannah's side of it is like, but hear me out and then process because I don't want you processing while you're mad at me and like, coming to the wrong conclusion. Yeah. I think, like, logically, Hannah's right. You should have this out right away as soon as possible after the tribal council uh, just to get the information out there. But I, when someone is like, I will listen to you, but I just need to be alone right now, yeah. you have to take them at their word. Like, even Adam's like, he said he'll talk to you tomorrow. Please go away. Please. She's like, yeah, I will. But first, please let me say this. And they were like, no, we don't want to hear it. Please. Can we do this conversation tomorrow? Can we sleep on it? Like, it's not like they're like, oh, I want to go talk to everyone else first. They okay. are like, let's sleep on it. Please. I beseech you. Let me sleep on it. And I was like, yeah, you can can sleep on it but first let me explain it and it's just so painful <laughs> yeah yeah this <sighs> is uh every uh conversation that i've ever had with the first lady of podcasting where she's zeke and i'm hannah that's basically <laughs> but I, I think you have to defer to uh the zeke side of things yeah. where it's yeah. like if, if zeke is not ready to talk then you have to wait for it like uh, at least like give it an hour 
Like let's let's yeah. see if Zeke needs a minute. Like uh, let give Zeke him a minute. come to you. It's yeah. like it's the thing where like if you think someone's mad at you and you're like, are you okay? Are you mad? Are you okay? Are you mad? And then yeah. like eventually they become mad at you because you've checked in with them so much and yeah. they weren't mad before. Or, or if anything, like I think that maybe uh, Hannah could say like, okay, Adam, how about can I talk to you? Can I talk to you, right. Adam? Like, yeah. uh, like uh, you know, like but, when you say, can we sleep on it? And the person says, yes, but first, let me exit. It's like, well, no, you're obviously not listening to me because I don't want this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zeke was clearly not in a position to even properly hear whatever Hannah had to say. So, yeah, yeah she should have just walked away. But this is an interesting spot here because we're going to have Adam who here, who's the winner of our season, and Zeke, uh, who are at the bottom here of the Millennials Alliance. And they're going to try to scramble. Adam goes and tries to work with Michaela. She's not too interested in uh hearing what adam has to say uh it is funny to see you know uh like uh adam like be trying to like work his way back from this yeah because him and zeke were honestly convinced they i mean even adam congratulated figgy and taylor when they, yeah. when they got back good job guys yeah yeah so it, it it it's nice to see that where adam was here and then like where he ends up but I also, sorry, I also love how he goes, Zeke, it's just you and me on dumbass island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really liked that. Uh, this episode is also going to feature the summit. <laughs> right. Yes. Did you remember that this had happened? Uh, I totally I, forgot. I did remember it happened, but I went to say, well, maybe there was something here, but no. Yeah. I, the only thing I remembered from the summit was the giant loaves of bread. The bread looked so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not a lot going on there in the summit, uh, except Figgy and Taylor try to pretend they're not a couple at the summit. And then uh, we're going to see a uh, immunity challenge where the millennials are going to win. Uh, they win like some comfort items and then they try to trade like their comfort items for fishing gear. And yeah. it's interesting. Jeff is like, well, look, uh, it's not me. If they say you can have it, then like, we'll have it. And then like, they have like, like, a, like they huddle up and have a debate. Uh, and then Ken is like, well, as much as I enjoy spearfishing, uh, then I'm going to have to say no. It's like, um, if you're like, hey, mom, can my friend sleep over? And your mom's like, ask your father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not up to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the other part of that, the reason why that matters is at the beginning of the season, they had the choice. You could choose fishing gear or you could choose chickens. And the millennials yeah. chose chickens uh, because instant gratification, obviously. And the yeah. Gen Xers chose fish because the fishing gear because they're not afraid of hard work. Mm -hmm. Yep. The, there are a lot of things like that where they like had decisions built in where they can sort of say, so see, see, this is what millennials do. Millennials will always take chickens <laughs> instead of fishing gear. That is so true. Always. Yeah. yeah. And it, this, always is, do that. this is where we got another one of Michaela's iconic quotes um, where she was just like, well, we're already beating them. So they, they don't want to make us stronger. It makes sense. It's mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's an icon. Like, where did they find her? Why hasn't she been Texas. on like every season? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. tried. They tried. Like, they, they literally her put her on every season of reality TV. I don't think I would ever get sick of watching Michaela. Like the way she's like, uh, I'll try to hide what I'm feeling, but my eyebrows can't lie. <laughs> like I felt that. I ugh, a, a, a dream. She's a star. Mm -hmm. Um, so ultimately the Gen X is going to go back to tribal council here. And what is there sort of like, there's like a miscommunication that Paul kind of says like, Oh, like, well, the guys could do a guys thing if they want. And then that sort of got taken as that there's going to be a guys alliance. And so the it was, women... the, it was the way he said it because yeah. that's, that's what mattered to Jess was, well, it was said, what he said and the way he said, it. yes, exactly. He <laughs> said, if there's a guy's thing that I'm just going to have to like, see you guys later saying, if there is a guy's thing, I would be a part of it. And yeah. she didn't want that possibility. Yeah. So Jessica's like, no, 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 I'm going to do some work. Uh, in this episode, we also get Ken being like, 
why am I on the bottom? I killed a squid. I'm pro <laughs> providing for the tribe. I'm doing all of these things. And Paul isn't doing anything for everyone, but he's in and I'm not. I don't mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. Um, you and me both can. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, they go to tribal council here. And this is the famous tribal council where Jeff gets into the uh, like, uh, OK, do you do, do you do you or you when you text? <laughs> or, or he opened, I think first he says, so, OK, who, who here texts? <laughs> <laughs> who here not does me. the texting? It was like, Jeff, they're not 80. They have to <laughs> communicate. <laughs> They're yeah. alive in 2016. They probably text on some level. Yeah. And Ken is like the only one who really likes takes the bait on this stuff where then he seems like <laughs> really offended. It's like, no, we've got to use Y-O-U language. It's beautiful. It's well, but, then it's, but then it's amazing because Jeff goes, well, and then you're not so far removed from the fuddy-duddy who says you have to listen to music on vinyl. And then Ken's like, well, you know, there is a quality about <laughs> vinyl. <a> texture. <laughs> I like the texture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Vinyls yeah. are making a true comeback. So, How old is yeah. Ken McNichol? I, I think he's he like 34. 33? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was 33 on this season. Yeah. Yeah, he's only 38. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not even 40. he's not even 40 yet now. But he's like, well, you know, there's that texture. Yeah. <laughs> what do so. you think Ken McNichol was listening to on vinyl? Like what album was he was he putting on? Do you think it he was listening to like classic music or do you think he's listening to like the hits of today put on vinyl? <laughs> now that's what I call it's music today. 57. Like kids bop 16. Not like kids bop. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out kids bop for his daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Put it on vinyl. Got it, Got it on, on vinyl. vinyl. Actually, oh it God. sounds better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, Paul Walker, God voted out. What an interesting character that they found. I, <laughs> lead okay. singer of a rock band. Paul is like the leader of the Gen X tribe for three episodes. He's the episodes. front man of a band. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, like, I don't think I would ever let someone who acts like Paul Walker tell me what to do ever. I'm like, yeah. okay, Paul. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. Asia, does he seem more like a drummer in the band to you than the lead singer? Absolutely. As a drummer, as a millennial, as a drummer, as myself, a millennial drummer, <laughs> as a millennial drummer, he definitely looks like those guys that I see on Instagram yeah. that, that the hair, like tearing it up, not the singer. That's not what I, see, you could have bet. You could have <laughs> said, Asia, I will give you a million dollars to guess his role in the band. And it would not have been lead singer. <laughs> see, I would have said bassist because nobody knows who the bassist <laughs> is ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think the name of his band is? Paul's Posse. Paul's Posse. <laughs> 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 Easy. I can't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give it up, everybody, for Paul's Posse. Woo! You guys ready to rock? <laughs> right. I want to know what his singing voice sounds like. Apparently, yeah. his band is actually called Haywire because I just found a Reddit post of a video of his band <laughs> performing <laughs> <laughs> a song called Fortunate Son. Yes, yeah, uh, CCR. Okay, uh, I have it on vinyl. <laughs> it's okay. on texture. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so after Paul is gone, there's a little bit of a like a schism here in uh, the Gen Xers, where uh, it's like, did we make a mistake by voting out Paul? Because Lucy uh, is uh, is not feeling great. It seems like that Lucy does not love Jessica. Lucy. <sighs> throws Jessica under the bus so hard. Like, it was Jessica's idea. Yeah, like, she throws her under it, runs over it, backs up, does, yeah. does, pulls it, it, does it again. And, she, like She goes to um, Chris and Brett and is like, 
Well, I think that one person on our tribe is power hungry and they <laughs> had to take out the other person who had power, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lucy describes it like the day after she's like, oh, it's like when you cheat on somebody and then you feel bad the next day. Like, that's what this is. <laughs> Lucy. Yeah. Hey, it right. feels bad the next day. I feel like many people don't ever feel bad about mm -hmm. it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Imagine a world where Lucy doesn't do all of this how you know how far would she actually make it because yeah, i feel like she had the skills like i yeah. think she would have been okay and even like throwing jess under the bus i think would have been totally fine if she hadn't gone to ken and david and been like listen this is what you're doing don't look at jessica don't talk to jessica stay 10 <laughs> feet away from jessica at all times and if i yeah. see you break these rules i will know i will know yeah right. and also here of note, at the uh, Lucy vote. I mean, Lucy gets idled out of the game. That David Wright just ha like does like a wild play and plays his idol on uh, Jessica. Otherwise, that uh, Jessica would have been voted out here. Uh, five votes to uh, Lucy's two. So this uh, like should have been Jessica going home on this vote. Like had David Wright not played the idol. Yeah, and not just just for that reason alone, but the fact that Jessica exposed what Ken told her. Ken was trying to be a good yeah. guy. You know, loyalty is his, his thing at this point. Well, I mean, you're starting to learn it. They should have been starting to learn it. And then I would have been done. But it was big of David to go ahead yeah. and use it on her. But Ken is like super mad that that happened. And then later on in the season, Ken does the same exact thing to Will Wall. <laughs> right. Very true. It was a test. Okay. <laughs> it was a test. That was a test. Uh, Jessica gave me the test and then I gave it to Will. <laughs> yeah, she bequeathed it to him. Yeah, like the legacy advantage. Like the yeah. legacy advantage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do get the big like wrestling in uh, the water challenge uh, where they, again, this is like where uh, Michaela really has like uh, three or four episodes in a row where uh, she's a real superstar. Uh, and she really uh, is the like uh, one dominating player for the millennials tribe. They about to see some tie ties today. Yeah. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. So. She, yeah. She was the MVP of this challenge and multiple challenges to come, yes. but this even though sure. Gen X is going to win, uh, right. the, is going to win the challenge ultimately because, uh, the Gen X guys in terms of like, uh, between <laughs> Ken and Chris and Brett, you know, they're just like, uh, like dominating against, uh, like, uh, what the millennials are throwing out there. Chris is the size of like four Zeke's. Yeah. Right? Like, there's the one where Chris literally has... He, he's literally carrying the other team a on his back mm -hmm. through the whole challenge. Like, oh, yeah, sure, both of you can try to stop me, but you can't. No, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Chris is a, is a huge, like, mountain of a man. Big guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I mean, um, Brett, too. Yeah, and yeah. Brett also big guy. But I feel like uh, it was really highlighted in this challenge that Chris was the the MVP. You don't yeah. want to wrestle Chris. <laughs> right. That man's yeah. willing to eat dog poop. I wouldn't fight him on anything. Isn't that what he did in his audition video? Did it? Was it like a Joe Schmo show thing? No. Did, you talked about this with him <laughs> in his exit interview. And I vividly remember it because I was in the hotel for BB Can 5 casting finals listening to the exit interview. And he goes, yeah, at the start of my audition tape, I went out and I grabbed a dog poop from the lawn and I took a bite. And then I looked in the camera and I was like, this is why I should be on Survivor. This I did not make this up. This is real. <laughs> Kirsten, that How could you my that? is this a Look, test? Yeah, of Rob's yeah. knowledge. This, no, this is like um, that. Uh, my brain tries to protect its peace. Uh, I <laughs> learn <laughs> unsettling information, and you know, nature is healing. I forget these things. <laughs> That is something where I hear, it and it will live in my brain until the day that I die. And if I have to remember it, everyone has to mm -hmm. remember it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so that didn't happen. Like no, that did happen. <laughs> that did happen. Mm -hmm. And if I'm remembering it wrong, then my brain hates me. Because why would I want to remember that? Mm -hmm. uh, so then uh, 
there's going to be another uh, uh, a lot of word scrambles in this season, yeah. uh, which uh, like we know from this and from Game Changers, uh, Zeke that is really good at uh, word scrambles. Is able reinventing to, how the game is played. Yeah, somebody loses their flame tonight. Is this one? Uh, luckily, they didn't like uh, build in some uh, millennial joke in there. Also. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> avocados on cool. toast. <laughs> yeah. Someone exits the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Bottomless mimosas at brunch. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> <laughs> All right. So th there's uh, a lot a lot of uh, scrambling and not just word scrambling going on. Uh, Chris and Brett are still upset about the, the Paul vote. Lucy is trying to get back on the same page. Everybody sort of decides that, OK, it's going to be Jessica. And then uh, after then Ken tells her they're going to save her. She tells uh, Lucy and Ken is very upset. Also, Lucy doesn't come off great. No, when she talks about this is this in San Juan del Sur a little bit. Uh, that you know, uh, Lucy says Ken he's so emotional, like a girl. Yeah, Lucy comes across <laughs> as a pretty big pick me here. Um, but yeah, I didn't like it. But that was the second time like a comment like that had been made in the season because in episode one, Brett is like, yeah, there's girls with more testosterone than David. Mm -hmm. Shut up, Brett. Like, mm -hmm. why would you say that? Why, like, why would you think that? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh. you know, Lucy then also says, yes, yeah, I, I thought that Ken could handle bluntness. Uh, I find that most men that I uh, interact with, they appreciate that, but not Ken. And as someone who, as a millennial who is blunt, mm -hmm. I think it's a very important as part. As an Enneagram type eight. As an Enneagram type eight. <laughs> that's right. Uh, which I think Lucy probably is too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> For sure. <laughs> there comes a point in your life where you learn the difference between being blunt and being rude. And Lucy has obviously never learned that distinction. Hmm. Right. Yeah. And just to like think basically that every man handles communication the same way mm -hmm. is just totally missing the mark. Plus, uh, yeah. man, you're still participating in the patriarchy, baby. Like, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a uh, live tribal here. And oh, yeah. David Wright is going to play the idol for Jessica. And he trusts her and says uh, that I, I interviewed him after the season. And he said that he thought this was his best move of the season because that this was somebody who that he felt like that he needed to keep in the game. And then he made this move and then uh, she was uh, loyal to him the whole way through. Very true. All the way to rocks. Yeah. And I think it was Shannon Gus who uh, really articulated this uh, so well before uh, David versus not David versus Goliath uh, before uh, the Edge of Extinction, where the you know David Wright's game is all about the people I trust versus the people I don't trust. And so, like for David Wright, like if he finds somebody that he trusts in the game, like uh, he will do anything to keep that person in the game and do anything to target. A person he doesn't trust in the game well and for what it's worth this is the first time they've gone to tribal council where he hasn't been a serious discussion for the person to vote out mm -hmm. so keeping jessica in definitely is like okay well people are more mad at her than me so maybe that'll be a target in front of him as well yeah right and for david wright I remember in the real time, like, uh, what a fool. This was a crazy move to, like, uh, keep your idol. Uh, and then he goes and I think he finds another idol, like, right in the beginning of the next episode. Yeah, instantly. Right. Yeah. So uh, there you go. Uh, but we're going to have a swap here. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, swap in Millennials versus Gen X, where we're going to have three tribes here. We're going to uh, bring in the new tribe, the Ikabula tribe. And the each of the three tribes they will go to a tribal council and it will be a person voted out who is uh like in the numbers so basically uh that whatever tribe has the majority from their original starting tribe uh they vote somebody out of the majority and and real quick right before this jessica did apologize to ken and promise him that if she were ever voted out she would give him the legacy advantage yeah. um so that's that Which helped and if yeah. she had said that to any other player on this season, she would have been the next one voted out to get it. 
Like mm-hmm. Kevin's mm-hmm. the only person who would have yeah. been like, okay, I trust you now forever and I won't betray you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Sarah Lucina doesn't come along until the next season to take it uh, from Sierra Don Thomas. Right. Fan favorite game Fan favorite, changer yes. barrel racer, Sierra mm-hmm. Don Thomas to you. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, so we get to our <laughs> our swap, and we see that uh, Figgy and Taylor end up on the same tribe, and they're so excited that they end up uh, stu- stuck together. Rock on! Yeah. But now it's time for a secret showmance. <laughs> they gotta <laughs> right. keep it on the DL a little bit, even though t- Taylor doesn't want to. Yeah, like she rejects his hug, and he's a little hurt by that. He's like, yeah. we have the numbers. What's mm-hmm. the deal? I also, I love Taylor's like, listen, we're a power couple. That's the exact same thing as just an alliance of two people who would never betray each other. What's the problem? As if that is something that you should just openly advertise to the rest of your tribe. Right? I was like, people wouldn't want to know that either. He's got mm-hmm. his love goggles on. Love goggles. Love goggles. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Michaela has another uh, really good line about the swap. Uh, she says about Jeff. You didn't do this right, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> she was okay. livid having to start over from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Um, in this episode, uh, you know, uh, I think we could probably like uh, talk about each of the tribes uh, in the episode where they go to the tribal council and uh, unless there's anything else that's like super important that we need to get to but uh in the fifth episode it's really all about uh the yanuya tribe uh which is going to be cc uh is going to be chris and david zeke and michelle and uh zeke really uh hits it off with uh chris hammond instantly they're okie boys a, yeah yeah it's boomer a- sooner Hey, it is whatever time and OU still sucks. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And (laughs) Texas Longhorn, I have to. Yes. Hey, I Uh, would follow Asia anywhere. I'm with her. (laughs) Yeah. And so uh, David Wright has a uh, really terrible performance uh, in the immunity challenge here where uh, one of the all time worst challenge performances in the history of the show. Like he can barely swim and then he gets the buoy and then he can barely get on the platform and then he drops the buoy and has to go back in the water and then he gets the buoy, gets back on the platform and then he drops it again. Like it it takes him so long to get it in. Like Cece also is slow, but she doesn't have to do it more than once. Mm -hmm. I I think David is the only player who's a worse swimmer than me in the history of Survivor. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I was crying laughing. I forgot how just like chaotic this moment was. But to not only take forever to get on the platform, but to drop it off the other side. Mm-hmm. You're, like they were just dying on the inside. Yeah. Uh, but and I, Jeff <laughs> was, was like calling the whole thing like, yes. Oh, no, <laughs> now David, he's lost the buoy <laughs> off the end. What an idiot. Oh, this is the worst disaster I've ever seen. <laughs> oh jeff killed me this season it's so bad like how how mm-hmm. can you how how did he manage it <laughs> yeah. was hard to watch yeah it was like the bad news bears yeah it's like a, a silent film <laughs> 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 like i could say like yeah. put, put like uh make it in black and white make it look like charlie chaplin is doing all of this and laugh it up <laughs> yeah. in the silent <laughs> theater you have the music and everything yeah. they've right yeah. the buoy into the water um so they then have to decide uh who to vote off and so it's david cc and chris so they, they have the advantage but uh chris has uh hit it off with zeke and apparently also has like some sort of uh like uh has hit it off well enough with michelle and somehow cc gets voted out here I was big mad. Mm-hmm. I was big <laughs> mad because I feel yeah. like what we see of Cece in every episode is people not talking to her, not 
like trying to connect with her. Like, mm-hmm. I think she was clearly making an effort to try and bond with people, but nobody's talking to her. Nobody once gave her the opportunity to really strategize. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll vote on either Cece or David because they're bad at challenges. Well, David was worse at the challenges. And you're worried about David finding more idols. So why not blindside David here? Yeah. Watching this again, though, like, uh, uh, my issue is like we don't see anything from Cece's perspective really yeah. uh, from a- a- any point of view. like so you know uh, like we don't know why Cece got voted out but it would be nice to hear from Cece. Yeah, literally the only thing we saw was her being relieved that you know after the immunity challenge, her being relieved that she was not finally not at the bottom. And it's like, oh. You're mm-hmm. in for a rude awakening, but yeah, I, I, I'm, that's what I, that's what we were saying about these earlier these pre merge boots of just like where is their story? Because yeah. especially especially I thought we would see more from her, especially on the episode where she gets voted out, but that wasn't the case. And not that Michelle gets so much of a storyline in the season, but I really just don't understand why Chris would want to uh, then uh, like keep Michelle in the game, keep a millennial around who they're going to vote off in uh, the first order at the merge anyway. Uh, and then you could, I mean, if it's like, okay, great. I, I love Zeke. Uh, but you, you, like why, who needed to keep Michelle? I mean, I think that Chris was just so sick of losing challenges and seeing like poor challenge performance. I think he would have voted off David or CC regardless. Perhaps it's like why to do one or the other. And then it's unclear if he, um, you know, David Wright, if he leveraged his idol in any way. But, you know, it just mm-hmm. would have been nice to, you know, uh, hear a little bit from CC at some point along the way. Right. And it, I mean, it was very obvious that, you know, the fact that Chris naturally um, connected with Zeke because of Oklahoma. Um, sure. it, we did, we see him connect with CC at all. Like, did they have anything in common to, to talk about? I think that simply made it much easier for him to be like, no, we need yeah. to get CC uh, gone. The only other thing we learned about CC along the way was that she was friends with, she was tight with Rachel and that, uh, like it was either going to be, you know, okay, we're going to get rid of, uh, you know, she was, damned because she was uh, associated with Rachel. Mm-hmm. And again, Rachel did nothing wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like for the record. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And that's, uh, that's uh, CC. Okay. So then uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about the tribe that uh, sends uh, Figgy home. And uh, this is an interesting group where it's Figgy and Taylor. It is uh, Jessica, Ken and Adam, where, Adam is really going to be the swing vote here, uh, stuck in the middle between uh, these uh, this romantic pair and a strategic pair, as it's described in the episode. And, uh, you know, you see uh, Jessica and Adam like or Jessica and Ken make like a, a big press to Adam, but he legitimately like doesn't know which way to go. Yeah, and wasn't it just so cute how Taylor was sneaking kisses to Figgy and we think it's this intimate moment and then Adam's like sitting right there in front of them. It's like, what is this? What is happening? Poor Adam. Yes. Like, That's disgusting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, especially by this point, what? This is episode six. This is d- days 15 through 18 of Survivor with no toothbrush and they're still smooching? Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Miss Cuddle Shack. Yeah. I'm Miss Cuddle Shack. <laughs> so, um, in in this episode, uh, we see that uh, you know Figgy and Taylor they they can't keep this a secret for much longer. Okay. Look, Their love is too strong. It's love eating is- them up inside. <laughs> Their love is too strong. They need to like uh, come clean about this relationship. So they concoct a plan. Okay, they're going to have an aside with uh, with Jessica, and so they're going to tell Jessica about how like okay, just so you know, uh, this might blow your mind, but Figgy and Taylor are actually uh, a romantic couple. Yes, they. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all knew. We mm-hmm. all knew. Right. 
<laughs> I liked it. Like, okay, Miss had... Cuddle Shack. Yeah, Miss Cuddle Shack. Uh, that they had to even rehearse it, where uh, right. like uh, Taylor's like, all right, pra pra practice. Uh, and then uh, he was doing like some misdoubt fire voice of uh, <laughs> right. for like, come here, darling. <laughs> yes, tell me all about your relationship. <laughs> this is this was their focus rather mm -hmm. than figuring out how how do they reunite with the other millennials now how do we tell jess and ken mm -hmm. yeah which is wild too because again adam is one of the two people who wrote figgy's name down at the first tribal council so you'd think that in their minds they would realize hey maybe we need to put in some work with adam no. maybe no they're yeah good. no their <laughs> love is too pure they're good and so uh, ultimately, there's an interesting immunity challenge here where uh, that Michaela and Hannah finish the table maze. Michaela oh. ends up giving help to uh, the uh, Yanuya tribe, uh, which is the tribe that has uh, Zeke and Michelle on it. And ultimately, like, gets called out by Jeff about like, hey, how come you, uh, you know, what, what are you doing there? And she says, look, they've got three millennials over there. They don't need my help uh, to, to figure things out if they go to tribal council, which is interesting uh, because uh, that they will vote out a millennial from the tribal council. But, um, but did did Paula, Michaela and Hannah, what are you going to say? No, 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 you go. Okay, Michaela and Hannah in this, this challenge. Like even Jeff egging it on, like Michaela's making sure Hannah knows what time it is just because they were not working well together. Um, and Michaela just naturally wants to take over because she like she can do it. And then Hannah like trying to cooperate. It was just the the worst chemistry between a team and the fact that they actually got it. They I got was, it. No, yeah. I loved though when Jeff is like Hannah and Michaela should never go on a road trip together. And Michaela's like, no, I love Hannah. I just want to win. <laughs> I was like, yes, get it. Like, don't you dare say that we don't get along, Jeff. I just want to win. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to have now uh, a tug of war for Adam. Uh, where's he going to go? Uh, Jess and Ken make some promises. Uh, you know, Figgy and Taylor, you know, say like, hey, you got to stick with us. And so Adam is coming in as the swing vote. And I really feel like the episode it doesn't really paint that Adam's going to flip. They don't. And I was like, come on, Adam. You, I remember the first time watching, I was thinking yeah. there's no way he doesn't flip. Like, this is the perfect opportunity. Um, but yeah, they definitely didn't sell that at all. Yeah. We had a live know-it-alls the night of this episode. And Adam was there uh, and he was sitting at a table with his dad and he had come to the live know-it-alls. And then uh, Adam's uh, cousin was there. Yes, Adam's cousin was there. <laughs> and uh after the uh, after the vote happened uh then like he got like uh like applause from the room so uh <laughs> that was that was, a, that was a nice moment um yeah adam's gotten a couple of those because he also uh then uh, was at a live know-it-alls when uh for winners at war when he voted out boston rob got, got Good adam. yeah he knows, he knows where to how be. to plan it are you yeah. coordinating your live <laughs> know-it-alls events with adam's yes. big vote yes yes with uh for, for adam and so <laughs> um this is the tribal council where we talked about where jeff is gonna uh offer to marry figgy and taylor and how and how hilarious is that that that's the focus of that tribal not realizing that figgy is in jeopardy Mm -hmm. Like not even crossing their minds. They're like, just having a good time. Yeah. Well, Jeff calls out Taylor where he says like, do you want me to marry you? And uh, she's like, I don't know. And, and, and Taylor, Jeff is like, Oh, you see, you see uh, like uh, that. She like, she's waiting for you to say yes. Yeah. That, Cause Figgy goes uh, survivor first. And they're like, Oh, see, look, Figgy wants to get married. Ken's like, yeah, Taylor, like if you knew women like I know women, <laughs> uh, you would know that she's asking you to like marry her. How awkward would it have been if uh, Jeff proceeded to perform this marriage ceremony and then Figgy gets voted out uh, pre-merge? They don't see each other again. And then Taylor finds out about uh, his uh, like 
Like, is that a like? I guess it's not a legal marriage. Uh, if Jeff Probst Jeff is married, Jeff said he was gonna get the marriage license. Yeah, <laughs> but do you need a permit? Do you need a license? I don't, right, and I mean, it's in Fiji. Probably- get married in another country i don't know would have been interesting um one that just to note since we're now talking about the demise of fig tales i feel like we did also know that there was like pink eye going around and at one point production was like no figgy and taylor you can't be next to each other like stop making out oh you think that that was the issue i think i don't know if it was pink eye but i know there was something infectious going around i remember that we were informed of it on the podcast at one point yeah i don't sure remember that, who said. that survivor co wrong <laughs> no, no that was a different issue different, okay different issue okay. <laughs> um all right so yeah figgy goes out um figgy i think it would be an interesting person to ever come back to the show yeah i th- i would love to see her without a showmance um i think she yeah. could, she has like I, I just like strong athletic like i don't i don't want to go so as far as to say like kelly wentworth or like poverty but she she has an upside. Yeah, that we didn't. And she get has see. regret about how she played this first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could tell at the reunion that she was unhappy mm-hmm. with the way that her game had gone. <laughs> yeah, she'd be an interesting person uh, to come back. Uh, all right, and then uh, the other uh, pre uh, merge swap tribe is the Ikabula tribe, uh, which is going to have four millennials there. It's going to be Jay, Michaela, Hannah, and Will, and then Brett. And Sunday and Michaela again is like uh, continuing her like a uh, superstar rise here in the pre-merge where she is the person that is able to get the fire started for Ikabula. She's uh, really like uh, coming on strong, dominating in uh, the challenges. Uh, she's uh, like seemingly the leader of Ikabula. And of my heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing, uh, a couple of interesting things that happened at Ikabula. Uh, we mentioned Michaela walks up on Jay and Will when uh, they find the idol, uh, which is like a secret, secret, mm-hmm. um, which is a very, a very funny moment. Um, also for uh, Ikabula, Hannah has the panic attack at the reward challenge which yes. uh you know again at the time i didn't know what to make of it when it happened in the uh, real time but you know it was interesting to hear her describe it on uh, this rewatch because uh hannah talked about how so much of survivor is about suppressing panic of like trying not to act all uh panicked when you have that emotion and eventually like it, it all just uh came out she could not suppress it anymore in this moment yeah i really felt for hannah in this situation because it was just like real life um real life emotions that she deals with off of survivor coming into survivor and then the fact that jeff continues to bring it up she was sitting on the side she wasn't Mm -hmm. in the competition she wasn't even in the challenge (laughs) yeah and, and that's the thing too like Even in like your mundane day to day life, you can have a panic attack. Your anxiety reaches a hundred. You don't know why. You don't know what the cause is. Tony Soprano has one opening the refrigerator. Like (laughs) it's like like when you have a panic attack, it's like your body is betraying you. You literally feel like you're dying, and it doesn't matter what the cause of it is. What is like making you anxious? Whether you're in a challenge or on the sidelines. It's a really scary feeling. Um, and to experience that when you're very deprived, dehydrated, overheated, hungry, I can't imagine how scary that panic attack must have been because it's also like Hannah does a great job of being able to recognize that it is a panic attack in the moment yes. where I think a lot of people would have just been like, I'm dying. I'm on Survivor and I'm going to die and I don't know what's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Like. It's very admirable that she even knew what it was. Is this heat exhaustion? Mm-hmm. Are my hands tingling? Her hands were right. tingling. I was yeah. like, oh my God, like Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, like I can't imagine going through that in that situation. And uh, I feel like it's used often to be like, oh, well, yeah, Hannah had anxiety and then she overcame it. And it's like, no, when you have anxiety, it you don't overcome it. You always have it and you just learn how to live with it. And that's like yeah. very admirable in a stressful situation like Survivor. And I feel like Hannah does not get the respect for that that she deserves. Right. Totally agree. All right. So 
Hannah also has like a, a really great read on Brett LaBelle where I think she probably like goes about it the wrong way, but she says like uh, Brett LaBelle is not a funeral director. He's a police officer. Uh, he is like uh, every cop that I've ever known in Boston. This guy is definitely a cop. Uh, Brett is uh, not revealing his occupation on the show and he's saying that he's a funeral director and Hannah is just like keeps pushing it. <laughs> yeah. She's not letting it go. Yeah, and it's like Jay, he's like, I also thought that too. But the crazy thing is we never see the payoff. Like we see no. Chris reveal what his true occupation was, but I was like, that wasn't the story we saw earlier in the season. I want to see the Brett reveal. He must have told them in some private way. I... Mm -hmm. Uh, I just love how Hannah's like, yes, I'm 70% sure he's the cop. And I think I just interrogated a police officer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was very funny. Uh, how that all played out. And then, uh, ultimately, uh, we're going to see when, uh, Ikebula is going to, uh, lose immunity. And, you know, they're talking about how, uh, Jeff is like, oh, you're going to, going to scramble as soon as you get back to camp. But they actually just sit there on a log and then don't, uh do anything for a minute and uh they're trying to figure out what to do brett and sunday are gonna vote for each other uh and then we have that conversation where michaela is gonna like take the seashells and says like look it doesn't matter who we vote for we have the numbers <laughs> this is when michaela maps out every single person in what order they're gonna go home oh for the rest of the God. season <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what she was doing. Right. Mm -hmm. like, it's truly like what basic strategy to be like, yeah, our starting tribe has the numbers. So as long as we don't vote off someone from our starting tribe and we are able to come back together and stay strong, we'll be set. Very basic. It is not that complicated. And Jay acts like Michaela has invented strategy. Mm -hmm. That she's yes. the first person to ever think of any sort of future move and survivor. And she's too dangerous. She's too smart. She's got to go. <laughs> Who had the Skittles in Big Brother 16? Did Derek have the Skittles or did Donnie have the Skittles? It was some combination of Derek, Donnie, um, who else? Uh, Frankie. Yeah, that was like another thing that blew up. I'm like, oh my God, Skittles. See, yes. all I can think of now is in BB Can 4 when Tim had the candies. Like, I can't oh, even yeah. think about Big Brother US right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... They're like, okay, we have to, we have to take out Michaela. She's she made a too, chart. She's too, she's too strong and smart, and we're, that we'll never be able to stop her. She has shells. If let's let's see, let's say Jeff doesn't do the Jeff thing and blow up Michaela at every every amazing job she did in each of the challenges. He's Michaela once again killing it. Michaela, the reason the, the tribe wins. Michaela, our hero. If he yeah. doesn't do all of that, do they truly recognize how great she's doing, or is it just like, oh, yeah, that's she's helping interesting. Us so uh, that uh, I, I've never uh, like uh, thought about that in terms of like, uh, you know, could somebody sort of like uh, get too much attention from Jeff and then they end up being a target? Like, uh, did Jeff sort of like incept like, hey, oh, my God, like Michaela is incredible. If he did, possible. how dare he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, a little, that, little too much t attention. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Um you know, uh, Michaela again says it's Jeff's fault that they're there at the, <laughs> at the tribal council. <laughs> and uh, she didn't like the challenge that they had to do. And, uh, you know, she feels like this is the most uh, straightforward vote. It's either going to be Brett or Sunday. Well, Cause it should be. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. Um, and ultimately they're voting against uh, Brett, Hannah and Michaela both vote for Brett, but uh, Will and Jay uh, bring in, Brett and Sunday and they put uh, the four votes on Michaela and she knows instantly like when they get to three Michaela votes that something has uh, gone wrong. What? <laughs> See, I wonder the timing on this. I wonder if Jay waited until the very last moment to bring in Brett and Sunday because let's say Brett and Sunday hear that and they're like, well, shoot, if they're going to take out one of their own, maybe we go to Michaela and tell her that you know, Jay wants this and we get out Jay, who is arguably another like a threat. Obviously, he has the capability to win some um, individual immunities. 
-hmm. so I wonder if they didn't have the time or they just thought, Hey, anybody but me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like that Michaela probably had a good relationship with, uh, Brett and Sunday too. She was like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, uh, like, it seems like they all got along really well. Yeah, well, yeah and that's Papa what, Brett, Mama Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that's what Sunday says too. Sunday's like, we all just sat on the log, Jeff, and we were sad because we all like each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we talked about this earlier, but uh, I just think that this is uh, one of the, you know, uh, best moments from the survivor in the 30s of uh, Michaela's blind side, uh, because it was two things. It was the big reaction from Michaela. And then it wasn't the thing that, like, typically you get from survivor. Like, oh, I don't know who to, it was it me. Was it you? Was it you? Uh, like, uh, you know, that she's she calls it out. She has the big reaction. And then Jay says, uh, yeah, it, I did that. I did that. He owned it. Yeah. Which, how does this not make the rest of the tribe see him as the number one threat when they can't make it to the merge? Like, look what Jay was able to pull off when we were, what was it, four to two or three to two? No, yeah, four, four to two. It was four to two because that tribe had an extra mm -hmm. person because they had to make a new camp from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, that was a pretty big move. Yeah. And, and we didn't get to see the reveal because it was the merge, but we didn't get to see how shocked everyone else would have been that Michaela wasn't there. Well, it's a good point that nobody is like, uh, wait, Jay, why did you, why did you vote out Michaela? What, what, what are you thinking? And yeah, I mean, I'm sure those conversations happened, but it was just, everything was moving full steam ahead. They didn't have mm -hmm. time to dwell on past votes. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, these things do like uh, happen and sort of like, okay, well, I don't want to make a big deal about it. Like uh, in uh, David, uh, I'm sorry, in ghost Island where uh, that Dominic Abate votes out uh, Bradley and I'm sure Kellen was like, Hey, why did you vote out Bradley? Like that, that could, like that was my ally. Uh, it just like, it doesn't make like nobody makes a big deal about it, but you would think that there would have been some discussion about like, uh, why like guys, she had shells. Okay. <laughs> right. she you had don't shells. understand. She was too smart for her own good. She was yeah. the smartest woman alive. Okay. She had shells. She had shells. You were all a shell. Every <laughs> yeah. single one of you. She's in Mensa. Mm -hmm. She had basic strategy. Okay. It was too scary. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a great survivor exit for Michaela. For sure. Too soon. Would have loved to see her. Um, yes. And make to the make it to the merge, but hey, we got to see her play again. Well, they knew what they had with Michaela, where yeah. ultimately it doesn't really uh, work as she gets like so much more here in a uh, shorter time in Millennials versus Gen X, and she gets mm -hmm. the game changers. But at least they recognize, like, uh, okay, uh, we've got like a real star here. Yeah, they knew. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's the pre-merge here of uh, Millennials versus Gen X. We still have the whole post-merge and every and boy, this is a season that really heats up in the post-merge. Okay, yes, it does. So we still have uh, a lot of ways to go to get all the way through to uh, Adam, Hannah, and Ken in the final three. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the post-merge here of uh, the twelfth. Uh, best season of all time i'm having so much fun so far yes me too, me too. <laughs> yeah, this has been a, a a really fun one and so don't go anywhere to take a quick break and uh we will be back after this we are back to talk about the post merge of survivor millennials versus gen x and you know it's a little bit of a slow start to the post merge i feel like uh we have a couple of votes here where michelle is going to go home and then taylor is going to go home and i think that things don't really start to heat up in the post merge until we get to uh the uh, as zeke puts it the gen x civil war yeah it's like a slow build up because you have a little bit of the taylor food situation with the the merge feast and and so there wasn't like much there, especially that it didn't take a lot for them to get together to vote out Michelle. Um, but it did give us some of the setup that we needed for yeah. some of those later votes. And I think the most interesting thing about these uh, two votes here is that Adam really gets caught up here in uh, that he 
um, finds the note to steal the reward. So uh, good on Adam. You know, he is the consummate fan. He knows everything that's supposed to happen, when it's supposed to happen. And so uh, he kind of gets hosed on finding kind of like a lame power in the game, which also like uh, gets like turned into like a total like worst case scenario for him, the way it plays out. But he ends up knowing, okay, there's got to be an advantage here at the merge <laughs> and finds, oh, uh, you have the power to steal a reward. I, I feel like when he finds this, Adam's like a hostage. Like he's like, this is the first time in Survivor history that this reward has happened. But you can tell in his head, he's like, man, why can't I find something good? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, and they very much present this reward as like, you could steal the loved one's visit. You could steal the loved one's visit as if that wouldn't just be completely like throwing a stick of dynamite at your own game for literally no reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, there's a feast and uh, at the feast after it's over that Taylor has the idea of that. He is going to then uh, take a bunch of the like dried fruit, and then he is going to put them in mason jars and like uh, go and and hide them and have like a stash to eat all night. Yeah, as a millennial, he's really good with mason jars. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, what does that mean? I'm really good with mason jars. Does he use them he as glasses? Use... <laughs> he well, knows I mean, how to utilize them. them. Yeah, using mason jars as glasses is uh, just makes financial sense. They're very cheap compared to cups. Long mm -hmm. Island iced teas come in mason jars in some wow. places. Yes. That's like how you jar. die. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you share with like one to two other people. That's oh, actually... Really? Um, That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> there's, I, there's a lot of places here where I live where uh, like your the water for the table comes in the big mason jar and then mm. your drink comes in the little mason jar. And if you get a pint, they have a pint-sized mason jar. And it's like... This is excessive. I think we've lost the plot here. <laughs> so Adam is going to then uh, like uh, spend some time with Taylor trying to bond with him. He tells him that, that he has uh, this advantage. But what Adam doesn't know is that Taylor hates his guts. He is the figgy <laughs> Avenger. Right. I also love Taylor is like, I'm sneaking food in the night. I have a stash of food. Nobody knows. Every single person heard Taylor walk up, like wake up and go off into the night. Everybody knows he ate at least some of the food because they woke up and the food was gone after they had all <laughs> seen him like wake up and go over to it. But he, it, it's just like when he was hiding his relationship with Figgy, like nobody knows, but yeah. everybody knows. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, uh, then Adam wants to get rid of Will Wall for some reason. Why not? Yeah. And so, uh, Will Wall then has the pressure on him. He wins immunity. Right. And I think he just like for Will, I think Adam had the foresight to see that Will was just going to do whatever Taylor and Jay wanted him to do. So mm -hmm. he kind of saw that as like. You know, not what do you what's the saying like the head off the snake? Yeah, they, he didn't want to like take the head off the snake, but he wanted to take maybe like piece of the, the, snake. the a, a middle piece. segment of the snake. Yeah, right, the right. The snake. <laughs> um, one thing that I thought was very funny during the immunity challenge, it's the one, of course, where you're holding both hands over your head, uh, was Hannah's like looking at Ken and then Jeff says you start daydreaming about something else and then you're drenched and I died laughing. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> but I laughed for I had to pause the episode and I laughed for probably a good five minutes after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, Sorry, Anna. A... <laughs> <laughs> Karishma uh, meme out there for that yes, also. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, Adam really wants to keep Taylor in the game. And so he's like scrambling to try to keep Taylor, even though Taylor is like actively targeting Adam. And this brings up like a really interesting uh, point where Zeke and Hannah are bonding over. They're like, oh my God. Like Adam is like the worst ally ever. What is he doing? And I, go ahead. 
Well, just real quick on Will winning immunity. Cannot forget Jeff yelling oh, yeah. out, yes. Will the high schooler. Will won. the high schooler. He's like, what are your high school friends doing? <laughs> Nothing like this today. We're a bunch of babies. It's God, like Jeff losers. <laughs> They're not on Survivor right now. They're just home, like going to prom or whatever. Will <laughs> wins immunity. Every kid in his high school. You're a loser. You're lame and you suck. Will is the king of high school. King of the class. King like of the, the class. <laughs> The worst part is he could literally say that to any other person out there playing Survivor. Mm -hmm. Like, Chris, what are your friends doing? Not this. Not this. <laughs> well, but he would have had to be like, Chris, what are your high school classmates doing? <laughs> Not this. They yes. have lucrative careers that they wouldn't leave to go on reality TV because they're Gen Xers and they work hard. <laughs> like, Chris. I feel like it's implied... <laughs> like Will's friends are just, you know, classic millennials not working for anything because they didn't apply to go on survive. Yeah. Even though they're Gen Z. They're Gen Z. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> what's what are all the other kids doing back at the collab house? <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> So, but I thought this is so interesting how Zeke and Hannah talk about how a Adam is such a bad ally because I think this really speaks to Adam as a survivor player because we see this so much in Winners at War. And I think that this is just like a dangerous part of the game for Adam because this is kind of where he goes out in Winners at War also where Adam, if you put him on a survivor season, he is going to run around and he is going to try to work with every single person that's there, including the people that are not in his alliance. Like he's always, he's never going to stop trying to like make relationships with other players in the game where even if, you know, he, somebody is mad at him, he's going to continue to try to like fix the relationship and try to make it better. We see it work with great effect with Jay later on in the game. But he's like, uh, if he if he is wrong, somebody he's going to try to fix it. Even if somebody's not on his team, he's going to try to like uh, open the lines of communication with them. But to your allies, like this is very frustrating. Absolutely. Yeah, because they're like all the, the plan is we can get rid of Taylor. We have the votes. We can get Taylor out. And Adam's like, mm, but like Taylor and I kind of have a thing going like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, no, can't give up on Taylor know. now. Like our, our relationship is on the mend. Like I've only voted for his girlfriend at every chance that I had and <laughs> then chance. voted her. And then was the swing vote to vote her out. Mm -hmm. yeah and then his and then his conversation with taylor after that is i screwed you yes i did yes, I, I did i screwed you mm -hmm. <laughs> but we can still work together i also i love how he goes with taylor while taylor's eating the food but adam makes the very clear point i was with him when he had the food and i was with him when he hid the food but i didn't eat one piece of the food so i am blameless <laughs> in this situation mm -hmm. yeah he's a high character guy Yes. <laughs> and it, it's funny that uh, the Gen Xers like have to save Adam from the millennials after, you know, <laughs> right. he was trying to like get back with them. And then finally, it's like that uh, because the millennials are going to vote against Adam here at the merge. And it's only by the grace of like the like the Gen X relationships that uh, we see that like Zeke and Hannah have that they like uh, decide to just uh, vote out Michelle. Yeah, Adam got so lucky here because I don't know. Like, if I guess if Taylor and them, if they had one more person, things would have turned out differently. Like if Figgy hadn't gone home, but like Adam was so close, and was it of his own doing? Or was mm -hmm. it just that they saw Michelle as the bigger person to get out because she was so tightly aligned with Jay? Well, yeah, and even Taylor. then, they would have rather voted out, I think, Taylor or Jay. But they show David saying, well, Michelle definitely doesn't have an idol, so she's the safe one to vote out. So then it's yeah. like, well, Michelle also kind of got screwed. Because, again, she didn't really do anything wrong. It's not like she did all that much right either from what we saw. But, like... She didn't do anything wrong. She didn't do anything wrong. And she got like nothing in her boot episode. <laughs> right? I know. I was like, I, I was literally watching it and I, I, I 
kind of like just think about, okay, who's going home so I can closely watch them that episode. And I was like, I honestly cannot for the life of me remember who went home this episode. And it, there was no indication that yeah. it was going to be Michelle. I think this is just a product of that, like things changed uh, so much, maybe like at the end where it's like Michelle got voted out and the producer is like, okay, uh, we interviewed Michelle today, didn't we? Like, oh, <laughs> God, we didn't. <laughs> um, the other thing too at this uh, tribal is where a lot of it is talking about Taylor stealing food because at this point they know he stole food. They just don't know he like hid a large stash of it. And Jeff asks if stealing is a millennial thing. Uh, and Taylor's like, I was having a medical emergency. I had to eat the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Zeke is like, we're all having medical emergencies. <laughs> yeah, which I was a little unclear about that. He like was he just like, oh, my stomach wasn't feeling right, so I needed to like eat banana chips. That was hey, his excuse. He was hungry. Was it? Was it that his excuse? Like, does he have an excuse? Right? Like, Unlikely. <laughs> like, I think he's he's just saying words and hoping that something works out. And Zeke is like, but here's the thing about Survivor: sometimes. It's about delayed gratification. And I just don't think Taylor has delayed his gratification one time in his life. Prove that. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. I have a lot of Taylor sound clips. <laughs> he was a flame that burned brightly. And so it was gone twice as fast. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also like how he's like, what? Worrying is a waste of time. What's the point of worrying? Like, oh, yeah. Thanks for the advice, Taylor. Everyone else will just stop worrying. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And then um, I don't think I don't think he realized just how detrimental this food thing was going to be, especially after this vote. Like he's like, OK, they're aware and it's fine. Really I'm going to keep enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Taylor is a guy who, you know, when uh, like uh, if, if there's something that, uh, you know, he wants to do, like he's just going to do it. Like uh, he's not going to think about like uh, what the long term repercussions are going to be. Yeah. Such a millennial. A waste of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. Uh, uh, so in the next episode uh, now, Jay is uh, still upset with Adam and Hannah and Zeke, uh, that still uh, ver very upset that him and Taylor are at the bottom, and now uh, Michelle is gone, and so Hannah is starting to feel like she's really like uh, in the swing of things. Also, yeah, she's coming she into she's, her own. Yeah, she says she she tells Jay, "I got to do my own thing," but then Jay turns around and says, "I'm proud of you," and I'm like, "Is that something you would say to like Figgy <laughs> or you know?" It, that it's just showing Hannah his view of her mm -hmm. and yeah, how and, much she's a player. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I have it written down that Hannah did a really good job of explaining to Jay why she felt she had to make that decision. But I don't know if it would have gone over as well if Jay wasn't also as good as he is. Like mm -hmm. it's a lot of these conversations are very capable players talking to each other about their decision making processes. And if they're not both that capable, maybe it doesn't go so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Hannah was feeling good, but then she was picked as a captain and then she had to draft the team for the reward. And then the <laughs> team that she picked didn't do that well. And then she kind of lost some confidence. I really like she turns to Jessica and she's like, maybe I won't be a captain of sports. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like uh, yeah. Danielle DiLorenzo. <laughs> I'm like, how do you get Ken, Chris was a captain, but also Brett and Taylor on one team, especially if you're doing like a schoolyard pick, how, how do you allow that to happen? How yeah. are you picking other people over those guys? I would pay money to watch how this pick went. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't stop process. Like, cause, well, cause I'm assuming that, um, Chris probably got to pick first and he probably picked Ken first. Yeah. And then Hannah would have gone second and maybe picked Jay first. Like you can't look at Hannah's team and not think that Jay and Will were the first two picks. Mm -hmm. Probably yeah. Jay and Zeke. I think Will over Zeke. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Will did just win individual immunity. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I would yeah. like to see the footage. I think Paramount Plus exists. 
Just yes. release the tapes. We want to watch it. This release and uh, Christian and uh, David versus Goliath talking for six hours. <laughs> yes, the six hour cut. <laughs> okay. Uh, so after the uh, reward challenge, uh, we're going to see that um, Adam's going to talk to Jay. And Jay, kind of, I think, takes this the wrong way. Did Adam actually yeah. do that bad of a job talking to Jay? I didn't think so. Yeah. I think, okay, I can see Jay's perspective. I think Adam was just coming off as, like, I'm in a good place. I'm confident. Like, you know, you understand your place at the bottom. But Jay's, like, it came off as so arrogant to Jay. And I could, I'm, I wasn't totally yeah. off, off base with like how Jay felt about it. Cause I was like, if I were Jay, I'd probably be feeling like that too. It, Adam just wasn't doing enough to like reassure Jay that he was yeah. not in a bad position. Cause Jay's like a pretty chill person generally, but uh, like he really was upset about this. And so he goes and, and talks to like Hannah and Zeke about this. Jay does. And then, I thought it was so weird uh, that Han and Zeke were like, oh my God, you're right. He <laughs> he always does this. Like he totally does do that. Well, because I think it's it's that thing where Adam is so upfront in his communication all of the time. And he, f coming from him, like especially in this uh, interaction with Jay, to me it seems like Adam is trying to be like, look, you've been on the top and I've been on the bottom. At this moment in time, you're more on the bottom and I'm more on the top. But like, you know that and you see that and you can get out of it. Like it's, this is not a permanent way of being, but it doesn't come across that way at all because to Jay, he's like, he's just throwing in my face that I was on the bottom of the <laughs> boat and he's good and I'm bad. And it, it just goes to show just, uh, it's just like how sometimes Hannah's communication style doesn't mesh with the person she's talking with. In this <laughs> situation, Adam's communication style is not meshing. Oh my God, I think that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh we see uh that sunday is uh looking to target uh jessica but a lot of people seemingly like had some uh feelings about jessica from the gen x tr uh, side of things she betrayed Polly. okay they loved, loved paul <laughs> they loved Paul Walker so much. Yeah. He was he their was leader. The, the coolest guy ever. He's the He's lead the singer man. of a band. Yeah. People loved Paul. Like, like <laughs> even still, like, at the, um, like, tribal, I think it's the one before they end up drawing rocks, like, Jessica is being targeted because Chris is mad that she got Paul out. And, like, again, <laughs> she didn't do it solo. She, it, like, she really wasn't the big ringleader. No. But uh, Lucy's he still got her under that bus as far as Chris is concerned. <laughs> the damage all, was done. Yeah. All Jessica did was acknowledge that Paul was running things. Like everyone else, they could see that. And we're all the way in episode nine. Yeah. Her still yeah. getting the repercussions of that. Like she, and what else? Again, Paul talked to Jessica and said, well, you know, I'm an upfront kind of guy. If there was an all guys thing, I would say, hey, there's an all guys thing. See you later, ladies. Indicating to Jessica that if the men were to organize and come to Paul with this idea, he would take it and leave her behind. So he had to go. But no, she's the bad guy here. Mm -hmm. There, if, if up to it, Sunday's version was there is something underlying with Jessica. Mm -hmm. so we got to get her out. Can you see this? What's happening? What's yeah. happening? Like, like one cat is just hitting the other in the head over and over again. Oh, God. They scared me. Is that a, a Gen Z warfare? It's a mm -hmm. Royal Rumble going on behind me. It's very distracting. I'm sorry. Okay. Sheesh. Okay. <laughs> so uh ultimately they're trying to decide between uh is it gonna be taylor is it gonna be jay uh they have sort of like one last stand uh they're just gonna blow up adam's game <laughs> right. yeah because it was mm -hmm. their their words versus his and so of course two two v one who's there yeah. to take up for adam that he didn't actually eat the food this tribal was hilarious yes because it just is like Adam being like, but I didn't eat it. I <laughs> knew it was there and I went with him and watched I him knew eat it. It was there, but <laughs> I didn't eat it. All I did was not say he had it. 
And then he's like, and I, and then Taylor exposes the steal uh, reward advantage. And he's like, and I couldn't tell because he knew about my reward. Yeah. And Taylor's like, don't you get it? He's going to steal your loved one's visit. <laughs> that, that's your love that you won. And he took it. I would never do that. Taylor's like, <sighs> he could, you could win the loved one's visit and he will rip your loved one out of that's your, your arm. <laughs> Just like he ripped Figgy out of my arm. That's right. what he does. He hates love. <laughs> and then it's uh, like, and then Jay and Adam get into it and it's like, well, Jay did eat some of the food, but he didn't know about it before. Uh, <laughs> but Adam hit it. Adam knew and yeah. he said nothing. Like, I would never steal food. And they're like, well, but did you eat any of it? And he's like, well, yeah, we finished it today. And then I think it's David Wright who's like, today? Like, he <laughs> still had it? Like, yeah. What? Jay says in the next episode, like, uh, yeah, I think, uh, like, uh, Taylor went too far. Uh, he's, uh, he's kind of <laughs> <laughs> threw me under the bus with him. He's like, wow, Taylor uh, really incriminated me. got rid of my game too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's so funny. <laughs> Like yeah. everything about the food because people are so upset because of course they're hungry and it's like all about the food. It's like, well, but so Adam, you knew and you said nothing? Well, but I didn't eat any of it. And it's like, but Taylor, you hid the food and you kept eating it? <laughs> like, yeah, we finished it today. Today you finished the food? <laughs> and mm. Jay's like, yeah, I had some. Yeah. Oh, man. Poor Adam in the situation. Yeah. Um, so that's going to do it for Taylor. I mean, Taylor did bring a lot to the table here. I mean, uh, that he, ultimately I think he, he took was, a lot from the table. He Rob. took a lot from the table. <laughs> yeah, he was like a thirsty Fabio. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, Fabio was sort of like uh, not trying to like uh, have any sort of like relationships uh, on the island. Like, uh, you know, that's Taylor. True. Like uh, missed his calling, Kirsten. If uh, that if he could have been a Gen Z instead of a millennial, like yeah, he could have been at the the retreat. Sheesh. See, yeah, I'm just talking right? from the from a looks perspective, but that's just me being a little bit shallow. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm right there with you. How much okay. money <laughs> would uh, Taylor cost the cast of Too Hot to Handle? Okay. Well, what's at stake? A hundred thousand dollars. So it's the the pool's a hundred thousand dollars. You lose three thousand dollars per kiss, yeah. and now he lost at least twelve thousand dollars in kisses on Survivor, where they have unbrushed teeth. <laughs> yes. You imagine yes. you clean put in bodies. personal hygiene. <laughs> mean, he'd be in the shower like Cam. He'd be a clean man. The man is a rule breaker. Rules are made to be broken. Yes. Yes. I mean, <laughs> that, uh, he's the same guy who's like stealing the rewards from the merge fees. Because the merge fees kind of like the pot of money on Too Hot to Handle. It's like, okay, if we uh, this is for everybody. It's like, no, it's actually all for me. See, and that's why we needed Michaela to come back to be the Lana of the situation. Like, uh, Taylor and Figgy have lost six thousand dollars <laughs> last night, everybody. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. Michaela should be the Lana on Too Hot to Handle season three. Bye, Felicia. Oh, well, they already filmed perfect. season three, so maybe season oh, four. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you was me. No, not Hannah. <laughs> not Hannah. Okay. How much money would Hannah lose on Too Hot to Handle? <laughs> Well, they do it like really try to like force in the Hannah and Ken uh, yes. storyline, <laughs> which is like uh, that seems this seems very like uh, it's I love it though. Strong. I feel like in the confessional where it really comes up, um, because it's they show Ken and Hannah. They show the scene a few times where they watch the sunrise together, and Ken's like, you know, you in know? the first moment of the day, you can look at the sun. And Hannah's like, yeah, I know you told me. Yeah, <laughs> and then there's the confessional, and obviously Hannah's just playing into it. Like she's yeah. obviously joking, yes. but she's like, "Me and Ken, I could see it." You know, she's not being serious, well, but the show treats it like it's real. They treat, yeah, and she she has clearly just been asked. So Hannah, right? what do you think? Is there a shot you and Ken? And she's just like, "Yeah, she's I, like, I, I mean, I, I don't could, know. I could, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I." mean, I, I See but it. what do you think? Like, uh, like as a millennial, wouldn't you be open a to a relationship with a man ten years older than you? Yeah. So when they played it again at the reunion show, and then so uh, like I feel like they were really trying to. Like, I love. They're like, 
like, so Ken, any shot you're going to date Hannah or are you taken? And he's like, oh, it, uh, 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 yeah. And, oh, it's complicated. I mean, Hannah should just be lucky that they mm. didn't really try to force in like a Cochran relationship uh, like they did for Aubrey, where right. uh, the, the, <laughs> I like I don't even know how they didn't try to do like uh, like Hannah, like uh, have you like uh, let, let, let me introduce you to John Cochran. <laughs> well, because <laughs> Hannah made it clear that her type is not John Cochran. It's Ken McNichol. OK, yes. Yes. Okay. She likes uh, male models. Smart on Hannah's part to not mention Cochran's name, or that would have been what her whole story oh, would have been about. It would, would, right. Would be She'd have to go into like the witness protection program because <laughs> yeah, Aubrey mentioned Cochran in Corong, and her jury quest or her finale question in Game Changers was still about Cochran. <laughs> You know what? Jeff Probst is a romantic at heart. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. He's an ordained minister, okay? And I think he would love nothing more than to marry John Cochran yeah. to another survivor nerd. Yeah. Well, I think that, I mean, basically from this cast, I think he's very tight with David Wright. Uh, they work together now, David Wright and, and Cochran. I think we made it through this whole finale uh, without a Cochran sighting. There was oh, yeah. too much going on. Too much going on. Yeah. Yeah, they okay. definitely hit more people than they normally do, it seemed. Speaking of too much going on, all right, things really start to heat up here. Uh, this two-hour episode, I think this was the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, we're going to get uh, really like now the game is going to go into overdrive. Uh, again, back to Chris and Brett and Sunday. Uh, <laughs> they feel very strongly. You know what? Jess is the problem. Got, we feel very strongly. Remember Paul? <laughs> that guy was the best. Yeah, Paul, our best friend in the world, who got voted yeah. out on day nine. Remember him? Yeah. And so uh, we want uh, Jess out of out of here. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really want to learn from Paul, just his leadership skills to be able to bring people in that quickly and just have them in love with you 20 days later. Maybe it's because he like had all those like millennial jokes for days. <laughs> <laughs> right. How many millennials does it take to screen a light bulb? Ha ha, none. They don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're working on a green new deal. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even deal a hand of cards. They're busy with a green new deal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. And again, oh. also, just the absolute audacity for a man who's presented as his job being a musician yes. to be like, yeah, we work hard and millennials just can't have a normal nine to five. What's <laughs> your <laughs> normal nine to five, Paul? Very true. Sounds yeah. non traditional to me. Yeah. His nine to five is actually from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the music industry, <laughs> nine to five. Um, uh, all right, uh, so we, we really see Zeke uh, starting to come into his own uh, here in the post-merge game. Uh, Zeke is going to uh, pick up Will Wall. Will Wall is like, you know what? I'm done with Jay. I've had enough of that guy. He's had enough of being told what to do. This he like, wants to be a man. If there's one He's thing <laughs> you will know about Will Wall, he does not like being treated like a kid. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this the episode that he was he stepped it up in his confessionals where he was talking like so hardcore? I think it's the next one. I think it's okay. the next one where he gets like really because all of a sudden Indignant. Will Wall is like. I've been running this whole show and right. like I'm the best and no one's acknowledging that. And you're like, I'm sorry. Have you been on this show the whole time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He gets really uh, worked up later on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's a reward challenge here where the teams have to split up. And so uh, there's going to be uh, a nice reward, but uh, okay. Time to do another draft after the last draft uh, worked out so well. David Wright says, you know what? I'm just going to sit this one out because yeah, I'm offers. not a good swimmer. I would feel very badly if I cost anybody <laughs> the reward. And then the players like, 
No, no come David. on. <laughs> yeah, because this one, they weren't drafting this when they were drawing rocks oh, wow. and the okay. and um for the teams. And so he's like, I'll just sit out. Like, I, I don't want to like cost anyone the pizza the floating pizza restaurant. Uh, but everyone's so nice to him. Everyone's but so it, nice. But it's like don't you want the reward if someone is uh, like voluntarily telling you they're bad at something? Just let them. Just let them take him yeah. at his word. Right. Now, th- th- that being said, you know, I, I guess there was going to be one extra person anyway, so he uh, yeah. was 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 uh, hoping to be. It. Um, now he is going to end up on the team that doesn't win the reward. Uh, I think right. it's, uh, but it's unclear. no fault of his own. Yeah, I don't but think. it's it's also um, his team has a massive lead going into the puzzle. Hmm. Because it's it's the one with the color blocks where you can't have the same color on each side. Yes. And mm-hmm. um, Zeke and Adam come back from behind and like destroy that puzzle really fast. Yeah. Little right. Zeke is very good on puzzles. So uh, ultimately, they're going to win a reward. But it means a lot to David Wright that he is able to uh, like he has friends that are supportive of him. Yeah, that was a very touching moment. Mm-hmm. It was think- like day two, David wouldn't have got that same niceness. Well, I think it speaks to the overall like uh, sportsmanship of the season. Also, like mm-hmm. that they are like have, you know very supportive of one another uh, all the way through, and so uh, the people that go on the reward it's Adam, Brett, Hannah, Sunday, and Zeke. Uh, they get letters. Adam, uh, you know, is it gets some uh, word from home, so that's a, a nice moment in the season. But uh, we we shift the focus back to David back at camp. And Mm -hmm. this is like one of those moments of the season where David Wright is like, okay, you know, I had, I didn't think I could do it. uh, And now I can do it. And now I'm feeling good about, about myself. And I feel like I have confidence, uh, even though, you know, a minute ago, he didn't want to play in the challenge. Uh, And, (laughs) and that's why we have to vote out Chris. Yes. Well, and and David also has a really powerful confessional here where he talks about his anxiety and how hard it's been. And he talks about how it started out as a fear of dying and a fear of death. But over time, that morphed into a fear of actually living his life because he was so afraid of dying yes. and how now he's not afraid to live his life. And when he goes home, he is going to live his life to the fullest. It's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that quote from him. Yeah. Um, and before this, everyone found out about Jay's idol because Will told Zeke. <laughs> he pressed. Oh, yeah. Because he loves He's so sick of Jay. <laughs> right. I forgot about that. And Will's like, I'm just going to tell you, Zeke. Don't tell anybody else. Zeke tells so David. David tells guy. Hannah. Because <laughs> he tells everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right. David Wright is uh, feeling it. He's going to make a big move on Chris. And then he wins individual immunity. It's a nice uh, story arc for for David. It's mm-hmm. cute. It's um yeah, David versus Zeke in the final two of this uh challenge. Mm-hmm. Nice one where uh, everyone's got ants crawling on them. Yes, yeah, it was the attack of the ants. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Big Brother house in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, um, uh, David Wright and the and the gang, uh, they are going to uh, work on voting out Chris uh, Zeke, who had been a staunch ally of Chris. Uh, he's going to get on board as well. Uh, Zeke uh, and Hannah, they could have gone either way in the Gen X Civil War. They had options. They had options. Good place yes. to be. Yes. Um, was this the right option? Was this the right call to vote out Chris over Jessica? I think absolutely for Zeke and Hannah, because mm-hmm. you wouldn't have had just there to, to pull a rock. Mm-hmm. Cause no, yeah. I don't think anybody else would have been as, as loyal to their side of things to say although, like, although Zeke and Hannah end up on separate sides of the, right. The rock of that. Yeah, so right. I right. think um, like, if you look at it in like hindsight, for anyone who was on the same side as Hannah in the drawing rocks there. Yeah. You wanted to have Jessica there. Um, Zeke was really close with Chris. I'm surprised that Zeke didn't try to shift to get Brett out because at this point we hadn't seen Zeke and Brett bond as much as we had seen Zeke and Chris bond. 
Yeah. So I felt like that was interesting. Or even getting Sunday out. Because I feel like the problem was that within this power structure, Brett, Chris, and Sunday were a solid trio and they needed to get one of them out. And I don't know if getting Chris out was the best option. Yeah, I don't know either. I, I don't know why, like... um I, and maybe one of uh, either of you could remind uh, me why, like, why was it so important to get Chris out all of a sudden here on on this vote? But I think that the way that Zeke plays, it's like you are like even if you're like a close friend, you know, you're an ally until it's like convenient, and then like Zeke is very comfortable like to go in a different direction. Like we see it like uh, in Game Changers too, where like uh, very quickly like he feels like okay, Andrea's got to go. Uh, but like he was very tight with Chris here and then, uh, you know, just feels like, all right, I'm ready to cut bait on Chris. And even in the next episode with Hannah, it's like, all right, well, I've come as far as I can go with Hannah. I guess actually it does make sense to get Chris out of the three because look how mad Chris is over the Paul vote out. If you betray (laughs) Chris by taking out (laughs) Brett or Sunday, he'll never forgive you. Whereas Mm -hmm. maybe Sunday and Brett will keep working with you. So never mind. It was absolutely the right decision to make. I mean, eventually like uh, a challenge is going to come up that Chris is just going to like beast it in like uh, five seconds also. So uh, I I guess that does um, make some sense. Is that really the case? I feel like post-merge challenges aren't really suited to like bigger people like yeah in in this season i don't think there's a ton of like uh really physical challenges but he's a smart guy too he's a lawyer mm-hmm. so i feel like that this guy there's, there's bound to be one of these uh challenges where he's just gonna like uh dominate yeah something yeah. where strength would play a factor but yeah they mm-hmm. didn't end up having one okay so Chris ultimately uh, gets voted out at the tribal council where Hannah invents trust clusters. Yeah. (laughs) Trust clusters. (laughs) Yes. And uh, that just to put a finer point on trust clusters versus uh, voting blocks, like I feel like that voting blocks is just like, okay, I'm working with this uh, one or two people. You're working with this one or two people. But I guess the idea of trust clusters are like, uh, like this is like the uh, one or two people that I trust, like, I feel like it's a little bit of a, like, and and the trust can be broken, I think, easier than necessarily like a voting block can. Right, because Hannah was describing this as like the in-between between a voting block and an alliance, where it's like, Trust clusters, they could still vote in their own interests. They don't have to vote together, Mm -hmm. um, which you saw multiple times of people that were that seem like they trust each other vote in a different way. Um, And so it's like now I don't know if they I don't know if it is exactly in between because a voting block seems a little bit more loyal than a trust cluster. Hmm. I feel like the voting blocks, it's like Lego. They fit together very well. The trust clusters are maybe uh, different shapes and sizes. So when you put the two trust clusters together, it's not a solid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, Hannah is tickled that Jeff uh, repeats her yeah. term. And I think I would be too. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh my God, I just made up this term and now you're saying it back to me. <laughs> like, oh my God. It's very yeah. cute. Yeah. Jeff seems to really enjoy Hannah. Jeff loves Hannah. Yeah, absolutely. I, it is yeah. very obvious. Yeah. Like, I think th- there's one of the tribal councils where he literally is like, you're the best, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't remember which one, but I do yeah. remember him saying that. I feel like he I shouldn't be showing him. such blatant favoritism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in the next, after Chris gets voted out, okay, second part of the two part episode, uh, Zeke, right after tribal council, goes to Brett and Sunday and says, hey, look, uh let's get out david it's time david's playing the best game it's gotta we gotta do that yep yep and this is kind of a theme in this season of there's a lot of this of like okay clearly this person is playing the best game they have to go next and that's why it's so important in this season in particular to be a part of these moves being a good player, but you have to have at least two to three uh, bigger players in front of you at all times or else you could be next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And David realizes at this point too, that it's time to get Zeke out. Yeah. Well, I think he doesn't, he doesn't quite get there yet because he goes uh, to uh, Brett and Sunday and I think he mentions that Jay is the move, but he says mm-hmm. that as a chess player, he knows Zeke is like two moves away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and he brings up to Brenton Sunday, you know who's actually playing the best game? It's Zeke. Right. Right. Um, 
you know, is that the move where instead of you never saying you who you want to vote out, you just say like, uh, boy, you know who's playing the best game? <laughs> it's a, smooth. A concept. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's smooth with people like Brett and Sunday. Mm-hmm. I don't think if 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 David said this to Jay, Jay would be like, oh my god, this mm-hmm. is game changing. Mm-hmm. He needs to go. Mm-hmm. He, uh, said something in a non-traditional way of basic survivor strategy. S- greatest mind to ever play. Yeah. <laughs> go. He has to go. He has to go. Um, and so uh, Brett ends up uh, talking with Zeke and uh, says uh, what what uh, David was saying. I think it's a, a funny moment between Brett and Zeke where um, <laughs> uh, Zeke says that um uh, that David uh, has the idol, and Brett says, "Like, oh yeah, of course he has the idol. You know how I know? Because he always has has an idol." <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I mean, he's only played one, one idol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess he did find this one instantly I mean, after yeah, playing I mean, the last one, so he has pretty much always had. He's an not idol. wrong. <laughs> not wrong. Um, and Han is in a very interesting position here because uh, that she has uh, an alliance with David and an alliance with Zeke, and she has to pick a side here. Yeah, did, did she, she want- pick Did she pick the right side? I mean, I think she does. I mean, she gets to the I final mean, she three. She gets to the final yeah. three, yeah. And I think, it because I was trying to think, okay, it's Hannah. Does she have a path to the final three anyway? But no, Zeke would have turned on her at some point once David was gone. Well, and yeah. I do think that she does a really good job of making both David and Zeke think that she is with them in this moment leading up to the vote. Yeah, I, I think that she, you know, does play this pretty well. I mean, Zeke is able to, uh, like, ultimately realize, okay, Hannah's not with me. I have to put the votes on her. But she's the, she's like, okay, I'm going to get the votes. Play the idol on me. David, yeah. use your idol. And David says, like, hey, this idol is for me and for you. And she's like, okay, <laughs> good. Play it on me. The votes are coming on me. And at the tribal council, David Wright stands up with the idol. And it's Adam who says, I, pl- I, I heard they're going to vote for Ken. This seemed, it felt so unorthodox. Like, has <laughs> this happened before where someone can speak in between in between the time that the player plays the idol and announces who it's so, for? Yeah, I don't know if that has happened before. I, I will say that uh, the, uh, give the credit to Sunday for faking out Adam that it was yeah. going to be yes. uh, Ken. Uh, because that was I think, very well done. Yes. Right. Uh, su- su- uh, maybe Sunday's best move in the season is uh, get uh, tricking Adam into uh, the, the vote's going to be on Kent. And mm-hmm. see, this is another situation where Hannah had the correct information and yes. told David what to do, but they just chose to listen to Adam instead. And for yes. what? And I don't know if she brought this up at the final tribal council or anything like that, but I just felt like that these were some, some of the things that you know she was doing right along the way mm-hmm. uh, that kind of got like uh, unnoticed. Because it like Zeke would have just been out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she knew what was going on, like, uh, just about as well as, like, anybody else in the game. Right. Uh, she just wasn't maybe about. more. Yeah. Right. She wasn't just this, like, innocent, go with the flow. She's just there and people see her as a non threat. She was a very active participant in a mm-hmm. lot of these moves, which is, yeah, why I also feel that her game should be more respected than it is. Yeah. Cause like, this is how much they show of her game as a losing finalist. Imagine how much more there is to see if she actually had one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, very important moment in the season. Jeff Probst says, uh, his favorite moment of the season. So, uh, we get our reward after the reward challenge. And then in this reward, it's going to be that th- teams of three, and uh, this is like uh, going to be like going through like uh, like on on the sand, and then uh, like uh, like wiggling like a snake. And so uh, Zeke, Brett, and Sunday win the reward. And David Wright, uh, he doesn't get picked, but whoever doesn't get picked automatically gets to go on the reward. So they go off on the reward together, and this is the moment where uh, Brett confides in Zeke that uh that he is gay 
Yeah, that was a beautiful moment, um, especially the fact that it hadn't already been presented to us as a yeah. part of his storyline. It wasn't just like, oh, this is, you know, this is something about me that I'm withholding. It's just that as he explained, especially in like the reunion, this is how he's lived his life, came out to some people when, you know, his close family and friends in his 30s. And it's just what he's used to doing is not disclosing that. And so you could tell that, you know, now he's finally in a place with Zeke where, hey, I trust you. I'm going to let you in on this and we can bond even more on that, which was a, it was just awesome to see. Yeah. yeah, and Zeke handles it so well in the moment, obviously. It's a beautiful moment between the two of them. But then also we get the Zeke confessional about how much Zeke owes to Brett's generation for, you know, even having the freedom to be able to live his authentic life and love who he loves uh, openly and publicly and brings up how Brett had served during the Don't Ask, Don't Tell era where he literally would have lost his job just for, um, like, loving who he loves and – uh I, I feel like you don't you don't expect to get those conversations on Survivor, but it's just really beautiful. Yeah, um, it's an incredible moment. And, uh, you know, the show did it uh, like th this is like a great two hours of Survivor. Yes. And uh, like this is just like uh, like a another reason why. And in the middle of all of this, like, uh, you know, Zeke is also like uh, getting Brett and Sunday to put out David Wright, who's on the reward challenge with them like uh like okay all right, all right all right also like uh david okay david's coming back all right he, he like uh we're done with him yeah they're all like thank god he's on the reward with us because we can see what he's doing and where he <laughs> is and he can't talk to anybody else yeah um and so all right uh there might have been like some thoughts to go after uh jay but he was going to win immunity. So it's not even like both sides who have like a common enemy to potentially target. Uh, Jay's off the table. David feels like, all right, we have to go for Zeke now. David and Hannah have a conversation about this. That is one of the hardest things to watch. I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Yes, because <laughs> yes. they're both meeting each other at their level and they're both clearly very stressed out about it and then david's like stop it you're getting neurotic right now and i'm like you are both neurotic right now like get away you're stressing me out and i'm not even on this show mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like the audacity of david Wright to be like stop it you're getting neurotic <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so David Wright, uh, that he has Ken and Jess, uh, that he also has Hannah, and then Hannah is able to uh, reel in Adam. Right, which was, I mean, once again, Hannah doing something actively in this game because if Hannah didn't have the relationship she did with Adam, it's not that. Adam would have naturally gone to David. It would have been a good opportunity to go ahead and get David out. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was awesome that, I mean, I guess this kind of describes trust clusters because David may not have trusted Adam as much, but they, Adam trusted they Hannah. Like and Hannah, Mutual, yeah. like trusting uh, people. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then on the other side of things, okay, so Zeke has uh, Brett, and Sunday and then will. And then I guess uh, somehow Jay ends up with that side. Cause of will it was a will, but even though <laughs> yeah. will was like, I'm done with him. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't want <laughs> And then it's what's really good is that after having done such great work, uh, Hannah really exposes her like her position to Zeke and Zeke realizes, oh, Hannah has chosen to work with my enemy and now she is my enemy. She <laughs> does not do a good job of faking out Zeke. Yeah, like oh, she does no. for a little while. And then it yes. comes to a point where the, the fake out is no longer working. Because it's like, I'm trying to think of the very specific quotes because zeke is like well you haven't told david anything right and hannah's like well yeah people are talking anyways mm -hmm. it's like so you yeah. told no but people are always already talking about it and it's like <laughs> i think you yeah. got a little too comfy there hannah yeah yes. she couldn't maintain eye contact she she should have practiced where where was taylor to help her practice <laughs> this conversation <laughs> <laughs> it only really helps you practice if you're um, giving deep personal truths about your um, very yeah, everybody already knows. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Okay. Uh, so th- again, we are at this uh, really epic uh, tribal council that gets very heated, where people are like uh, really like snapping at each other. Uh, we see some uh, some uh, whispering. Brett snaps at Hannah when uh, she mentions uh, trust cluster. Again. He's like, <laughs> Come on, trust give cluster. me a break. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> I also love at one point, I don't even remember who says it. So I th- it might have been David's like, okay, well, would Zeke's alliance just raise their hands? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Zeke's like, well, would David's alliance raise their hands? Yeah. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, like a, a very heated uh, tribal council, which ultimately is going to come up with this uh, 5 5 tie. Again, uh, David is going to play the idol. Adam is the person that says to play it for Ken. And then all the votes are for five votes for Zeke and five votes for Hannah. Man, just, I just, I, I always just try to imagine a different world where that doesn't happen, where he actually plays it for Hannah. Mm-hmm. Jessica stays. Who knows yeah. how far she makes it? Cause she'll, she'll have the legacy advantage. Yeah. Zeke goes out have- next episode anyway. Yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, things could have turned out so differently. But I, such a major moment for Sunday. Yeah. yeah, major moment for Sunday. I also feel like, um, like I know there was a lot of talk at the time of, oh, was it the right move not to flip? Blah blah blah. And I do think that, um, Jess has made a very good po- case for why she absolutely had to. F- uh, draw the rock in that situation because uh, if she hadn't, it would be a no win scenario for her moving forward. But if the idol had been played correctly and Zeke just goes out here, I still don't know that Jessica was that long for the game because people were still holding <laughs> resentment for day mm-hmm. nine. Hey, yeah. just just Sunday and Brett, and it's two of them at this point. I think when they had Chris there, he had the it seemed like he had more of the social capital to bring in the people to get the votes. But you have yeah. Brett and Sunday. Are they really pulling in a lot to, against Jessica? And you're like, do it for Chris. Chris will be so <laughs> yes, happy for the yes. person who gets out. Jessica, she that's got how you then get she got Chris's, Chris. Yeah. That's how you get Chris's jury vote. You vote out Jessica. <laughs> yes. And uh, I, uh, Kirsten, as you mentioned that I do think that Jessica defends it really well in, uh, the finale of the season, you know, but looking back at this, like, uh, I think the person that I'm surprised that did go to rocks here is Adam, because I feel like if anybody could have flipped here and then bounced back from it, I know he goes on to win the season by picking the rocks. Uh, but like, I kind of feel like that uh, he's a person who works with uh, everybody. And I also kind of feel like that he would not uh, be like up for drawing the rocks that I, I don't, I don't know. Hey, I, uh, he won. Come on. Like, and it's to vote <laughs> out Zeke who like uh, was an, an ally of his Zeke, like never really flipped on Adam. I think it was just that Jay was on the other side of things. And it was like, he was in this f- big feud with Jay. Yeah, he's like, like, can't right. vote with Jay. Like, Absolutely I will not. not be on what if Jay wants him, I'm a, again, I'm <laughs> anti Jay. That could be it. You might be onto something. And honestly, it was more Jay had a thing with Adam or more, more than Adam had a thing against Jay. I, I think it was yeah. a little bit mutual, but Adam is always willing to work with people, even if they hate him. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. He would be will, much more. Okay, so, uh, and, and boy, and Jess is gutted when uh, she uh, draws the black rock. Well, because uh, the thing too is there's many times where she talks about not wanting to draw rocks and not <laughs> wanting to go to rocks. And uh, obviously that's foreshadowing for here where she draws the rock and mm-hmm. uh, is cut short in the game. Do you think yeah, she just, manifested that she didn't want that, uh, like the the Black Rock so bad that that's how she got it? It's like the secret. Yeah, I think that's the thing too. Is uh, what I've heard about manifestation is when you're manifesting, they don't hear the words "don't." Yeah. So when you're saying "I don't want the Black Rock," all you're putting out into the universe is "I want the Black Rock." So mm-hmm. maybe she did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, possible. Think about what you do want. Not about you have to think about want. what you want. She should have been like, I want safety, what, 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 was it the, Yeah, I want safety. I want safety. That's what you have to think about. Mm-hmm. Okay. God, That's Jessica. Funny. See, this obviously is... she did screw up then. Yes. This is totally off topic. But speaking of manifest manifestations, <laughs> yes. I saw someone manifesting that they wanted a new car and yes. they wanted 
um, a, a new a chiropractor. They wanted to be able to afford a chiropractor, <laughs> and then they got in a like an accident. So therefore, oh, they got a new car. Oh my god! And a chiropractor. Yeah. Like she was like, "Be careful what you wish for." <laughs> it's like, "Oh my god!" Well, everyone, be careful what you're manifesting yeah. and when, because yes. it's dangerous. Don't say don't. Yeah. Do I just, don't. I just love that Jessica has stuck to her guns though about just drawing the wrong rock rather than making a different decision. Cause that's what I was thinking that moment. I was like, Oh, all she had to do was flip her vote and she would not be going home. No. Mm -hmm. But all it makes had, sense. All she had to do was not vote out Paul and she would have mm -hmm. been fine. <laughs> they, their <laughs> alliance of six would have made the final six. He would have led them there. The mm -hmm. band needed to stay together. <laughs> the band. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so after that episode, okay. Uh, now, and so this, of course, legacy advantage goes to Ken. Oh, legacy advantage to Ken. Oh, yes. Uh, Hannah feels uh, very badly. Uh, nobody listened to her. She said, "Play the idol on her." She did. You said. David feels badly. <laughs> David's like, I wasted the idol, and people yeah. drew rocks for me. Um, but uh, we're gonna get the loved ones visit here in this episode, and this is again something that I feel like is a uh, very like uh like formative for where Survivor is gonna go for the next eight seasons. This is like we get like the twenty minute like loved ones uh visit here, where you know it's like uh, a good third of the episode on the loved ones visit i and we don't even have one in survivor co wrong which immediately precedes this i know that was filmed out of order where second chances uh does have a loved ones visit was filmed uh after co wrong even though it aired uh before it but i feel like that we get like the big fat loved ones visit here where jeff really starts to get into uh, you know uh, what do we have eight people uh or not is this nine people here getting loved ones visits and we're getting into like what does it mean to like uh like look uh, like you what's the relationship like between you and your sister are you ready for love, love. <laughs> and he cut right to the chase like we were in it before i knew yeah. it like he didn't there was no setup yeah. Yeah. oh just, sunday's husband is here oh right? okay <laughs> yeah yeah uh which was very nice to see um i, I feel like he was very entertaining yes. like very energetic and entertaining mm. but just to go back to that like word love which jeff uses as like a noun more than any other person uh, of like for for most it's like uh you know people usually tend to talk about it like uh as a verb uh but that jeff at one point like says like with ken like uh like what's the relationship with your brother and then like uh after like ken talks jeff says all right last love like uh like that and last love means okay hug your loved one and then go uh that's it it's your last love mm -hmm. yeah. you just yeah. have to you have to pray that every love you have is not your last yeah okay <laughs> That's the Taylor prayer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, of course, uh, of a major focus is Adam's brother, Evan, uh, who comes out. Just the, 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 the look on Adam's facing his brother. Like it's literally, it's almost making me teary eyed now thinking about like, I literally like, well, the, I don't, I'm not, I'm not even a crier. I'm I, as a seven, I am very mm -hmm. far from my emotions. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd rather just feel positive feelings, but oh my gosh, I felt that because like, like we said, just watching back, knowing the outcome, knowing how much this means to him and that he's about to receive some very, some, some, some information. He just wants to know something. And then to just see his brother, he loves very much. It was just, oh, it was gut wrenching. Well, and I think the thing too is that um, the deal was if everything was going well with Adam's mom, his dad might have been the one to come for the visit. And so, yeah. uh, what? If, and like, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure it was the fact that when he sees his brother, then he knows that um, the update is maybe not as positive as it could have been, um, because he does find out on this visit that um, treatment is not working for his mom and that she's now not on any treatment and just the reassurance assurances that he's getting from his brother like oh but she's so strong now she's doing so well um because if anyone has not been around someone who's on cancer treatments it 
is absolutely brutal. It's horrible. You are seeing someone you love suffer so much, uh, but it's still the only option you have to possibly put an end to it. And then when the treatment stops working, that's gut wrenching. And then they're not on the treatment, but they're doing better. Like it's such a roller coaster of emotions. And it's so sad because his brother's been through all of this already. And now he has to kind of go through it again to share it with Adam. And Adam's like, torn because he can't be there but also he's doing this for his family so they have like like it's just there's so many layers to this and it's so heartbreaking and i also am not a crier but i cried this whole episode the whole thing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh we get uh all of that when uh adam uh gets picked to go on the reward uh by jay uh we end up with uh adam also like uh like announcing to everybody like hey i i have i could take the loved ones visit. i'm not gonna, i'm not doing that <laughs> not gonna take your loved ones visit uh which everybody really appreciates which you know nice to say before the challenge also right and i think that really set him up for mm -hmm. to get i get i think yeah. yeah whoever won would have had that in mind like well he could have done it but he did yeah. it yeah, because they automatically feel a little bit grateful to him because they yeah. haven't taken away this. And then he, I think plays it very well by then giving the uh, advantage to Jay so that he doesn't have to worry about it anymore moving forward. Yeah. And so uh, ultimately uh, Jay is going to win the loved ones visit. And then uh, he picks uh, will pick Sunday and then picks uh, Adam. And then uh, Adam uh, gets an update. Uh, that you uh, very eloquently uh, described, Kirsten. It's really sad. It's really sad. No doubt. No doubt. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and we're seeing Adam like, re like imagine like also like having that conversation like on television also. Uh, right. It's like, you know, yeah. you're with, with there's like a camera in your face. And And at one point Adam says this as well, like, this is survivor but it's also my real life i think mm -hmm. that's what he says when he and jay bond over their moms having health issues and i think that really that says it all yeah yeah, yeah. i mean he has those sentiments in the finale in the reunion also right yeah, yeah. and so all right uh back at camp oh wait he also gives jay the advantage he gives jay yeah gives jay yeah. the uh the, the rewards which too. and so do yeah. you think that adam could have used that advantage any better than he did because i think he i think he did a pretty good job yeah yeah it worked out for him he gets Work two rewards out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah all right so uh back at camp uh we're gonna see uh will wall is uh he's had it i am not right. getting the credit i deserve that's it i'm, I'm a done. man i'm a man not a little boy that's it and so uh he is going to now want to uh work with david's side yeah he's flipping had it with zeke <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more like your uh anthony impression than anything <laughs> yeah he's mad. and he's gonna go and go on uh on uh david's side of things yeah uh we see that before the the challenge uh adam is gonna win immunity so adam is you know uh you know has seen his brother and he goes on to win immunity is that his only immunity win here in the season i think it might be yeah okay uh so congratulations to adam uh so uh all right will wall's ready to make his big move and so he starts telling david's side about this and tells ken uh that hey i'm with you guys <laughs> and david's like uh it's like will just got his driver's license and you're getting in the car with him for the first time and you're like a little nervous mm -hmm. like he's just got the learner's permit he is not fully <laughs> licensed yet uh, mm -hmm. probably should have practiced in a parking lot, but no, nope. mm -hmm. <laughs> open road. Yeah. And so, all right. So, uh, that he tells Ken about this, uh, but then <laughs> Ken, uh, ends up going back and telling this information to Jay. Uh, mm -hmm. and then Jay tells the whole, uh, Zeke Alliance who then confronts him and then Will is incensed about this. And why did you do this? Uh, and Ken says it was a <laughs> test. I also, I feel like 
the way that Will gets defensive about this really shows his age. Like he is he just hates getting tests. He's a high school kid. <laughs> he said, "No more teachers. No more books. <laughs> no more." <laughs> <laughs> um and so like you can just tell he's so mad and his his rationale for why he's so mad is like oh, i just want credit for one big move like why can't everyone give this to me and it's like well because why would they let you get credit for a big move will <laughs> like you're all playing survivor yeah. like yes <laughs> It's not take turns each week who gets a, yeah. a cute big mm -hmm. move to add yeah. to their resume. I ironically, all prepping their resumes together. Like this yeah. isn't like college prep. <laughs> there is no participation trophy for this uh, alliance. <laughs> Only one person is getting the credit. Oh gosh, this. I think this is when I knew that Ken wasn't going to win because mm -hmm. I was like. He's doing what he needs to do to provide for the tribe. He trusted the right person in David. But when you start putting him on his own <laughs> to make his own actions, this type of stuff happens. Well, yeah. and the other thing, too, is every single other player in the game is ready to make big moves, betray anybody they need <laughs> to betray, throw anybody under any bus. And Ken is like, I'm just really mm. loyal and I go fishing. Uh, <laughs> like Ken would be a great winner of like early Survivor. Yeah, well, Adam says that in the final travel council. Like uh, Ken would have done really well in season one of Survivor, which I guess is uh, that he had that was foreshadowing for this countdown where I was going to watch <laughs> season one of Survivor back to back. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It w would Ken have done no because he wouldn't have been like in the, the alliance. Like uh, right. he would have been on Pagong and he would have got picked <laughs> off. <laughs> but he hatch squid i guess so uh, richard hatch would not have liked that you think that richard <laughs> hatch would have had a problem with squid squiddington yes richard hatch would have said uh only room for one fisherman on this island <laughs> ken's gotta go <laughs> he would not have appreciated that so yeah they would have um, ken, ken also ken is eye candy you can't yes can't deny that but don't call him Kendall. He hates that. He hates well, he yeah, because that. that's just they they have no genitalia, Asia. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's why. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> he, yeah, he really does not care for that. When you're a boy, like the last thing you want to be referred to is a plastic Barbie with no penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I was uh, in the beginning of the season. Yeah, that um, that they were calling him uh, Kendall. Like, and don't call him uh, that. yeah, don't call don't call him that. And uh, CC was like, oh, like yeah, oh, that uh, why does that, does that ever happen? Like yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure like uh, that happens. Yeah, a lot his that. name <laughs> is Ken, and he looks like that. <laughs> Obviously, mm. he's been called Kendall. Um, but I also find it very laughable that like the worst thing that's ever been said to you is, oh, where's Barbie? Oh, Ken, oh, you're the perfect man. Where's your Barbie? Like, okay. That's <laughs> the worst. Back off your buddy. Like, mm -hmm. it could be worse. Could be worse. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, you're you're assuming that's the context that they're saying. And it's not like, uh, you know, hey, we uh, saw Ken changing in gym class. He's a uh, Ken doll. I, I don't <laughs> think that that's yeah. the case. Okay. <laughs> because he specifically says people would always ask, where is Barbie? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Right, 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 right. Um, don't, don't uh, be I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So Will Wall is just like, uh, he hates it. He has much worse names for, uh, for Ken. <laughs> Oh, you say you're this this good man with integrity. <laughs> he was so mad that his big move just so got mad. like literally it's like he was told to go to bed with no dinner. Like he's like, right. fuming. You're grounded, Will. Yeah, Will's grounded from big moves and he is not mm. happy. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to go to the tribal council and, you know, there's a, a lot of talk and Will really wants to say like, Hey, I'm, I'm the swing vote. <laughs> you know, it's all comes down to me. Right. Nobody gave me any credit. I was 18 and nobody <laughs> cared about me, but now look at me now. And I have all the power. Like I feel like it's great to be in a position as the swing vote and have a lot of power, but it's not a great idea to point that out to people. No. I don't think you want people to know. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, tell the camera. 
Yeah, tell the confessional. Yeah. And it's like, it's all just to have the same. It's all just to have the same outcome. It's just, you know, like either way, Zeke goes home, whether it's your move or not. But he just wants that participation trophy. But Will created enough uncertainty that Adam was like, "Mm, let me just play my idol just in case. (laughs) Yeah. So... (laughs) I think that really also makes Will mad because it sort of like confuses things a little bit of like, okay, so it's five votes for Zeke, four votes for Hannah. Adam plays his idol and nullifies the votes for Hannah, which all uh, come up like Hannah does not count. Hannah does not count. Hannah doesn't get like, so four Hannah votes come up, do not count. And then three Zeke votes come up and like, all right, Zeke, that's enough. The uh, tribe has spoken. Uh, <laughs> so it does seem as though that, you know, uh, Adam's idol play, like, uh, you know, canceled out what Will had to add, but Will yeah. is very quick to add that. He did flip. Uh, well, Adam wasted his idol. Will is like, listen, I flipped. I did what I had to do. You needed me. And Adam's like, actually, we never needed you because I could have just always played this idol the whole time. But uh, thanks for coming on for the ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're on the right side of history. Okay. Um, so, uh, Everybody has kind of had uh, enough of uh, Will at this point. Uh, episode 12, I, I do think is sort of like a, one of the weaker episodes of the season because we jam these two votes in here uh, mm-hmm. right before we get to the finale where Will and Sunday are going to get uh, voted off. And then we still have to do our two challenges as well. Um, so we see a- Adam uh, talking with uh, Brett and Sunday. Uh, that, you know, Brett is very locked in on David Wright has to go home. So a- any idea that's uh, vote out David Wright, Brett is on board with. So he's talking with Adam about going with uh, Hannah and Ken. Likes that idea. And Brett is also just furious at Will for flipping. He's mm-hmm. like, everyone's yeah. all about these big moves. You got to make a big move. Like, how about get to the three and then talk about your <laughs> resume? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how are you? What? Okay, once you're in the three, then what do you say if yeah. you did nothing? <laughs> right. Brett is so crotchety this season. Like, he, he becomes, like, from this point on, just incredulous the whole way. Of, yes. Like, uh, every single move anybody is making is, like, uh, just cannot believe what anybody is like, uh, can you believe this? Uh, what, oh, what is that? Like, uh, uh, really? Really? <laughs> just like, uh, you know, that he's uh, uh, so annoyed with all of them. He's over it. He's over it. Yeah, he is over, he's it. over it. Okay. Um, Will also says he came into this game as a kid and he's a man now. I'm a man now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Jay is going to win immunity here, so that's going to uh, put the focus uh, squarely on Will. And like Jay wins, and it's not even close. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the maze. Yeah, it's where they have the wire maze, and then uh, roll the chips through. Yeah, the- it's it was so funny the fact that that was the starting point. They were behind those bars to get yes. to the slide puzzle and they are all just stuck there after oh wait no that's, I think that's the or next is that one. the next one I think that's the next one um but that so, one was great that was it yes. iconic so I'm trying to see so I, I think that that this is the one that he, that he does with the, oh this with is the balancing the discs yeah okay. they, like they had to carry the discs across oh, and then yeah, 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 slide yeah. them through yeah. and then, oh in the slot and Jay was yeah. back to back to back with it yeah, yeah. So yeah. good. Uh, so yeah, Jay Jay ends up uh, winning immunity, and so uh, yeah, we get like uh, probably like the easiest vote that we're gonna have for a while here. Of, uh, of Will gets voted out six to two, but Will has that confessional where I need people to feel like they're all equal contributors, but really I'm in charge. Which I think a confessional like that is the the death blow to anybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, Will is not allowed any alcohol on the rewards, but he is drunk with power here at the end of the season. <laughs> I, like I the think one, Jeff loved that. To the say one that. where um, Zeke and Will sat out to eat rather than compete, uh, and Zeke is enjoying a beer, and Jeff just goes right through. Well, you know you're not allowed to have beer, right? Because mm-hmm. you're only 18, right? Remember, you can't have beer. And Will's like, yeah, I know. He's like drinking a soda. The drinking mm-hmm. age in Fiji is 18. Yeah, they have hmm. to follow U.S. laws, I think, is what they we've determined hmm. when they're on a U.S. production. Hmm. I don't know. 
interesting. I'm in Fiji. I'm a man. Come on. <laughs> in Fiji, I'm a man. I've had enough of this. Uh, I think it's probably for the best that Will yeah. didn't have his like. I mean, it probably wouldn't have been his first beer, but like Gen Z, damn it. So. <laughs> okay. What? Uh, so, all right. Um, th- then we get to the Sunday vote, which is an interesting one, where. Um, you know, because Sunday is like the one, the first person that is coming up. That's like, okay, well, who's the biggest threat? It's not Sunday. Hannah feels like uh, Sunday is blocking one of the spots in the final three. Yeah, she's worried that Sunday's made herself such an appealing goat that yeah. anyone would take her to the end. Which I don't know if that's necessarily accurate to what we've seen. But... Yeah, Sunday is not a goat in like the traditional sense of like that she's like a disliked person. But I think that in this particular season where it's all about resume, 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 what did you do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that I don't think that Sunday had like the accolades, but, you know, uh, I think that Sunday certainly has a compelling story. She's right. Like, and it wasn't. Yeah, right. And it, it wasn't like she was a, yeah, I think goat would have been the incorrect word, but it w- if it came down to, okay, everyone else is safe and it's between Hannah and Sunday, definitely mm-hmm. would have been Hannah. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, it was the right move for Hannah to want to go after Sunday. Um, but it's just that, you know, it, it she just wasn't part of the, the puzzle to get Hannah to the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this seems like uh, this was Hannah's move more than anybody else. Yeah, she really pushed for this. Right. Yeah. Now, again, Jay has the hidden immunity idol, uh, which everybody uh, wants to flush the hidden immunity idol here so that they can uh, vote him out. They don't want him getting uh, that much further with the hidden immunity idol. So it's important for Jay to play his idol. Um, then also, uh, who has individual immunity here? Is it David? What? Um, oh, this is where uh, Ken wins. Oh, Ken. Yeah. Uh, it's oh, the, yeah. The word puzzle where you have the ball going down and you have to stop it. Like you can only work on your puzzle while the ball is moving down the ramp. Um, and this is where uh, Adam sees that he is not going to win. So he stops doing the challenge to tell Ken when he has to go back and retrieve his ball um, so that Ken can win so that he's preventing David and Jay from winning so that they can mm-hmm. vote it out. And Jay's okay. like, really, Adam? <laughs> mm-hmm. Adam's like, yeah, really, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, anything else on, on this vote in particular? Um, Before we get to the vote, this is the episode where Adam and Jay have the iconic moment in sure. the hammock where yeah. they bond over their mom's health issues. We find out that Jay is playing because his mom has had issues with brain aneurysms in the past. And so um, he also kind of lives day to day thinking that anything could happen. He can, might lose his mom. Um, and just like Adam's mm-hmm. little, I'm so scared. It's, it's a very iconic moment um, and very moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was a nice piece of their story. Um, I mean, like it's almost the end of their story, of their time together on the season. But man, if you just think about where Adam and Jay came from to be confiding in each other, that was beautiful. Um, but with the vote, I thought it was very interesting that Jay didn't use his idol. I thought that was a big risk, but it paid off. Um, well, does it, he? I think he does use his idol on no, with the one. Sunday vote. He used it at the oh, yeah. final six. No, no, no. So he, yeah, the, the he, fake... wait, no, no, he burned it. He, he, you're right, you're right. Yeah, he, burned he, his idol. he plays it, but he didn't have to. Um, yeah. And then he finds the the fake idol at the start of the. Right, yeah. right, right, right. And right, right. we're going to see in the next episode, you know, Brett is incensed of why don't we vote out David Wright here? Brett and Jay are going to vote out uh, David Wright. And it seems like that, you know, there could have been like uh, potential votes there to vote out David Wright. Uh, Sunday votes for Jay. Do we know why that happened? I, I mean, Adam was pushing that he wanted either David or Jay out, and so I mm-hmm. think maybe Sunday's like, uh, I don't really. Maybe she, be as you was a vote, vote split. <laughs> right. yeah. Um, and, and then you know, if Adam and Sunday uh voted with uh, Jay and Brett, they could have taken out David, but um, ultimately, it's not what happens here. Hannah got what she wanted. And I got what yeah. she wanted. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about the finale. 
And the finale is going to open in exciting fashion because uh, David Wright says, okay, Jay just played an idol. I got to stop him from uh, finding another one. I'm going to make a fake idol. David Wright's going to stay up, make a fake idol, put the pink paint from the merge flag, and plant it for Jay to find it. And I'm trying to think, but I feel like this is another thing that happens in this season that is also like super formative for what's going to like play out for the rest of the, the survivor from uh, this point on until uh, when they end up uh, taking the year off. But I feel like that the idea of like uh, making the elaborate fake idols, like I'm trying to think if it really comes up uh, a lot before this where Bob did it in Gabon and then kind of feel like that David Wright really uh, brings it back here. Well, because David makes a very compelling fake idol that really does look how the other idols have looked in the game. And I think from this point is where they start making the idols look a little bit less official yeah. so that there is the option for fake yeah. idols to play more of a role. Yeah. And Joe Anglum is going to make a fake idol in uh, Survivor Worlds Apart, which is not really going to get a lot of play. But by then, the next season in Game Changers that... One of the advantages that Cochran presents to Debbie is a fake idol making kit, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, and so like David Wright really like uh, I, I think bakes the fake idols into the season to the point where then in Ghost Island, David Wright's fake idol that he <laughs> gave to Jay is going to also be in the season. Actually, uh, is it the actual is it the actual idol or was it like the coconut? It could it have been the actual idol because didn't uh, Jeff threw it right in the fire? Jeff threw it in the fire, but yeah, I, I yeah. yeah. So I don't know oh. if sometimes like they take it out after, but I remember maybe it's not like, a real fire. Maybe it's a fake fire. <laughs> I don't know. It's a holographic <laughs> fire. <laughs> yeah, Bl blew our minds. Uh, but David <laughs> Wright is going to do that, and uh, Jay is going to uh, take the bait. Hook, line, and sinker. So yeah, perfectly. And it is a great moment. Jay, his reactions are so wonderful to watch. He's like kissing the like, uh, mm -hmm. like these idiots. They don't even know I've got the idol. <laughs> well, yeah. and it's so good too because he spots it on the ground um, when he is collecting coconuts with Ken and David, and so he sees it. He thinks it's real, and he's just praying that they don't see it. But David sees Jay see the fake idol. So then you also get the confessionals of David being like, "I think he saw it. I think." He <laughs> found it i think he could took the bait and jay being like these idiots don't have their eyes open and so they didn't see it but i saw it. it's very 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 dramatic and great yeah. yes it's a great moment um jay is gonna have uh, a few uh bonehead moments in the finale <sighs> <laughs> it's so sad like because he very well would have just won immunity here because he was flying so quickly and then he doesn't cover his combination and mm -hmm. David and everyone really just rightfully cheats off of him. Yeah. yeah, he was so close. Even when David could see the combination, it took him a minute to actually mm -hmm. get the correct combination. Um, because if you saw how, I mean, like how close Jay and David were, Jay would have won for sure by landslide. Mm -hmm. But he was just like so ready to get through it. Mm -hmm. Forgot to mix it up. Sad. You know, yeah. I was also thinking about this watching the finale between, oh, uh, like that you should like do fake idols to people and you should cheat off of their, uh, like copy their puzzle. Like, I almost feel like that we enter a phase of Survivor where it's almost like just like do whatever you want. Just, you know, <laughs> a anything you could do to other people. Like, uh, just uh, that's part of the game. Just do it. Thank God this happened after Will was already out, so he he didn't realize that it was just a free for all. He needs to know consequences. So mm -hmm. He moves through life. Yeah, yes. you're allowed to cheat, <laughs> right? <The test>. Hey. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's everybody everybody is copying. It's like uh, every, well, like Jay left his puzzle open. Everybody's cheating off the combination. Uh, and I and bet you there was someone who wasn't yet. And then they hear Jeff announce this. They're like, oh, shoot, let me go. Listen. Well, I think David was the first one to really spring for it. And then Adam goes for it. And and then uh, 
Jeff is really going like saying that this is what happened. What's happening? I think that Ken never looks. I think Ken is has so much integrity that he just keeps going. <laughs> he's yeah. so noble. He's Very so noble. he's just a, such a good man with such integrity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Then uh, David Wright is gonna win the challenge, but Jay is gonna use the reward steal. He wants a steak dinner. Mm-hmm. Right. He'll take David because David won, but yeah. he wants the steak. Yeah. And, and Adam. Adam. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, at the steak dinner, you know, Jay's looking for a way in, but th- there's not really a lot of wiggle room here. He makes the best argument that he could make, really, being yeah. like, I'm currently the smoke screen. As long as everyone is going for me, they're not going to notice you. And I will take both of you to the final three. Mm-hmm. absolutely if i keep winning like i will go with bo- the two of you and so yeah dave does almost seem a little bit swayed by that just of hey another person willing to take me that's probably pretty good but the problem is they don't want to be in the final three with jay yeah exactly. right <laughs> i mean should david have done this no i don't think so yeah even though he doesn't that he, like his like he gets betrayed uh ultimately by people uh that you know the problem is it's like uh is anybody really is jay really gonna take david to yeah, the final like, three if right. ken is betraying david at the the final four everyone is yes yeah. <laughs> like there, the, yeah there was no path unless he had one immunity sometimes it's really hard to get there <laughs> i've heard tough. that i've heard that it's tough um okay but we get to then uh leading up to tribal council again uh brett is uh incredulous about everything that uh is going on where is he just cannot believe nobody's voting out david Wright. he's like how is david still here and now dave won immunity yeah Mm -hmm. come on (laughs) come on guys (laughs) okay um we get to our final six tribal council. Jay is going to uh, play the idol. And Jeff does a good fake out. This is not. <laughs> Jay can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I, everyone was floored when Jay stood up to the moment he sat down and found out it was fake. Um, <laughs> and then that gets a little overshadowed uh, by Ken playing the actual legacy advantage. And when he plays that, Jessica has the biggest reaction in the jury to the legacy advantage (laughs) because i think in her mind she would have been there and so she would have just (laughs) made it to the next which i i don't know if that's completely accurate but now when you say it overshadowed uh jay's idol play um I feel like it was kind of like a uh forgotten moment that ken even had the legacy well yeah because he didn't need it but like I feel like for Jessica, it was at least, it yeah, very meaningful it. for Jessica. Yeah, like she like like it looked like she was gonna start weeping. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, "Are you are you good, girl? Like I'm worried." <laughs> yeah, look, you see somebody else playing your legacy advantage in the final six. You think of what might have been. That's right, but, uh, she's about to read Ken uh, for filth uh, at the final. She's not like what he does to David. Well, how dare how dare he? Yeah. Okay, but uh, let's talk about the final five, <laughs> which is a, another word scramble. And I mentioned this earlier. The puzzle is seriously not a participation trophy. And I I felt so bad for Adam, the fact that he had not a participation and could not figure out no, those last did? five words. Yeah, he literally had participation spelled out and was just like fumbling around with trophy. And I'm like, that tells you right there, millennials are not all about the t- participation trophies because mm-hmm. we would I naturally mean, know what that is. If anybody's experience on millennials versus Gen X was a participation trophy, it's Ken, not any <laughs> of these millennials. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, all right. Ken is immune, and so uh, it's a little bit of a discussion of, okay, it's going to be David or it's going to be Adam. Uh, David's gunning for Adam. Adam's gunning for David. Uh, And Adam is gunning for an idol. Yeah, (laughs) which this seems like maybe the biggest mistake that David makes in the game in that, you know, he had the forethought to like, okay, Jay just played his idol. Okay, got it. We'll make a fake idol so Jay doesn't go look for the idol. 
I should go look for the idol. Right. Well, and I think it's just at this point, it was really hard to get away from the crowd. And with David, people were talking about targeting him, him all the time. I feel like it's right. really tough to be like, oh, I'm going to go off on my own. Um, whereas Adam's Very able to point. be like, my stomach hurts. I'm <laughs> going right. to go into the woods. Yeah. His back was against the wall anyway. So yeah. he goes and finds the idol. And so he comes back and tells Hannah, uh, like, uh, all right, I've got the idol. Um, so now we can finally take out David Wright. And Hannah <laughs> said, no, no. She said, this is about who I think I can beat, but also who I can trust to get me to the end. So she tells mm -hmm. Dave about Adam's idol and they decide to vote out Brett. Yeah. And, and this is a fascinating decision of what to do because Brett probably with all, with all due respect, uh, you know, uh, not probably a threat to win the mm -hmm. final fortune, especially based on what it turned out to be. Um, can't see uh, that uh, that's going to be uh, the ideal challenge for Brett. And so Hannah and she talked it through that like uh, Ken would never forgive me if I ended up uh, betraying him uh, and Hannah, you know, could have potentially gone to the end with Adam and Brett, but she did not like uh, that final three as much as, you know, going with uh, David and Ken. Yeah, it's all about who you've like really developed those strong relationships with throughout the entire game. It's like, yeah, her and Adam had a, a bit of a connection when they were millennials, but then the amount of work that David has put in and the I mean, and all those romantic mornings with Ken, yes. you can't yeah. you can't look past that. So I I totally understood Hannah understanding that, you know, with Brett out of the way. She's in final three. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but I do also think everyone has been talking about how David is such a threat this entire game. You have to know that David is winning if he's in the final three. Like, it just seems yeah. very irresponsible not to get... Like, I think Hannah was probably going to have a spot in final three regardless at this point. She would played a really good game. She was in a good position to work people off of each other. I think she could have had a much more compelling case had she voted out Dave here. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, the way things ultimately go for her really, I think, turn out to be like the best case scenario for her mm -hmm. where she like if she goes with Adam and Brett here to vote out David, nobody's like, oh, this was Hannah's move. Everybody's like, right. oh, Adam played his idol. <laughs> oh, he got David right out of the game. Like he did such a, he did such a great job. Um, like I feel like that that it's so hard for her to get the credit for anything that happens. Ultimately, she sticks to her guns. She uh, gets Brett voted out, and then when Ken wins immunity, she doubles back and gets David voted out and gets to the final three with Ken and Adam. Who like it's not like anybody was saying the whole way through. Like if Adam gets to the end, watch out, everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. But he, yeah. yeah, he made a strong case for himself. Clearly, uh, certainly, he did. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. that, like, uh, like she, like, did, like, uh, maybe she didn't know exactly how it was going to go, but she did, like, uh, like ha she had a plan, and her plan did work. Like, and she got to the end without with getting David out of the game. It's like it was yeah. a disaster. Yeah, um, I think, and, it, and and for someone like Adam, I feel like they would have had to get him out around, like, when they were getting out, like, around the time Zeke went, because, yeah, they didn't have the clear view that he would have such a compelling case and that he would be able to argue his case so well. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it was just, it was just hard for them not knowing that. Yeah. Kirsten? I, it's gone. Okay. I, the only other thing I, I, I don't want to get too much in uh in, in the weeds like that okay uh what if Hannah tipped off Adam that the vote was going to be on Brett a Adam could play his idol she wouldn't have to vote against David uh David would get voted out there in that spot she could say to Ken uh but is that getting too cute I think the thing there Nobody's is... Nobody's giving her credit for that either. Yeah, when right. Adam <laughs> plays the idol there, it doesn't matter that Hannah tipped him off. He's going to get the credit for playing the idol and, yeah. and getting but David, David out. Will be gone. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Yeah, but I, like, but Adam will still get the credit for it, even though Hannah maneuvered it. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I mean, she she lost to Adam 10 zero uh, without that happening. So, mm-hmm. like, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not, it's not, not going to get any better. I, okay. Yeah. I just wonder what could have been different for her to actually get the respect for the moves that she made because she played a great game. Like, it's not like she was just there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if it's just not playing next to people like David and Adam and Zeke and Jay. Um, I feel like they were such strong players. Like maybe drop Hannah in a different season mm-hmm. um, where you don't have such uh, strategic people. Like even Michaela, um, like you have this season of people who are just who know how to play the game and doing such a great job at it that maybe if you drop Hannah in one of those lower seasons, <laughs> then maybe she does well um, mm-hmm. because she's seen as somebody who's actually making moves. But she was just her gameplay was so overshadowed. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So uh, Brett gets voted out here at the final five. Uh, he's a good sport. Uh, we go to the final four challenge. And I just thought this was wild where the final four challenge seems to have like a time limit for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So it was first to stacking 13 bowls or the most bowls stacked in 30 minutes. I like, guess they were on a time crunch. Yeah. Did Jeff, like, I, I got a lunch here after this. <laughs> like let's uh, speed this up. I got places to be. They said it is hot out here. I know we were dealing with a cyclone at the beginning of the season, but it is too hot yeah, and I'm not about to be out tomorrow. here all day. I got yeah. Pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah, so Hannah and Ken tie at the end of thirty minutes and get to do a five minute showdown. Yeah, what, Did you like what the hell is that? <laughs> five <laughs> minutes they, after, so after this arbitrary time they tied, and now it's like, it was like the home run derby of uh, <laughs> like all right, now we're into bonus time. Uh, now we have five minutes now. Well, and then it's again. Ken barely won. Like it, the, Hannah and Ken were both so close on this challenge. Uh, like I really think if Hannah was an inch taller, she probably would have done it the exact same speed as Ken. Yeah. Like I, 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 a very weird challenge to have here. I feel like it's much more compelling to see um, a challenge that often happens here, where you have to time the balls that go through the maze and then make sure that you've spaced them out. Do you know yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like that one's more entertaining than this was. All right, so Ken is going to win immunity. I believe this is number three for Ken, uh, who again gets it's no his fourth. Is four the immunity? Fourth immunity. For okay, real? Ken. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote it down. Ken wins fourth immunity. Two wow. exclamation points. Okay, <laughs> and so, uh, but this is again where we see Hannah is trying to make the sale of uh, to ken to cut david and, and and i thought she does it in, in like a really like ar- articulate way where she's like hey look i've been loyal to you i know it's important that it is to you like mm-hmm. uh you know we've been loyal to each other like we and, 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 ev- and everyone on david the, and everyone on the jury thinks that they're both she, she said everyone thinks we're both idiots so yeah. let's stick together and get david out <laughs> let's do it let's do it um and it seems like that this is like enough to like uh, get uh, Ken on board. It, I guess, but I mean, his first alliance was to his daughter. Okay, so mm-hmm. he was actually already Ken thinking about this all along. Yeah, right. Um, I think part of the reason why Adam gets so much credit for flipping Ken here is because at the tribal council itself, Adam is like. Yeah, Ken's been loyal, but he needs to think about more than loyalty here. And so I think that it's because Adam pushes it in front of the jury yeah. that he gets the credit, even though Hannah's done all of the work back at camp. Also, I wonder, like, in the game of telephone, like, uh, mm-hmm. does David Wright go out of the game thinking, like, Adam screwed me. Adam went, he got, he, he flipped, he flipped Ken, or, or is it, uh, not even Adam screwed me. It's like, oh, you know, I was going for Adam. He got to Ken. Kudos to Adam. Like, does David even know that it was Hannah? And does he tell the jury, you know what, Adam, I got to tip my cap that he, he flipped Ken on me. And, and that's why Chris is like, uh, you know, so, uh, so much like gung ho for Adam. It very well could it be could be I is because I'm like, what could Hannah have done differently 
at Tribal to make it known that this has happened. Mm -hmm. It's not like she's going to tell David beforehand, hey, just so you know, I talked to Ken and we're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to vote you out. Um, so it's like, what could she have done? I guess, I mean, she was trying to speak up for herself in the final final Tribal, but like, what could she have done differently? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Only at Finals Travel could she have uh, really said, like, look, uh, Ken and I had uh, a conversation and I, I set him straight. Right. This idiot was going to vote with David Wright the whole way through. <laughs> then they're like, oh, I OK. Told I told him what's up. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I told him, OK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Adam is practicing making a fire and he's also like, can't believe he's like, I can't believe that I am I'm practicing making a fire. Why do I even have to that they should vote out David? Yeah, it's like we could have voted him out. And now I might have to make fire against someone who's been making fire this whole game. Yeah. <laughs> um, David's going to give it out. Yeah, he had a good run. He had a great run. He had an okay. amazing run. Mm hmm. He um, grew as a person, too. He grew as a person. All yeah. right. So final three is uh, it's Hannah. It's Adam. And. It's Ken. Last of uh, tribal in uh, the old school format. Yeah, I was thinking about that because I was like, what, "Why? Why does this one feel so different?" And it's because I that and yes, that's what I was thinking about. Was that if it were in the new format, would that have been better for Hannah? Like, would she have gotten maybe two or three votes because she would have had more time to have that yeah. back and forth discussion? It's a great Maybe. question. I, I feel like it would not be any better for her because I feel like that the new format, I feel like leads to more pylons where True. I feel like it's a, a more of like, what did you even do? Where <laughs> I feel like that here she gets like a couple like of uh, direct questions that I feel like she has the chance to field. So I feel like it, uh, it there's less group think in the way that it's done here and she still loses uh 10 to 0. I mean she might have gotten a vote in the new format. I don't know. It's hard to know. say. I don't know. I do, um, I think we can all agree that Ken would not have fared any better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and the, the thing that uh the person that I thought that uh, is seems like the most likely to give her a vote seems like Michelle. Michelle seems like hey like uh you voted the right side every single time. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I do wonder when Adam at the, at the very end, like if maybe there was like one or two Hannah votes when Adam reveals about, uh, his mom's cancer, that maybe that the, like the couple of people who were maybe some rogue, uh, Hannah votes were like, I, I gotta vote for Adam now. Yeah. I don't know about that. Cause I feel like even before that comes up, Chris makes his whole speech and asks his question being like, yeah. and I'm voting for Adam and all of you should also be voting for Adam, which kind of makes me think that it had been a little bit decided going in. I, I don't. Yeah. Michelle's the only person that I th feel like was uh, she, like based on her questioning. Uh, she seemed like that she was the most pro Hannah out of, out of anybody, but yeah. Uh, Hard, hard to say. Like I, I, like I don't think it like cost her the game or anything like that. I just think that maybe there might have been, uh, like a person or two that was on the fence. Yeah, another person I was thinking was possibly Sunday, um, because of her adaptable question. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, like uh, yeah, it's a it's a good question. Like um, I, I feel like how the questions were asked were very much in a way of we're not giving Ken or Hannah credit. I really feel like they went in wanting to vote for Adam and Adam did a good job of getting what information he could off of their questions and throwing mm -hmm. it back to give good answers. Yeah. I feel like he did a really good job. He's Hannah did a really good spot. job too. Yeah. I, yeah. I just thought that like Hannah uh, did uh, better than I had remembered. And uh, you know, but Adam is like such a likable guy. And mm -hmm. like he is such a great avatar of this season in that, you know, he's somebody who doesn't ever have hard feelings or animosity towards anybody and is all about like game, like making the game move. And so is able to really parrot back what like so many of these other players in the jury want to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any interesting questions? I like uh, Zeke uh, comes up uh, at the and it opens with Hardy's congratulations gang. <laughs> <laughs> um I do think it's interesting how uh Jessica really comes for Ken. Yeah. Uh and then it's immediately followed up by Will coming up and being like just so you know Ken 
I actually respect you a lot more for flipping than had you not. But mm-hmm. let me ask my question to another player because I don't have anything to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he was confused about why. Uh, why did Brett get voted out? And um, you know, Adam, like I feel like he thinks he, uh, he is being like complimentary to Brett, but uh, when when he's like, I think it was a mis- Brett, it was a mistake to vote you out. Like it's almost like. You were no threat. You were right. an easy person to beat, and you should still be here. Yeah. Right. So if, if Adam had said that to Jay, Jay would think he was getting it rubbed in his face. But mm-hmm. Brett right. spent so long being like, vote out David, vote yeah. out David, vote mm-hmm. out David. That a, like, like, uh, like, he's on the same page. He's like, yeah, yeah why you're you right. vote me out? Yeah, you're right. I know, right? Oh. <laughs> Can't believe it either. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, Of course, uh, this all culminates in Adam uh, revealing about his mom. It it, it, uh, almost comes up uh, in the J question. uh, And uh, Adam uh, is uh, saying to Jay that we're uh, like brothers. uh, And, you know, uh, Adam says to Jay, you know why I played the game. uh, And he jay's like you don't have to say it you don't have to say it. You're, you're you're good uh and it almost comes up there but then adam uh mentions it in, uh, in the his closing speech where that amazing that he's able to go 39 days and not reveal this to the other players i feel like uh adam was very conscious of not wanting to be seen as using his personal tragedy to benefit himself in the game yeah uh because like you're already going through all of this. Imagine how crummy it would feel to be like, oh, and now I'm using this horrible situation to try and benefit for what a TV show. Like, mm-hmm. I, I I think that he would have a really hard time justifying that to himself. And I think yeah. that's why it doesn't come up. I even think at the end of the tribal council, it probably wasn't really his inclination to reveal um, the truth about why he did this and how this journey was for his mom. But I think it's just so meaningful that you know he and his mom were in talks to be on a blood versus water season uh but then she got sick and now he's there kind of for both of them and it's so meaningful to his family and he's there to give them something to look forward to and some hope and i just think at that point he couldn't hold it any anymore he had to share like what he had been doing and what this meant to himself and his family Mm -hmm. yeah it just speaks to adam's character um, because at, at, when a million dollars on the line, you would think people think, let me throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And so the fact that Adam was yeah. consciously and proactively not saying anything because he probably had that in his mind, like, I'm not going to do this. Um, it just shows what a great person he is. Uh, and, and he truly is like, uh, as somebody who knows him, like, uh, like outside of the show also, like, uh, you know, he, that, uh, you know, the person that you imagine he is like, he actually is in uh, real life. And yeah. you know, he's one, one of the, you know, the, the, the great people like that have played this game. Oh, like I, awesome. I don't know Adam well, but I have hung out with him a little bit. He was at the BB Ken six finale, like rap party. Cause the he BB Ken alumni mm-hmm. have adopted Adam and he is a gem and he probably doesn't even remember, but that weekend was the first mother's day after I lost my mom. And like Adam, and I had a conversation at that event that has just stuck with me like forever. And mm-hmm. he probably doesn't even remember it, but he's just like, I bet he does such an amazing person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and, um, we go to the reunion and, uh, they count the votes and Adam is going to go on to, uh, win the season, uh, 10 to zero. And we really, uh, spend like, I-, I was in the room. It was like, um, so emotional, uh, f- to be there for that, uh, finale. Like it was like, uh, uh, unlike, um, any of the other finales that I've been to, I just remember like, uh, like really like, uh, just feeling like you could hear a pin drop. And when they're interviewing Adam about his whole, uh, story about, you know, uh, especially like when he gets to the part where, uh, he reveals that, you know, his mom had, uh, passed away, which nobody, like none of the viewers had known, you know, it's such an emotional moment. When he's choking up, saying that she waited for him to get home. Yeah. Oh man. And like, I, I really like, I do, I like, I believe that one hundred percent. 
Yeah. He also <laughs> uh, did a uh, like a three hour interview with me after the season where he really like goes in and tells like some more uh, details of that story. I think it's one of the best interviews we ever did on the podcast where uh, like he was very like uh, open about uh, like that, that whole part of this experience. Oh man. Yeah. And it, 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 you could just feel for his family and how proud, like just looking on the, the his dad and brother's face, how proud they were and how this was a not just an Adam win. This was a family win. Like they, they needed this not only for um, just for Adam, like this being his dream, but this was his mom's dream and just the situation that they were in. Um, it was just like, you could tell that this was such an important and valuable uh, experience. You know, even if he had walked away without the win, it would have mm -hmm. been something very impactful for their family. So I, I really love to see that for him and his family. Yeah. And to even get the opportunity as well to then use that for good. Um, the proceeds from the auction at the end of this season all went to stand up to cancer. They had donation matching for donations up to 100,000. Adam says at the reunion that he'll be donating $100,000 to stand up to cancer. Like it's just so powerful on so many levels. And he was able to go and live his dream and give his family something to look forward to and some hope in a really, really dark and hard time. And it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a lot of time uh, with Adam at the finale, but uh, we also spent some time with um, some of the other characters uh, from the season. Uh, we go to David Wright for uh, another uh, transformation. A glow up man. for David yeah. Wright. He's yeah. like shaking. And <laughs> well, oh, like, he was like, David Wright, you were a loser. And now look at you. <laughs> you couldn't do anything. And now you're uh, one of the biggest players to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Running from his shadow. Yeah. You know what? I'd run for my shadow out there too. Did you see some mm -hmm. of those bugs? One of the tribal councils, a bug flew onto Taylor's chest. And oh, yeah. I wanted to be dead. <laughs> When I saw it happen through the screen, yeah, like I was like, I would literally rather be dead than see a bug that big, let alone have it land on me. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was huge. Mm -hmm. It was massive. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we've said it enough on this podcast. Dave Ooh. Wright does like uh, a really great job uh, throughout the season. Like uh, he it was in a like had no power whatsoever mm -hmm. in this game uh was down and out like uh like had like uh you know chris hammonds wanted to like uh could have been uh the first person voted off after the swap comes all the way back and then is like uh ends up like uh being the person who is you know uh whether or not like he is like completely dominating the game or at least is like perceived to be dominating the game like that's a remarkable turnaround and he goes out in that robbed G dot honest spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't go as well for him uh, the second time around uh, when he comes back for the edge of extinction. But uh, who knows if we see David Wright again? Yeah, David, he's he's such a I, he's such a cool guy. I actually saw I went to the um, one of the evictions for BB20. Yes. It's actually when yes, Scotty was yes, evicted. And yes. I remember I so I was actually I actually went with my roommate and I looked yeah. up at the front of the line. I was like, is that David? I was like, that's yeah. David. He was yes. at the same one. Okay. What was he with other uh millennials versus Gen X people? No, I only saw okay. him. Yeah. Okay. I think it was just a separate taping. Yeah. Um yeah, I just was like uh this cast, like I really uh do love this cast. Like I feel like that I've gotten to know uh so many of them like uh like, you know uh, on, on a somewhat like uh personal level and there's like so many uh you know great ones in this cast between yeah. uh you know Adam, Hannah, David, uh Brett, Jay, Sunday, uh Zeke uh jessica chris like uh this is just the people that that like i've gotten to know like off of the show uh it's a really great group yeah and they, they even did a really good job showing michaela and mm -hmm. um i mean i feel like they touched on everybody except for those earlier people that we didn't learn much about like rachel and mari yeah um well i just think we didn't see enough paul <laughs> yeah, we didn't get a good Paul at the um, 
uh, <laughs> at the reunion show. I feel like I did run into Paul like at the uh, after party. He was like holding court. You know, he's a big personality. <laughs> well, um, this was Rob. This was the finale where they had people competing against survivors in the challenge yes. before, right? And you participated, right? They they have it at every finale. They let the survivors do, but then they had like the game changers there, like uh, playing against people. Mm, got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, that uh, in uh, heroes versus healers versus hustlers. That's the one where mm. um, uh, they, they say, like uh, Sister Nino's out here and Andrea. <laughs> Cochrane is here. Hey, you could uh, be in worse company. Yeah. Uh, Zeke gets the uh, transformation package about how he's undervaluing himself. Uh, but what's it like for Zeke to come out here and uh, then go from uh, somebody who was uh, a kid from Brooklyn to wheeling and dealing on Survivor? Yeah, all he knew you had to do is uh, use the subway. Mm -hmm. Now he can play Survivor. Yes. Right. Uh, and then uh, we get uh, some highlights of the moment that uh, Brett confided in Zeke. Jeff said it was the moment of the season. Yeah, Jeff Jeff loves these uh, these uh, heartfelt moments. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it definitely was one of the many like just really just touching uh, moments throughout the season. So I, I'm glad that they highlighted that and that Brett felt comfortable yeah. enough sharing it on this platform. Okay, um, That's great. All right. Normally, we get into the feedback questions uh, from the listeners. If it's okay with the panel, uh, <laughs> like we're we're closing in on uh, one a.m. here on the East Coast. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, that uh, can I can I share the questions with our uh, on for the feedback show for later this week? No, feel, please, please, feel, right feel. now, right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's only 940 for me. So uh, I yeah. think we should really stay. Yeah. Um, no, we're bef good. Before we move on, though, I do think it's really funny how we go from all these like really meaningful moments in the reunion to, hey, Will, how'd you convince your parents to let you go on Survivor? <laughs> I thought uh, that was funny. It's yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Are you what okay? You say? Yeah. You have <laughs> Rob is broken. Yeah, Rob has probably been awake since like 5 a.m. No, uh, it's 30. Uh, oh, 6 30. So yeah. perfect. Hey, that, that, like, wait, as a, as a Gen Xer, you get up early in the morning, you make all the podcasts all day until until you're ready to go to bed. And then you wake up and, and, and then take your kids to school the next day. That's what you do. Because that's how, that's, how, that's how it's always been. That's how um, it's done. Yeah, I, I did think it was also funny that like uh, Jeff's like, we got to tell you about what we're going to do next. Uh, Survivor Game Changers. Uh, and then they bring out like uh, all the people. They, they bring out a bunch of people that, that are on the next season. Uh, and they like, uh, like Tony. Uh, it's like a lot of like the early boots. Uh, and, and then Sierra, also. She voted yeah, out her mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like un un ironically like. Sierra, she voted out her mom. No, you put in too much of a break. Like they literally say it like it's her name. It's Sierra, she voted out her mom. Like it's all one thought. Remember? Remember that? Yeah. So yeah, I think it's they they bring out it's like a Tony Ty Kip, Caleb. Uh Sierra Suri is there, Ozzy. Maybe uh, Sandra's there. Sandra, Sandra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some heavy hitters that they She's bring. She's the out. queen for a reason. Like they're not mm -hmm. like, come on out, Brad Culpepper, <laughs> Sierra <Yeah>. Don Thomas, <laughs> Troy Zan. I would right. rather see. Like I feel like it would have made more sense to show any of them than Beast Mode Cowboy. <laughs> I guess yeah. maybe they felt like the Big Brother fans are gonna uh, watch. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, don't and know. famously, uh, Beast Mode Cowboy was a fan favorite. Fan favorite Everyone game loved. changer, Beast Mode Cowboy. Right. And they like called out that Michaela was going to be on the season, but said nothing about Zeke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They could have announced both of them, but no. Yeah. Just gotta, Michaela. Keep them wanting more. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, who in this season is your MVP? I feel like it's got to be David, right? Yeah. yeah David. David. 56% okay. said David, 22% said Adam Klein. 7% said Jay. Okay, oh. I think where are the votes for Hannah? Come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> Show some respect. Which one time player would you most like to see come back and play in a future season? Jay? Oh, Jay's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It is Jay. 39.9%. Uh, Hannah Shapiro was uh, second with 22%. And then 12% yeah. said uh, Brett LaBelle. All right. Which name on this list made you pause and think to yourself, wait, who is that? I think Rachel. It's it's either Rachel or Cece. Cece did not make the top three. Lucy. Uh, it is Rachel. <laughs> 31 percent paul walker had 23 percent oh, oh dare they oh my god oh he's mm -hmm. livid Rock <laughs> yeah Santa himself. yes okay haywire um who's the most underrated player of the season underrated hannah hannah yep it's hannah 38 percent uh nine percent for jay 8.4 percent for brett who got the <sighs> kelly wentworth award for Best pre-merge boot. Michaela Bradshaw. Michaela. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Yes. Bye, Felicia. Uh, that's what she said when uh, that Michaela or they announced that um, uh, Figgy was uh, voted on. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, Michaela, you had a big reaction. What do you have to say about that? She's like, uh, Bye, Felicia. That really puts the season in a time and a place. <laughs> No. It really does. <laughs> I feel like people aren't saying bye, Felicia, anymore. Mm. Yeah, we got to let that have a comeback. Bring it back. It's time to come back. <laughs> okay. All right. Then 81% uh, for Michaela, 9% for Figgy, and 7% for Mari Takahashi. Okay. All right. Where do you rank the win from Adam Klein? One, it's the best win. 40, it's the worst win. I feel like people are low on Adam's win. So yeah. I think it's probably going to be like in like the high 20s. I think it'll be. That's Ooh. not necessarily where I'd place it, but I think it's going to be low. I think he's somewhere between 10 and 15. Okay. Uh, the audience said uh, he's at 21.19. Uh, that puts him at 16th overall. So let me just give you the ballpark. Okay. Uh, all right. He's at 16th overall. So uh, Cochran is 10. Brian Heidek's 11. Wendell is 12. Chris Darty is 13. Sophie is 14. Ethan's on 15. Adam at 16. And then he's right ahead of Tina, Michelle Fitzgerald, the Sepia, Aris, Tommy Sheehan, Mike Holloway. They really didn't put any respect on Vesepia's name, hey? <laughs> no. Very rude. I know I, this isn't that podcast, but <laughs> come on. Can't relitigate that one. Uh, <laughs> he's at 19 right now. Like, okay. I know I can't change it, but I can voice my disapproval. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, she's uh, always uh, undervalued, Vesepia. Uh, okay. Then what is coming up? next uh, do either of you have a guess of what will be the 11th best season of survivor i feel like i've seen a lot of people talking about thinking seen a lot philippines of... is coming token chains could be yeah, i was coming. just about to say that i've seen a lot of token chains i i feel like this season and david versus goliath aren't that different so i feel like that's got to be coming soon but i don't know hmm okay mm. all right this is pretty wild. The audience <laughs> voted, and this is the audience. This is the audience vote from <laughs> the, 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 yes, from the tabulators poll. Okay. Uh, so the audience voted, and there was a flat-footed tie of twenty-four point eight six percent for token chains and Philippines. Mm. Winners at war was third. Okay, uh, twenty-four point eight six for token chains and Philippines. Okay. Ow. Next week on the podcast, we'll talk about the 11th best season of Survivor one week from tonight. Okay. Uh, and it is going to be Survivor Philippines. Mm. I was surprised. I was surprised. I would have thought Philippines would have been in the top 10. 
I feel like it has some defenders, but maybe it's just fallen over the years. Maybe it's fallen over the years. Uh, too much Mike scooping, maybe. Not sure uh, where it went wrong on uh, Survivor Philippines. But uh, we'll be joined by d- the duo of uh, Brian Cohen and Ari Ferrari next week on the podcast to talk about Survivor Philippines. Nice. So dynamic duo. Be, be on the yeah. lookout of that. Okay. All right. And then as far as my rewatchability rankings, uh, for me, uh, you know, I had a hard time getting into this uh, millennials versus Gen X. Like the the back half for me was was pretty good, but I felt like that the pre-merge, uh, I was having a hard time. All of the millennials versus Gen X talk was taking me out of it. Mm. I felt like the first couple episodes after the merge. We're kind of slow. You're just oh. exposing yourself as a Gen X here, Rob. <laughs> I guess, uh, am I? Um, I don't know. I don't know. A little bit. Just have to oh. try and shoehorn it in a little bit more before this ends. Shoehorn it in. It's such a great cast. Uh, I'll say, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. I'll say it was the third best season I've watched after <laughs> after uh, behind uh, Pal- uh, Palau and Blood versus Water. Okay. Nice. I feel That's like some my... people are going to be mad about that. <laughs> Everybody's mad. Up uh, in arms. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. What else do we need to do tonight? Uh, is that is that everything? Is that everything? Uh, it did, is. Uh, Sam did people vote the on up. if they thought this was voted appropriately? Did we miss that? Oh, oh, too oh that's right. You're right. Curse that's right. So Okay. I've, been, I've right. listened to some podcasts yes. in my day. Uh, <laughs> all right. What do you think this season is too low, too high, or just right? What do you think? I, I think that there's an equal amount of people saying too high and too low, which makes it just right. But as far as the vote, I think more people probably think that it's too low. Too low. See, I think people are going to vote that it's too high because I feel like the people who like it only have it a couple more spots above where it's at, whereas the people who don't like it are like, it's a bottom five season. This is too low. Curses is too high. It was just right. Uh, 37% for just right. Nice. Uh, Was that the Michaela? Uh, Not on purpose. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Who did that? The audience. I need need the audience to tell me. Yes, uh, it was only 37% just right. Uh, 35% said too low and uh, 27% said wow. it was too high. Okay. So Asia had her finger on the pulse better than me. Good job, Asia. <laughs> no, All right, let me tell you about what's up here on this podcast. All right. Uh, over the weekend, look what we're going to do. It's going to be <gasps> Michaela on uh, talking with T-Bird. Yay. Rob, how does it feel to talk to two people that hail from DeSoto, Texas in one week? <laughs> I mean, oh, come on. I think, I think you're going to tell me something about T-Bird. Oh, like, oh no. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Welcome yes. to the world of DeSoto, Texas. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Is it? Asia, I'm going to need you to give me like some, like, uh, like some good questions that, uh, then Michaela will be like, <laughs> <laughs> you bring up Asia, just send Rob a list of like, Four or five people you graduated high school with, and like right. their their babies' names or something, and be like, Michaela, so what do you think about uh, John and Sarah? And they this named girl their is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> named their baby uh, Juniper. How do you feel about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, she'd love that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, uh, so be on the lookout for that, and then of course, why Adam One uh, will be joining, uh, will be joining uh, David Bloomberg and uh, Jessica Lewis, uh, and then hopefully <laughs> maybe Chris and Brett will even listen if uh, they forgive her after uh, voting out Paul. And Do you think they ever move past it? I think so. I think that I think they're all on good terms now. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's going to be in the Survivor podcast feed over the weekend, and then. Of course, uh, we'll be back with Big Brother on Wednesday night. Uh, should be a fun one when uh, Sasha Joseph and Grace Leader join uh, Taryn and myself for our Wednesday night Big Brother recap. Let's see what old Frenchie has up his <laughs> sleeve for Wednesday night as we get ready to see what's going to happen with the power of Vito. Uh, on the latest RJP Rewind, uh, that uh, Big Brother podcasting zone, Melissa Denny joined Chappelle and I as we talked about season one of the Joe Schmo show on 
the latest RHAP Rewind, which was a lot of fun. Uh, of course, uh, we have the patron feedback show coming up for Survivor Millennials versus uh, Gen X. Uh, not one, but two Big Brother podcasts, including the slop, uh, which I kicked off uh, this past Monday with Jenny Autumn talking about all of the nonsense in the Big Brother house. Uh, we're doing the uh, BB Q&A with Taryn Armstrong on Friday afternoons, taking questions from all the patrons, plus the patron five for five. Uh, that's just the content that you're getting when you become a patron. Don't forget about our patron Facebook group, patron Discord, and much more at robisawebsite.com slash patron. Of course, uh, anything you hear about on the podcast from our sponsors, you can find out more about at robisawebsite.com slash offers and of course uh, if you're watching us here on youtube hit the subscribe button to be notified about all of our future videos and you can follow us on social media at rob has a podcast on twitter and at rhap grams on instagram thank you so much uh scott for all of that okay all right asia what's coming up next for you yeah, so uh, this past weekend, I um, was on the Wrestling Rehab Up with Mari and Matt, with yes. Jason Reed. We had a great time. I know nothing about wrestling, but had a blast talking about it. Um, and then I was also on the Sunday recap for Big Brother 23. It's yes. been a crazy season, um, but I, I'm loving it. It's so entertaining. <laughs> um, and then July 21st, the next season of Married at First Sight is starting. So I will be covering that um, on a weekly basis. Amy and I will be back to talk about all of Married at First Sight, all of the craziness and the drama. It's in Houston, Texas this season. So I'm very excited to talk about it so keep a look out for that yeah and you, uh, you get, can well, go, or, ahead. go ahead no you i was go gonna ahead. say you can follow me on uh twitter at asia like asia so a y s h a like a s i a i was gonna say if we can get uh mari takahashi to uh, appear on the recap we can get back that uh mari at first sight gag right <laughs> i'll work Maybe on it wait for mari fourth <laughs> right <Perfect>. yeah <laughs> All right, uh, Asia, a great job tonight. Uh, this was so much fun to go through uh, Millennials versus Gen X with you. And give Definitely me those good blast. Michaela questions. I will. I will send them your way. Okay. And then, Kirsten, so nice to have you on a countdown. I know. I can't believe you let me talk about Survivor. What a dream. Yeah. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, well, what's, what's going on uh, for you? Sorry, uh, I'm, I'm brain dead. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you're alive at one in the morning or whatever, but uh, yeah. So if people want to hear more from me, uh, currently covering Love Island USA with yes. Brian Scally over on the uh, reality TV wrap up speed. Uh, that season is pretty fun so far. So that's good. I'm um, also just finished covering uh, Too Hot to Handle. If anyone's binging on Netflix, that content is there and it is unhinged. So check Absolutely. that out as well. Asia was on one of those. Yes. Um, I also have a weekly uh, BoJack Horseman rewatch podcast with the great Lindsay Wilson called BoJack Horse Pod. So I'd appreciate if people checked that out. And you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Kirsten Said What, as well as on all social media at Kirsten Said What. Yeah. Also, uh, check out more of my music at my uh, website, uh, haywiretheband.com. <laughs> check out uh, our touring dates. Uh, we're finally getting back on the road after you know a long time off because of uh, the pandemic. But I uh, hope to see you back out there <laughs> on tour soon. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs>